voice of Hornet Nation, Carlos Zimmerman. And a pleasant good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome you here, finally the Huntsville ISD Stadium on the campus of Huntsville High School for tonight's matchup in UIL 5A Division II Region 3 District 10 between the Brian Runner Rangers and your Huntsville Hornets. Carlos Zimmerman here live from the Pinnacle Realty Advisors broadcast booth alongside of me is the former Hornet quarterback Brian Adams. Brian, first off, a pleasure to help open this new stadium alongside you, my good friend. And then obviously looking at the matchup tonight, a lot of excitement around the Hornets. It's homecoming tonight here in Huntsville. Brian Rudder's going to run into a quite the loud crowd here this evening at the new Huntsville ISD Stadium. But, man, we still have a ball game that has to be took at hand tonight. It's the halfway point of district play once we wrap up here tonight. Hornets trying to get the 3-0, my friend. It's going to be a good one. It is going to be a good one, Carlos. It's great to see you. Man, we're running on E, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> and it's coming in late from Virginia. But, well, yeah, what a historic night. You know, Huntsville's getting their own stadium, and this school was built in 1980. And where this beautiful field is now used to be the practice field for all of those years up until now. And here we are, just absolutely amazing. Football, man, this is going to be a huge game. You know, Brian Rudder, they're playing great football, and so the Huntsville Hornets. I look for an absolute shootout tonight. And you're right, man, this crowd is going to be absolutely crazy. It's going to be an electric atmosphere, to say the least, folks. And, you know, it feels like it's been a little while, but... Last Saturday night, the Huntsville Hornets went down on the road to Richmond Rosenberg and absolutely took the door off of Lamar Consolidated. An incredible ball game from wire to wire for the Hornets. They couldn't have asked for a better opportunity to be able to get to 2 0 in district. Brian, looking back at that game, a 67 0 win for the Hornets. Really their biggest statement win so far this year. It was their first shutout in three years when they beat Nacogdoches in the area around 27 0 three years ago, and their last time they made the playoffs. So, could be a good omen for what is to come later on this year. Obviously, still a lot of ball to be played, but from what you remember from that ball game, it looked like the Hornets were just firing on all cylinders. Total domination is what it looked like. All three aspects of the game, you know, the offense, defense, and special teams, they all played extremely well. And the really one of the really great things that came out of that ball game, well, two things, a confidence builder, and you got to see some guys get some playing time that don't typically get to play, so that is a good thing. Absolutely. And, folks, if you are tuning in now on the video stream on the 101.7 KSAM YouTube channel, you are getting a lot of great looks at down on the field right now of the guys warming up for both Rudder and for Huntsville. It's going to be an awesome night here, folks. We, we've been talking about it for weeks, and now we can finally say that you're here in this stadium. But now looking back at the Hornets once again, now that they've gotten that game out of the way, they're 2-0 and in district play, a much better start than it was a year ago. They were 1-1 after losing to Montgomery, but they were able to take care of their business this year. Now they're going to run into a Brian Rudder team. They come into this matchup 1-0 and in district. They are 3-2 and overall. They've had a great season so far, and they're going to be one of the teams right there with Huntsville that's going to be vying for one of those playoff spots. Remember, top four teams make it into the postseason with four games remaining, three after tonight. Rudder is obviously going to come in here and try to, and I'm sure their coaching staff, led by Eric Izar, he has said, hey, it's going to be loud and everything, but you need to block that out. You need to just lock in on what the game plan is for us to be able to play a good ball game. What are you going to like that? What are you going to see out of the Rangers tonight? Well, the Rangers are going to play some pretty good football. They understand the, uh, the ramifications of tonight's game. Uh, I mean, you got two undefeated teams in district. You've got the opening of a brand-new, state-of-the-art, beautiful facility. So they understand what that's going to bring. They're going to be focused. What does that mean? Huntsville has to be just as focused, and they're going to play some good football tonight. Time to take you inside the numbers as we continue on the Charlie's Used Cars pregame show. If you're just joining us, Carlos Zimmerman and Brian Adams live from the Pinnacle Realty Advisors broadcast booth. Your inside the numbers is going to be just a tad different here this evening as we would like to welcome all of you Hornets home, ladies and gentlemen. Taking a look at the numbers of this stadium that we're in tonight, Huntsville ISD Stadium. Total cost, $35 million. The seating capacity here, 6,500 total seats, 6,500. 3,800 on the home side, 2,700 opposite of us in the away stands. And here's all the bells and whistles that come with this beautiful, beautiful facility. Two-level press box with a community suite downstairs. New LED video board that we're looking at over there, and it is bright as the morning sun. LED lighting with special effects that these fans in attendance are going to get to see tonight. And those of you tuning on the video stream on the KSM YouTube channel, you'll get to see that as well. A new field house, team merchandise shop, new track around the field, which will come once the season has concluded, and a dedicated student section right down here below us, which I got word earlier tonight, completely sold out. That is your Inside the Numbers brought to you by our friends at Charlie's Used Cars. I mean, think about it, Brian. 
we talked about it so much throughout this year. We even talked about it last year whenever we were getting ready to build this place. Or when they were getting, yeah, when they were getting ready to build this place. This is something the Huntsville community has deserved for a long time. There's only one city, one district left in the entire state that does not have its own stadium. Huntsville was the second one on that list, and they can finally take their name off of that wretched list after such a long time. Think about that for a minute. You're talking 50 years, and you don't have your own stadium. It, but now they do, and, the, and it is so incredibly beautiful. If you look at some of the media outlets and some of the things they're saying about it, you know, they're just t- talking so many good things about the, the aesthetics, the, the ambiance, the, you know, just everything about this stadium is absolutely incredible. And, uh, man, it's going to be exciting tonight. Absolutely it will be. I mean, the Cron has covered this. KB, local TV stations around the area have been covering this. This is going to be a spectacle of a night. And we're glad you have, we're, if you're not here tonight, of course we're sorry, but if you're tuning in with us, we're glad to have you with us. But this was going to be a must-see kind of thing that you had to come out here and experience because you only opened a new stadium once. Once. You know, and we talked a little bit a while ago, uh, the Hornets for so many years played at Pritchett Field, known as Bedrock. And then they moved into Bowers. And it's such a rich tradition of football here in Huntsville that, I, I mean, my hat is off to this community the wonderful city leaders that we have and everybody that pushed to get this thing approved so these kids could have such a wonderful facility to play in. And think about the generations coming up that are going to get to play out here. you got elementary kids that will be here tonight looking at this field, watching the spectacle. Not Can't wait for it to be their turn. Man, I'm so excited about tonight. It's incredible. The Hornet faithful are still filing in here to Huntsville ISD Stadium. We're going to step aside and take a break. Coming up next, brought to you by Charlie's Used Cars, is Southern Talk. I caught up with head coach Rodney Southern earlier this week to get his thoughts on what is expected to be an incredible night deep in the heart of the East Texas Piney Woods. As we step aside, we'll be back in a moment on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network and 101.7 KSAM. Tim Rushing here with Charlie's Used Cars. If you have not been by to see the great selection of quality pre-owned vehicles we have in stock, do yourself a favor and come see us at 230 I-45 South in Huntsville. Charlie's Used Cars is a family-owned and operated business serving the auto needs for 50 years with superior customer service. Besides quality vehicles, Charlie's also has a service center where we can help with your auto repair needs and routine service and state inspections. Come by and see us or visit us online at charliesusedcars.com. Charlie's Used Cars, 230 I-45 South in Huntsville. Come see us. This is Southern Talk with Huntsville head coach Rodney Southern, sponsored by Charlie's Used Cars. Carlos Zimmerman here pregame with head coach Rodney Southern for Southern Talk brought to you by Charlie's Used Cars. Coach, briefly looking back at the uh, just dominating win over. In our case, I think it was really good because we got, you know, a lot of big plays. Uh, You know, obviously Peyton had a big play. Braylon had a big play. Trayshawn had... A couple, uh, you know, melted uh, third had a big play. So, uh, you know, when you don't get a lot of plays, you want to see good execution, and and that was kind of the situation in uh, where he was a year ago. And then final touch on this game against Lamar Consolidated. You got to see you and your coaching staff got to see a lot of the younger guys being able to get some action there. Really a look into the future of your squad. Just um, what were you able to see from your backups and just uh, how they performed. Well, you don't want to, you know, because we kind of look at ours a little bit different probably than some. I mean, we've got two running backs. You know, if we'd have played another running back, it would have been Peyton Of You know, he'll throw a trick. Of You know, he'll throw a trick in. He threw one in against Lamar Consolidated, and they scored a 40-yard touchdown on it. Uh, So they do some stuff. Sometimes it's a little bit unorthodox. And, um, you know, you just, you've got to be prepared for really good athletes. Uh, and they may, you know, they do a lot of swinging gate stuff on the goal line, just stuff that you, you know, you have to prep for that creates problems. And uh, and they're fighting, you know, they're they're like everybody in this district. They're fighting right now because they need to get a win um, to get them back at headed in the right direction because they've still got Lake Creek and Brenham and kind of some of the same teams we have. So. Uh, they're always scary. Uh, that, that's what I always tell guys. They're scary athletically, uh, but we've kind of had their 
had their number the last few years, and hopefully we play well enough tonight that we'll take care of business. And then, Coach, how have the guys been doing in practice, just preparing for this ball game? As there's a, you know, more than just a ball game riding on this one. Well, I think you know we've we've learned by this stage. You know, we've learned to practice. I thought our Monday practice was really good. I thought our Tuesday morning was really good. Uh, now, you know, we got other distractions with homecoming parade and things like that 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 you know kids have to learn how to deal with and and obviously being in the brand new stadium tonight is going to be a huge thing but you know the thing is they practice every day on this field so it's not like we're going we're just coming out of a different dressing room and and we don't have to get on a bus uh, to go to our own field house uh, finally so you know, a lot of distractions, but I think these are good distractions because they're things that that obviously are going to help our program in the future. And then lastly, Coach, obviously, like you, t- you touched on right there, first night in the new stadium, uh, expecting a capacity crowd coming out to this ball game. Just first off, how do you guys get it done with the win? And then secondly, just your thoughts, you finally get to be in a known stadium for the very first time. Well, I, I think for the for the community, it's – you know, it's the culmination of a year and nine, ten months, almost two years worth of work. Uh, that starting with passing a bond and then getting all the way to this stage, and and for our kids, the kids that are kids that are coming in the future. You know, our junior high kids have already played in it, or our eighth graders have. Uh, our freshmen and JV have both played in it now, so. Um, you know, it's good for them, but I, I don't know that you really understand that sometimes because kids are, you know, they're so distracted with stuff now. But I but I think the idea, I had one ask me the other day, he said, Coach, I'm just excited because everything's new. And, you know, and when you've never had that and then you, you almost, because I've almost gotten that way where, you know, I'm a routine guy and you almost like, well, I go to the old field house now. Well, I can't now, so... Uh, but overall, obviously, for this community, it's going to be a tremendous night. And then for the ball game, folk, uh, Coach, just um, what is it going to take for you guys to come out with the victory? Well, we got to protect the ball like we've been doing the last couple of weeks. We, uh, we've we got to execute offensively. Uh, you know, we're going to run the ball. We're not going to try to line up full people. And, you know, we're going, we're going to do what we do. But... Uh, We've got to make some plays offensively. We've got to make a play in the kicking game and then not give up those explosives. But less than that is, you know, let them line up in a formation that's odd or a trick play and give up a cheap touchdown. We can't do that kind of stuff. And then, you know, we've got to tackle in space, which we've been, for the last few weeks, we've been pretty good at that. Uh, But it's got to be better tonight because these guys are more athletic. All right, Coach, appreciate your time. Best of luck. All right, thank you. This has been Southern Talk with Head Coach Rodney Southern. Brought to you by Charlie's Used Cars. This is the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. Powered by K-San Sports. Tim Rushing here with Charlie's Used Cars. If you have not been by to see the great selection of quality pre-owned vehicles we have in stock, do yourself a favor and come see us at 230 I-45 South in Huntsville. Charlie's Used Cars is a family-owned and operated business serving the auto needs for 50 years with superior customer service. Besides quality vehicles, Charlie's also has a service center where we can help with your auto repair needs and routine service and state inspections. Come by and see us or visit us online at charliesusedcars.com. Charlie's Used Cars, 230 I-45 South in Huntsville. Come see us. I'm Jerry. Gary Larson at Reliable Auto Parts, your auto parts plus store in Huntsville, Texas, having great products, excellent quality, and outstanding prices. This is what you can expect from Reliable Parts, where you can purchase all your car care products, maintenance supplies, and auto parts. Our services and in-house store offerings are designed to keep your vehicle and motorized machine in proper working condition. Reliable Parts, your auto parts store, 1011 11th Street, Huntsville, 295 57 47. 
Back here at Huntsville ISD Stadium on the campus of Huntsville High School in the Charlie's Used Cars pregame show. Carla Zimmerman alongside Brian Adams just had our Southern Talk segment brought to you by Charlie's Used Cars as we bring you back inside the Pinnacle Realty Advisors broadcast booth. An exciting ball game that's going to be on hand tonight between the Huntsville Hornets and the Brian Rudder Rangers. Time for our sideline pass segment. The third member of our crew, Luke Scott, down on the sidelines. Luke, I'll throw it over to you. Luke, great atmosphere already. Fans are still filing in here to Huntsville ISD Stadium, and a big ball game is going to be on hand tonight. What's your thoughts on it? Oh, man, it is a beautiful stadium we got here, and so blessed now to have uh, our own stadium. The crowd's filling in nicely. Carlos, this is going to be a great night. The band's rocking, a great, really good atmosphere right now. Luke, looking at the ball game itself, looking at Huntsville coming off of a big shutout win, and they're going to have the energy of the crowd behind them tonight. But obviously the task at hand is win the ball game against the Rudder Rangers. How do they get it done? Uh, yeah, I mean, the Rudder Rangers, they're coming in on a three-game winning streak. They beat Lamar Consolidated, now coming off a bye week. So you got a little bye week. you got a, uh, some time to prepare for Huntsville. They're going to come out with their best game. I was looking at Elgin, or um, excuse me, Brian Rudder's schedule. They took on Elgin. That's uh, kind of where I'm from. Georgetown always played Elgin. They're always a pesky team. they got to always have a lot of great athletes. So Rudder's going to run the ball pretty well, I think, tonight. They're going to try to run the ball and establish that early. Good thing is Huntsville has been really stout against the run the past few times out against Lamar Consolidated. Lamar couldn't do anything against that defense, that Hornet, uh, you know, storming defense. So we're looking good on that side. And offense, it's just keep running the ball as well and can't turn over the ball uh, passing-wise and take your spots when you can get them. You know, you talk about the passing game with Austin Taylor at the helm of the team. Just, you know, what's going to probably be going through the mind of that young quarterback, the junior? He's going to have that crowd around him. It's easy, and really for all the players, yeah. it's easy to get lost in the in, in the spectacle of tonight, for yeah, lack of it, a better term. Yeah, it's homecoming. You know, all the festivities, the parade, the pep rallies. You know, it's all geared up this week, and it's a new stadium. So, there's, of course, there's going to be uh, a little mojo in their, in their step early. But it's really just staying calm and, and making the right reads. Don't for, not force the ball into spaces that you know uh, you're not supposed to throw. Take your spots and, and execute. And then Luke, last thing for you, just you know, what's what? How's it feeling out there weather-wise? And just uh, I don't think I don't see a whole lot of wind, if any at all. I think it's going to be a pretty pretty perfect night for some high school football in Huntsville. Yeah, it's going to be perfect tonight. I was suspect the uh, the temperature to drop pretty rapidly at towards the quick at after the third quarter just because of the uh there's a cold front coming in through kind of the night so uh, it's going to be a little chilly i think at the end but it's perfect right now seven degrees high 60s uh it's perfect i got my little windbreaker on it's perfect all right thank you luke down there on the sidelines we'll chat with you as the ball game progresses have fun down there man yes sir all right we'll step aside and take another break we will get brian's keys to victory when we come back on the charlie's used cars pregame show on the hornet nation broadcast network Hi there, I'm just a homeowner enjoying my new screen patio built by Sandal Renovation and Patio. Clint Sandal handled all the details, including 3D design and HOA submissions, securing approval in just three days. Sandal Renovation and Patio completed our project on budget and weeks ahead of schedule. Whether it's a new patio, kitchen, bathroom update, or your next home, start your home improvement project with a free estimate from the right builder. See our patio and examples at sandalrenovations.com. Techspress Urgent Care Clinic in Huntsville would like to help keep your family and friends safe and prevent the spread of viruses. They are a walk-in clinic and offer quick, efficient flu and strep treatment. Techspress Urgent Care Clinic offers a variety of procedures, open seven days a week. Check their website at techspressurgentcare.com and visit them on Facebook. That's Techspress Urgent Care Clinic, located at 193 I-45 South, near Bahama Bucks and Buffalo Wild Wings in Huntsville. Did you know a doctor's prescription is not needed to begin physical therapy? This allows you to begin therapy sooner without having to wait for a doctor's appointment to obtain your prescription. Since optimal physical therapy outcomes are obtained when treatment is started earlier, sooner really is better. Dallas Williams and the team at Physical Therapy Associates was voted best physical therapist in the Huntsville Items Reader's Choice Awards for the sixth year in a row. So when you make your PT choice, choose the best. Physical Therapy Associates, ptaclinic.com. 
AB Squared Self Storage is your local go-to self-storage facility that can help give you the extra space you need, big or small. From non-climate and climate-controlled storage to parking spaces for your car, boat, trailer, and RV, they have it all. AB Squared Self Storage has 24-hour computerized gate access, around-the-clock security camera monitoring, no long-term lease commitment, and convenient payment options. Give them a call today at 936-755-5000 or reserve your space online at www.ab2selfstorage.com. Welcome back to Huntsville ISD Stadium on the Charlie Hughes Cars pregame show live tonight in Huntsville, Texas at Huntsville High School. Carlos Zimmerman alongside Brian Adams here as we now pivot to our keys to victory tonight for the Hornets. The Hornets obviously 2-0 in district play, trying to get the 3-0 and put themselves in a great position to for the playoffs that is to come with three more huge district games on the way, probably the three toughest opponents they will face with Lake Creek, Brenham, and Richmond Randall still to come this year, but they have runner in front of them tonight. Brian, how do they get it done? They got to play smart football. They got to eliminate all these silly penalties. The offense has to come out and be electric. Austin Taylor, he is the leader of the uh, offense. He has got to make some good decisions, and he's got to go vertical downfield. Trayshawn Brown, uh, Braylon Phelps, those guys have to have a great night running the football. And as every uh, as uh, the previous weeks indicate, they will. Defensively, Kadarian Easley, man, that guy, his double nickel has been an absolute nightmare for opponents. He needs to have a good ball game. They got to move the change, Carlos. And at the end of the night, they got to score a bunch of points. There you go. That's your keys to the game there, courtesy of our friend here in Brian Adams. But now we're going to pivot here on our last bit of the Charlie's Used Cars pregame show to our player profile brought to you by Charlie's Used Cars, and it's something a little bit different tonight. We're going to honor the legendary Hornet head coach, your head coach, in Joe Clements. Yeah. 27 years as a head coach, he, as a high school football coach. He was at Houston Lee for four years before going to Kingsville for three, but then he made his name here in Huntsville. 18 years from 1975 to 1993, a state championship in 1980, 14 district titles in his career, 10 of them with Huntsville. His record, 221, 77 and six, his overall record. And he's in the Texas High School Co Coaches Association Hall of Honor and the Texas Sports Writers Association Coach of the Year in 1980. He was your coach, Brian. You probably knew a lot more about him than I ever could talk about your head coach oh wow you know coach Joe Clements man you, you're talking about a legend uh, he, he coached so many great athletes through this program and he was a great athlete himself and, and his sons were great athletes that played college football at a high level one of his sons played in the pros for a little bit so no he knew his football but he knew how to motivate his kids and his players to get the best out of them and that's the part of it about the Huntsville Hornets man they love physical, hard-nosed football, and that's what we have here with Coach Southern and these Hornets here tonight. But yeah, man, working, uh, playing for uh, Joe Clements, man, was a blessing. Learned so much from him. Discipline was a huge deal, you know, so big with him. But uh, we were all so much better men by being coached by Joe Clements. And I think he would have loved to see this. Absolutely would have loved it. in front of us tonight. So, Coach, and your family, this is for you guys tonight. Long overdue for the Huntsville Hornets here at Huntsville ISD Stadium. That's your player profile brought to you by Charlie's Used Cars. We'll step aside and take another break, and we will set you up for the Texas True Comfort Heating and Cooling Countdown to kickoff. That's on the way next on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. It's always game time at Gamers Grove, Huntsville's friendly local game store located at 1212 14th Street. Family owned and operated since 2012, Gamers Grove carries a wide range of tabletop games and accessories for everyone. Board games, card games, miniatures, and more. With a huge game room open for free casual gaming and exciting competitive events, Gamers Grove provides a friendly place where people can play games, make friends, and become a part of an ever-growing community. That's Gamers Grove, located at 1212 14th Street in Huntsville. Kubota products provide the horsepower, versatility, and dependability to get the job done right. But that doesn't mean you can cut corners on your regular routine maintenance. Keep your equipment running smooth by bringing your Kubota mower, subcompact tractor, or Hay Series tractors into Huntsville Truck and Tractor for a tune-up or oil change today. Call one of our experts for any questions about your Kubota products or stop by Huntsville Truck and Tractor today. Conveniently located at 2124 Highway 30 East in Huntsville or call us at 936-291-8103 to keep your Kubota running strong. 
Looking for something sporty and great on gas? Then head to Bill Fick Ford in Huntsville. Turn heads and fill up less often with a sporty new fuel-efficient Ford crossover like the ever-popular Ford Bronco. Orders for 2024 Broncos are now open. Or check out the built-tough Ford F-Series trucks, including the all-new Ford F-150s. Bill Fick Ford, where customer satisfaction comes first. And there's no bull, just good deals. Hurry in today or shop online at Bill Fick Ford Huntsville com Courage, integrity, perseverance, commitment, not just the job. This is a career with a purpose. The Texas Department of Criminal Justice is hiring correctional officers now. Full and part-time positions available, no experience required, paid training, great health care and retirement, and opportunities for base pay increases with continued service in the first year. Apply now at tdcj.texas.gov slash co. That's tdcj.texas.gov slash co. Serve Texas with purpose. Back at Huntsville ISD Stadium as we get ready to wrap up the Charlie's Used Cars pregame show. I'm Carlos Zimmerman. Alongside of me is the former Hornet quarterback, Brian Adams. Coming up next on the Texas True Comfort Heating and Cooling Countdown to kickoff, we will set the scene for you tonight in what is expected to be a beautiful night for some high school football in the gateway to the East Texas Piney Woods. We'll look at your game time weather forecast, starting lineups, and much more to come as we are 13 minutes away from kickoff between the Huntsville Hornets and the Brian Rudder Rangers as Huntsville ISD Stadium makes its debut tonight in front of what we expect to be a capacity crowd here tonight in Huntsville. The Texas True Comfort Heating and Cooling Countdown to kickoff is next on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. Huntsville ISD is the best place for children to be. We offer a full day pre-K center to advanced career and college options, along with a variety of extracurricular activities and award-winning fine arts, band and athletics programs, an excellent child nutrition and bus transportation services, bilingual ESL and GT programs, special education services, and a career and technical education program that provides multiple certification and licensing options for students. Visit Huntsville-ISD.org. It's a great day to be a Hornet. We're building champions, everyone, every day. Wiesner Chevrolet in Huntsville has immediate openings for service technicians, body shop, and sales consultants. Service technicians that are ASC certified are preferred, but not required. Looking for a great career? Wiesner Huntsville is looking for service technicians, body shop, and sales consultants, and complete benefits are included. So go by today and apply. Take exit 116 on I-45 North and go past 11th Street in Huntsville. Wiesner Chevrolet in Huntsville is hiring. This is the Huntsville Hornets High School Football Countdown to Kickoff, sponsored by Texas True Comfort Heating and Cooling. Here's Brian Adams and the voice of the Hornets, Carlos Zimmerman. Welcome back to Huntsville ISD Stadium on the campus of Huntsville High School for tonight's matchup in 5A Division II Region 3 District 10 between the Brian Rudder Rangers visiting from just out Highway 30 West and your Huntsville Hornets. We welcome you into the Texas True Comfort Heating and Cooling Countdown to Kickoff. Carlos Zimmerman and Brian Adams live from the Pinnacle Realty Advisors broadcast booth. Man, what a night it is to be here in Huntsville, Texas. This is the place to be tonight. If you are anywhere else, what are you doing? This is where you need to be tonight, but if you are not and you're joining us here on KSAM over the FM airwaves and on the KSAM YouTube channel, we are delighted that you can at least enjoy it through our lens here tonight. So looking at this matchup tonight and your game time forecast presented by Texas Street Comfort Heating and Cooling, mostly cloudy skies tonight, but they have actually kind of thinned out just a little bit. A lot of rain has passed through the area while we were gone in Virginia. Man, did Huntsville get a wash? Definitely needed it, but it is perfect night for some high school football. 77 degrees, feels like 78. It'll continue to drop as the night goes on with that cold front moving in. We're going to wake up tomorrow. 59 degrees is the low tomorrow, and it's going to be Finally. absolutely phenomenal. 54% humidity down there on the field and a wind coming out of the north and northeast, seven miles an hour. Right now it is really dead down there on the field, so the kickers should have no issue. Same thing for the quarterbacks. That's your game time forecast presented by Texas True Comfort heating and cooling. Brian, as the fans are still filing in here to Huntsville ISD Stadium, one thing that we haven't really talked about on here is how do the Hornets just continue to, you know, focus on the task at hand. The task at hand is beating Brian Rudder. Obviously, there's a lot of distractions this week with homecoming, everything, and all the festivities. While that's all great and everything, at the end of the day, the team is out there to play 
Hornet football. How do they block all of that out? I know you've gone through your fair share of homecomings, not just from the high school level to the college level, too. How do they block that out and focus on the task at hand tonight? Well, all of these athletes out on this field tonight, they will be zeroed in on this game, and they're not going to be hearing any crowd noise, uh, so to speak, or not many distractions, really. They're going to be focused on the game at task. And here's what's really cool about playing Rudder tonight. We've got kind of a little rivalry little highway 30 rivalry with uh with rudder man and and it's uh, we've had some good ball games against them over the years but uh the hornets are going to come out they're going to play their game tonight rodney southern they've had great practices you see their confidence level growing each week i mean we talked about that when we came on the air tonight and man you can actually physically see that confidence level and man it is awesome and you've seen it just grow week by week, as you said and alluded to, and they will continue to do that as the season goes by. Fans still filing into Huntsville ISD Stadium here on the home side. The road side even starting to fill in a little bit on that side because I think we are sold out on this end, so a lot of the Hornet faithful that couldn't get on this side have to be on the other side. But either way, it's a great night for high school football here in Huntsville, Texas. We're going to step aside and take a quick break here on the Texas True Comfort Heating and Cooling Countdown to kickoff. When we come back, we'll let you get to know the personnel for both the Rudder Rangers and for the Huntsville Hornets. Your starting lineups is on the way next on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. License number TACLB 429588E. Don't sweat it. Stay cool with Texas True Comfort. Texas True Comfort will fix your broken AC system quickly any day of the week with no overtime fees. They can lower your cooling bills and keep your home cool and comfortable. Call 936 400 0049 to schedule your service today. Discounts for veterans, educators, first responders, and TDCJ personnel. See website for details. Texas True Comfort, veteran owned and operated. Your true comfort is guaranteed. TXTrue.com. Welcome back to Huntsville ISD Stadium and the Texas True Comfort Heating and Cooling Countdown to Kickoff. Carlos Zimmerman alongside of me is the former Hornet quarterback, Brian Adams. We are ready for this one tonight between the Huntsville Hornets and the Brian Rudder Rangers. Still about seven and a half minutes before we get ready for the kickoff tonight between these two rivals, as my good friend broadcast partner here alluded to. It's a battle of Highway 30 tonight here, and it culminates at the brand new Huntsville ISD Stadium. Time to get to know the personnel, folks. It's your starting lineups brought to you by our friends at Texas True Comfort Heating and Cooling. First to the visiting side for the Brian Rudder Rangers. They look like this under the direction of head coach Eric Izar. Looking at the offensive side of things, the quarterback leading the way tonight is the junior, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, the junior, Cody Billings. Two running backs set for them tonight, number 28, Bruce Hendrick, and number 5, A.J. Morrison. Three receivers tonight for Mr. Billings. It'll be Jaquise Martin, who is also kind of that, you know, jack-of-all-trades. He's thrown the ball well as a quarterback. He also runs the ball, so maybe he'll get a look at that tonight as well. Brandon Cooks is another wide receiver, as well as Malik Dunn. And then the guys along in the trenches, number 15, Hunter McGarry, number 75, Ivan Garcia, number 52, Miguel Garcia, number 55, Juan Gutierrez, and number 77, Gabriel Garcia. Looking to the defense for them tonight, number 44, Tracy Mola on that defensive line, along with 99, Braylon Norwood, number 21, Jamari and West, and number 15, at Jaren Robinson. Three linebackers for them tonight. Number 35, Jeremiah Duran, number 11, Jaden Erskine, and number 34, Ivan Soltello. And in the secondary for them, number two, Zamonte Wells, number 18, Jordan Oliva, number three, Brandon Cooks, as well as number 23, Denim Preston. That is the starting lineup for the Rudder Rangers. Brian, when you look at that lineup, obviously there's a lot of talent on that side of things. And we talked about it earlier in the pregame that they're not going to just roll over here to the Huntsville Hornets. What's it going to take on the Rudder side of things uh, for the fans that are tuning in from the Rudder side to try and stun the Hornets tonight? Well, it's going to be a great ball game, but I think their quarterback is going to be key to their success uh, or whatever happens to them tonight. I mean, he is very talented, as you, you talked about a minute ago. He can run. He can throw. He's got some talent. And these guys have a great record. They're going to come in here ready to play some football. Now flip to the other side now as the starting lineups for the Huntsville Hornets. Brought to you by Texas True Comfort Heating and Cooling. Looking at the offense, they are led by their field general number 11, the junior Austin Taylor. The offense really runs through him, but it also runs through their running back in the sophomore number five, Trey Sean Brown. What's going to be what's going to be critical for those two tonight? That's that two-headed dragon in that backfield for the Hornets that can cause damage to anyone that opposes them. How do they keep their momentum up? Well, I, I tell the one of the things that Austin does, and he's getting better 
you know, week by week is his leadership skills and his confidence level. Man, it is through the roof. I've thrown the ball with him a couple times over the summer. Man, he's got a heck of an arm. He's got the quarterback mentality, and you got to love that. And then Trayshawn Brown, I mean, you can't say enough about this young man. I mean, he is a sophomore, and he can run lights out. And I'm not so sure. I mean, we'll have him for three years. I'm not sure. Uh, he may bust every running back record. And I'm talking there's been some incredible running backs come through this high school over the years, and he is at the top of the top of the heap there. Three wide receivers tonight for Austin Taylor, Peyton Pryor, Braylon Phelps, and Milton Green, the third one tight end as well, and Jerry is Singletary. And then that offensive line, it runs up those with those guys as well. J.T. Kroll, John Trey Barkin, Brian Parker Jr., Daniel Cruz, and Trey Williams from left tackle to right tackle. They have really been the key to that success for Mr. Treshawn Brown as well for Austin Taylor. It starts with those guys up front, and they've done a great job now that they have all really gelled together. Now flipping to the Hornet defense. Again, the starting lineups brought to you by Texas True Comfort Heating and Cooling. On that defensive line, four big guys up front. Zach Moss, Tyler Smith, Kadarian Easley, and Hezekiah Johnson. And we talked about a double nickel is the one that is the highlight there in that defensive line for the Hornets. Three linebackers, three of them all-stars. Shiloh Jones, Jawan Giddens, the Mike linebacker, and number eight, McCorrick Norman and then in that secondary which has seen some holes from here and there but now they've got a unit that is gelled together number 22 Brenton Carroll number nine Cole Schroeder number three Isaiah Collins and number six J-Bug Jeremiah Winfrey the defense is going to be ready to go the Hornet fans are ready to go we are ready to go that's your starting lineups brought to you by Texas True Comfort Heating and Cooling the Hornets are about to take the field so we're going to step aside and take a break when we come back we'll have kickoff live from Huntsville ISD Stadium on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network this has been the Texas True Comfort Countdown to Kickoff. Stay tuned for this week's Huntsville High School football game. This is the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network, powered by KSAM Sports. License number TACLB42958E. Don't sweat it. Stay cool with Texas True Comfort. Texas True Comfort will fix your broken AC system quickly any day of the week with no overtime fees. They can lower your cooling bills and keep your home cool and comfortable. Call 936 400 0049 to schedule your service today. Discounts for veterans, educators, first responders, and TDCJ personnel. See website for details. Texas True Comfort, veteran owned and operated. Your true comfort is guaranteed. TXTrue.com. We will win if we are the best on the field. One, two, three, four, five, five. The following is a KSAM Sports presentation. It's Friday night in Hornets country. This is Huntsville Hornets High School Football. Proudly presented by Bill Fick Ford and by Advantage Specialties. AB Squared Self Storage. A&D Propane. Adams Furniture. Charlie's Used Cars. First Franklin Financial. Gamers Grove. Hartfield Florist. Huntsville Independent School District. Huntsville Truck and Tractor Kubota. MRC Creekside. McGillberry Mechanical Heating and Cooling. Moke and Moke Attorneys at Law. Murray in Insurance and Financial Services, Nelson Amaya Collision Center, Northside Baptist Church, Pinnacle Realty Advisors, Texas Department of Criminal Justice, Texpress Urgent Care Center, The Woodlands Financial Group, Wiesner Huntsville, McWilliams and Sons Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing, University Heights Baptist Church. The 2023 Hornet season is presented by Bill Fick Ford. Now, here's Carlos Zimmerman and Brian Adams. Live from the gateway to the East Texas Piney Woods, we welcome you to a special edition of Friday Night Football on KSAM Sports, presented by Bill Fick Ford. Tonight, the matchup to cap off homecoming week between the Brian Rutter Rangers and your Huntsville Hornets at the brand new Huntsville ISD Stadium. As we welcome you inside the Pinnacle Realty Advisors broadcast booth, I am Carlos Zimmerman. Alongside of me is Brian Adams. Glad to have you with us tonight. It is going to be a heck of a ball game here tonight, but we are going to first step aside and hand it down to the sidelines here tonight as we are playing our country's national anthem down on the field right now.
You hear him down there on the field, a beautiful rendition of our country's national anthem, live tonight at Huntsville ISD Stadium on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. Hi, friends. Carlos Zimmerman alongside of me is the former Hornet quarterback, Brian Adams. Glad to have you with us tonight at the brand-new Huntsville ISD Stadium. Teams are going to get ready for the coin toss here in a few moments, and we'll see who will start with the ball here tonight. Brian, my friend, a pleasure to be up here with you, my friend, to open up this brand-new stadium. A long time coming for the Hornets. It's going to be a heck of a ball game that is in front of us here tonight. Now, Carlos, it's great to be up here with you, man. It has been exciting. And what an electric night we have here at Huntsville ISD Stadium. I mean, the stands are packed. There are people everywhere. The excitement is just through the roof. The lights, man, when the team came on the field, man, the lights are blinking and everything else. Incredible atmosphere, man. It's going to be an exciting night. Absolutely. Something that Huntsville has been looking forward to for a very, very long time, and now it will finally come to a culmination here tonight against the Rudder Rangers. As now we'll take it down to the field for the coin toss here. Down on the field below us as Isaiah Collins, Cole Schroeder, JT Kroll, and Joseph Mejia are down meeting with Rudder's captains for tonight's special coin toss. I actually got to get a look at the coin that is down there tonight as the Board of Trustees and uh, Dr. Scott Shepard, who will join us at halftime in the, later on in this ball game, They are doing the coin toss down on the field right now. Well, I thought we were going to have a ref mic'd up and actually talking out loud, but we'll see what they decide to do down there on the field. Obviously, I'm just looking down at the crowd below us, Brian. There's a couple empty seats still, but guys, there's still people filing into the stadium. <laughs> I mean, by the dozens. Because they did the toss just now. We're going to see who will have the ball to start tonight's ball game. We've seen the last couple of weeks the Hornets win the to excuse me, win the toss and then defer to the second half. So we'll be intrigued to see who starts with the ball tonight. Will the offense get their first looks or will the defense do their first touches down here at Huntsville ISD Stadium? They've already been practicing while well on this field. The JV and freshman teams have gotten to play here. A team has not lost at this stadium yet. The JV team won last week and the freshman teams took care of Brian Rudder last night here at Huntsville ISD Stadium. So what's left? The varsity team. The main one, the main attraction will be the one to try and get it done here this evening. The Hornets are going to be rocking the black jerseys for this first game at Huntsville ISD Stadium with the numbers in white outlined in black. As for Brian Rudder, they're in their road silver jerseys with the numbers in black outlined in Hornet green. Again, I want to remind you folks, tonight's video broadcast is being presented in 2K Quad HD with a 4K Ultra HD enhanced presentation. Closed captioning is also available Brian for the has hearing won the toss. They elected to defer to the second half. Huntsville will receive the football from the clock. There you have it. A ref mic. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> the ref mic, and we're getting the ball first. Yeah, you know, you, you, that's something we haven't had. We only had the, the luxury of at the Bearcat games, and now you have that here at the Huntsville games too, now and for many, many years to come. So as you heard our head referee say, Rudder won the toss. They have deferred it to the second half. So the Hornets will receive the ball first. So Austin Taylor and Treshawn Brown and company, they will show what they are made of in front of a capacity crowd at Huntsville ISD Stadium. Fans still trickling in here this evening. The band's getting ready to get to their spots as well. The cheer squad's ready to go. Everybody down there on the bench is ready to go. And folks, we are ready to go here in the broadcast booth. It has been a long time coming for the Huntsville Hornets. So many years that they played at Pritchett Field. So many years they played at Bauer Stadium. Two years ago, a bond was introduced and the Huntsville community let this happen. So we thank you very much, Huntsville, for helping make this possible, as well as everybody else that has contributed, whether it be so small or whether it be in a big way. This is for you guys here tonight. The Huntsville Hornet faithful, the student section, they are on their feet and they are ready for an incredible ball game here tonight between the Rudder Rangers and your Huntsville Hornets. Two back deep to receive here for the Hornets. Jeremiah Duran will get ready to boot this one away for Brian Rudder. And we are ready to go here this evening live at Huntsville ISD Stadium. Man, does it feel good to say that. Ball is teed up at the 40-yard line. And ladies and gentlemen, the first game at Huntsville ISD Stadium is underway, and the Hornets will return this one with Braylon Phelps taking it from his own five-yard line, working this to the far sideline across the 20 to the 25 to the 30. Flag flies in from the line judge, but a good return by Braylon Phelps to set up the offense, but we do have laundry on the field. Nice return over there on the left side of the field by Braylon Phelps. 
Kind of picked the ball up, taken around the left side, picked up a block, but we do have a flag. Well, we'll get the call here from our head referee. On the return, holding number 35 of the return team. That'll be a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. That's going to go on Kenneth Scott, the third of the sophomore cornerback, so that'll negate a little bit of that return by Braylon Phelps, but that is where Huntsville will now take over back around their own 20-yard line, and here is Austin Taylor and company, along with Treshawn Brown, his running back, and their receivers, and the offensive line has had a great year. Looking at Austin Taylor, a 65.2% completion rate. He's 47 of 72, 704 yards, eight touchdowns, and two interceptions. He can also run the ball well, well over 100 yards rushing. He starts the first play at Huntsville, ISD Stadium from their own 20-yard line moving left to right across your radio dial. In the shotgun, Taylor gets the snap. He'll fake the give to Brown. No, he'll give it to Brown, and Brown stretches forward for a measly one or two yards. That'll bring up a second down and nine or eight for the Hornets. Treshawn Brown just gets a handoff, goes over to the left side, trying to get between the A and B gap and uh, picks up a couple yards. I think one of the things that's important tonight for Austin Taylor, the excitement level is through the roof. He needs to just maintain an even keel, play within himself, and don't try to over overplay him on uh, particular plays and whatnot. Two men will go in motion. The two tight ends, Brian Red and Jerry Singletary. Second down and eight for Taylor at the 22. A high snap by Brian Parker Jr. And Austin Taylor is going to get swallowed up back around the 15-yard line. Not what Austin Taylor and company were hoping for there. They'll bring up a long third down for the Hornets. The Hornets have struggled this year with the snap uh, with Brian Parker Jr. to Austin Taylor. Man, they've had uh, several snaps that were just uh, either at the feet or he had a jump for it. Or they really need to work on that because, man, that is so important. Third down and a long for the Huntsville Hornets from their own 15-yard line. They'll be third down and 16, officially 10-44 remaining in this first quarter here in Huntsville. No score. Taylor will line up in the shotgun. Trips receivers here to the left. Hunter Lorenz lines up in the slot. Brown motions out of the backfield to the far sideline, one-on-one at the top. Taylor left alone back there now. He claps, gets the good snap this time. Three-step drop back. Now he feels the pressure rolling to his right. He'll just be forced to throw this away, and that is incomplete. And I don't rightfully know if there was a receiver in the area, but I don't know if they're going to call intentional grounding. But either way, the Hornets are held three and out and will have to punt to start this game. Right off the bat, they get a holding call. That is certainly not what you want. I mean, the first kickoff of the new stadium, they get a holding call that drives them back, way back into their own end. And then a couple of just uh, plays that uh, didn't get executed quite so well, having to punt the ball. And Rudder's going to get the ball back in really great territory. Joseph Mejia will get ready to punt this one away. One back deep to receive here for the Rudder Rangers. Mejia stands at his own one-yard line. He gets the low snap, gets this one away. Good booming kick to the near far sideline. It will take a Hornet bounce and be returned here by Brian Rudder. They take it into Hornet territory to the 48-yard line. It is a short field of work here on the return. Brandon Cooks for Brian Rudder, and that is where their offense will set up shop to start their first drive of the night. Shallow Jones... Kadarian Easley, Zach Moss, the kind of the, uh, the, the power trio back in this Hornet defense. They're going to have to play some really heads-up football. We have a call here real quick. Number 21 running into the kicker. That penalty is declined. First down. So that flag was a running into the kicker called on Jamarian West, one of the defensive linemen. Penalty is declined, so they will just take it at the Fort E8 as that would have just kept it as a fourth down there had the Hornets accepted that penalty. So let's see what the Hornet defense is made of. They've done a great job all year long hanging on against these opponents. They come off of a shutout of Lamar Consolidated, but now they run into a Ranger squad. We'll see what is going to happen here. Cody Billings is the quarterback. He will line up here in the shotgun with four wide receivers, one back with him, four-man rush coming for the Hornets, first and ten from the Hornet 48. Jaquise Martin will go in motion. They hand this one off to the left side, but not getting any forward momentum as maybe the turf monster got A.J. Morrison there running that one to the near sideline. No gain, second down and 10 with 10 minutes left in the first. Number eight, McCork Norman absolutely came in from his strong safety position and almost took the head off of the running back from Brian Rudder. Man, the Hornets are playing fired up football right now. Second down and 10 now for the Rangers, still at their own, at the Hornet, excuse me, 48-yard line. Cody Billings lines up the shotgun. They'll spread them two to each side on the receiver core. 
Four-man rush for the Hornets as Billings gets the snap rolling to his right. That is caught at the 45-yard line before he is brought down by a couple of Hornets. Shiloh Jones and Cole Schroeder were the ones that finished him off. It is a gain of eight on the play to bring up a third down and two to the Hornet 40. Big third down opportunity here for Brian Rudder and also for the Hornet defense, man. This is the first third down. Uh, opportunity for Rudder for the evening, and uh, man, this Hornet defense needs to stand tall. You look at Cody Billings, almost a similar year that he's having along with Austin Taylor. Eight touchdowns and four interceptions. That last pass going for eight. It's third down and two at the 40. Two backfield set here as Billings gets the snap. Quick handoff here to Martin running this one to the right side. Gains the edge around Kadarian easily before he is forced out of bounds around the 32-33 yard line. That's enough, though, for a Rudder first down. Rudder did what they had to do. They converted their first third down opportunity tonight. Gets a new set, uh, fresh set of downs. Again, Billings on the year. He's kind of that dual threat as well. 22, 22 carries, 156 yards, and two touchdowns. He's got a 95.4 quarterback rating for a Rudder team that has had a great start to their regular season right there in the middle of the district. Huntsville working their way right now at the top. First down and 10 from the 34. As Billings gets the snap, he'll hand this one off to Martin, trying to gain the edge on the near sideline. Bounces off of one Hornet. Boom, big hit by Shiloh Jones at the 30-yard line of Martin. And that will bring up a second down and six, maybe five, for Rudder. Nice play by Rudder. Inside handoff to Martin, and he cuts it up the edge. But, man, Shiloh Jones put a lick on him. Nice little uh, pickup, though. But a methodical drive starting to build here for the Rudder Rangers up to the 29-yard line of Huntsville. Defensive coordinator Amori Del Real barking out instructions to his defense on second down and five from the 29. Billings lines up in the shotgun, two receivers stacked to each side. As Billings throws, flag flies in from the line judge here. Out of bounds after that catch is Jaquees Martin up to the 26-yard line, but we do have laundry on the field brought to you by A&D Propane. Let's check this flag. It was a free play, so that's usually in the area of a penalty against Huntsville. Let's get the call. Offside. Number 89 of the defense lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty. First down. That's going to go against Hezekiah Johnson, one of those backup defensive linemen. That'll hurt the Hornets. It was a first down nearly for Rudder, but they will get the first down anyway as the ball will move up to the 24-yard line. Unfortunate, you know, the hunt, uh, the, you know, getting these penalties this early in the night, man, you would hope by this time in the season they'd kind of gotten rid of some of those penalties. Lining up in the neutral zone, but they'll reset. First down and 10 from the Hornets 24. One will go in motion. That is one of the backup wide receivers in Brandon Cooks. Billings will now change up the play here at the line of scrimmage on this first down. 8-14 remaining on the game clock in the first quarter. No score as Billings gets the snap, hands it off to his back in Morrison before double nickel. 5-5, Kadarian easily swallows him up at the 21-yard line. It's a modest gain of three to bring up second and seven for Rudder. Inside handoff to A.J. Morrison. Nice run play. Rudder's doing a pretty good job uh, running the ball up the middle on the Hornets, and that's kind of been one of the weak spots for the Hornets all season long is that run up the middle. Rudder has got this one on the edge of the end zone at the 20-yard line. They'll give him four on that run for Morrison, the 5'7", junior, no, sophomore, running back. So second down and six. They'll spread him out with three receivers. Tight end offset and a four-man rush coming for the Hornets. Billings in the shotgun. Claps gets the snap. Hands this one off again to Morrison. He's stretching forward for that first down. But Jawan Giddens, the Mike linebacker, able to stop him short of a first down at the 17-yard line inside the hash marks to bring up a third and two. Really great job by Jawan Giddens. Playing linebacker for the first time this year. Came from the running back side of the ball last year. and Man, he has done a great job. He's also played that quarterback position as well, so he's seen every facet of the ball game. So here we go, third down and officially three for Rudder at the 17-yard line of the Hornets. One goes in motion, two backfield set here for Cody Billings. Billings gets the snap, hands this one off here. Martin running this one to the right side, trying to work his way through one of the holes, but he's not going to get to the first down. Shallow Jones made sure he did not get there. It's no gain on the play, maybe even a loss of one, and that should bring out the field goal unit for the Brian Rudder Rangers, and indeed it will. And this will be a 35-yard try from the far hash mark. A really great play by Shallow Jones. I mean, that guy is the just lifeblood of that defense playing Mike Linebacker. Man, he put a big hit on Rudder, forcing the field goal opportunity. So actually, officially a 34-yard try here for the Rangers. Christian Ocampo will boot this one from his right hash mark. Holder for him is Dedre Gooden. Snap is away, the hold is down, and he slipped trying to kick it, and it's going to bounce into the end zone and roll out of the back, so the Hornets catch a massive break as 
My goodness, the turf monster got wow. Ocampo oh. trying to get to the ball. I think that's three missed field goals we've called now in the last 24 hours. <laughs> yeah. But either way, for the Hornets with 6-12 remaining in this first quarter, they avoid the danger, and it is still nothing at nothing in this advantage specialties first quarter. Unfortunate there for Brian Rudder. I mean, that uh, as you said prior to coming on, I mean, it's been raining around here, and, uh, man, there's still some moisture in there, and it feels going to be a little wet. Brian, while we have a quick pause in the action, let's thank some of our sponsors. Absolutely. We want it, uh, this season of Huntsville Hornet football is presented by Bill Fick for No Bull, Just Good Deals, and AB Squared Self Storage, your local go-to self-storage facility. So first and 10 for the Hornets, right back at their own 20-yard line. Just like their first drive, they'll try to turn something here with three receivers spread to the near sideline. Taylor out of the gun, gets the snap, he'll hand it off to Brown, running this one to the right side, across the 20-yard line, trying to pivot around one man, still on his feet, but he is going to be brought down at the 23-yard line, a good gain of three to set up second down and seven halfway through this first quarter. Brandon Cooks was in there on the stop for the Rangers. Again, the Rangers entering the night three and two, third place. As of the moment, in the district standings, 1-0 in district play for Huntsville. They're at the top by tiebreaker, owning a point differential tiebreaker over Lake Creek, especially after their 67-0 demolishing of Lamar Consolidated a week ago. Second and seven for the Hornets, five and a half minutes remaining, 16 on the play clock. Taylor surveys the defense here, a pre-snap, and he'll work out of the gun with three receivers. As he gets the snap, he'll look to throw. And now gets a good block here from his running back. Hit as he throws, but he's just forced to throw it away incomplete. Bringing the pressure there for the Rudder Rangers. Braylon Norwood, the senior D lineman, and that'll bring up a third down and seven for Huntsville. Austin Taylor dropping back. He's kind of doing a kind of a half rollout, trying to look at the right side downfield. Nobody open, and uh, you give credit to Rudder, man. They're putting a lot of pressure on Austin Taylor so far in this ballgame. Inside five minutes to go, still no score between the Rudder Rangers and the Huntsville Hornets. Third down and seven for Huntsville at their own 23-yard line. The line to gain is the 30. Trips receivers to the far sideline, Hunter Lorenz in the slot. As Taylor gets the snap, he'll roll to his left looking to get rid of this one. He'll fire this one to a wide open. Milton Green over the middle of the field, 40, 35, 30. What an open field run for Milton Green the third, and the first big moment for the Hornets at the new stadium. First down and 10, Amok and Moke, attorneys at law, first down. Big play, Austin Taylor, Milton Green the third. Green is running just a go route down the middle of the field. Austin Taylor hits him perfectly. Big play, Huntsville Hornets. All the way down to the 32-yard line. What a strike from Austin Taylor to Melton Green the third, 45 yards, and that's a first and 10 for the Hornets at the 32. Some switching of personnel here. Melton Green will remain in along with Sabian Conte. Hunter Lorenz to the far sideline, one-on-one at the top, going up against Ryan Campbell. Taylor will line up under center here on first down and 10. 4.13 left to go on the game clock in this advantage specialties first quarter as Taylor gets the snap, hands it off to Brown. Working this one to the right sideline, cuts it back at the 30-yard line, still chugging the legs all the way down to the 26-yard line. A good, healthy run after contact by Trayshawn Brown. Again, a six, second and four on the way. Great run by, <coughs> by Brown on the right side. Uh, Con hits uh, two pieces of uh, two defenders on the both sides, man, and he picks up a good, good run there on first down. That will set up a second down and four here for the Huntsville Hornets at the 26. Taylor will now line up in the shotgun with three receivers. Two to the near sideline, one to the far. Lorenz is the one on the far sideline. Brown will now motion here to the left side of Austin Taylor. Four-man rush on the way for the Rangers. Taylor gets the snap out of the gun. He'll hand it off on a delay to Brown. May have been better to keep it himself, but he is still able to turn into the positive yardage is Trayshawn Brown, and that sets up a third down and two for the Hornets. Nice play there by Denham Preston, uh, 5'10", 160 pound strong safety. He got in the backfield, kind of made the disruption. Nice little play there by Rudder. Again, a packed house here tonight at Huntsville ISD Stadium. Some folks still trickling in here for the first time tonight. There's a volleyball match going on at Paul Bowen Gym, so there is still more to come here tonight before all is said and done. Hornets are moving towards that Murray Insurance and Financial Services red zone. Third down and two at the 24. Lorenz in motion from the far sideline to the near sideline. Taylor gets the snap, rolling to his right on third down. Looking downfield, but he'll be forced to just try and keep it himself. The momentum took him forward. Where are they going to mark him? It's beyond the 25. The line to gain was the 23, 22. They're going to mark him a shy. It is fourth down, but a... Ranger is slow to get up here on the near sideline. That's Jaden Erskine. Out for injury. It's Jaden Erskine that is down on the field right now 
for the Rudder Rangers. He is upright, so that is a good thing to see, but he'll get looked at by the training staff. With two and a half minutes left to go in this Advantage Specialties first quarter, still no score as Erskine pops right up, and he will come off the field under his own power, which is good to see. But it's fourth down and one as Taylor was not able to get the line to gain. From here, it would be... From the 23-yard line, that'd be a 40-yard try for Joseph Mejia. That's not even the longest he's kicked this year, but head coach Rodney Southern I don't think has any intention to kick a field goal. He's going to go for it here. Luke, down there on the sideline for us. Do you like that call down there? Love the call. You have to go for it. You open up your stadium. You don't want to kick a field goal to be your first points. You want it to be a touchdown. We're going to get one here on this drive. I convert real quick. Here we go, fourth down and one. The line to gain is the 22, Austin Taylor. He'll line up in the shotgun. Braylon Phelps is his running back with two receivers spread down here to the near sideline. Peyton Pryor lines up in the slot. Just need the one yard, three feet. Austin Taylor claps out of the gun, gets the snap, handed off to Braylon Phelps, bounces it to the outside. He's got the first down and more across the 20 and down near the 15-yard line. A good run there by Braylon Phelps, who had an incredible week last week against Lamar Consolidated. That'll move the chains into the Murray Insurance Financial Red Zone on another Mocha Mocha Attorneys at Law first down. What a great run by Braylon Phelps on the right side. Picks up the first down, but man, Trey Williams, the right tackle for the Hornets, had a heck of a block to spring him for that first down. Phelps will stay in here on first and 10 from the 15-yard line. Hornets moving with 2.09 left to go on the game clock in the first. Taylor lines up in the gun. His running back to his right. He claps, gets the snap. He will hand it off to Phelps, but that was read perfectly that time by the Brian Rudder Rangers. Hunter McGarry getting into that backfield to stop the young running back. It's a loss of two on the play to bring up second and 12. Nice there. Nice play there by uh, Hunter McGarry. I mean, man, he was in the backfield before the ball almost got handed off. Kyle Smith, he will check into the offensive line in place here. He'll line up as that left guard right next to JT Kroll, the blindside blocker for the Hornets, switching from the D-line to the offensive line and has been the main protector of Austin Taylor this year. Second and officially 13, they gave him a loss of three on the play. Play clock down to 10 here on second down. Taylor out of the shotgun, claps, has the snap. Dropping back, he's got pressure all over him. Fires the Jerry Singletary here on the near sideline. Singletary still on his feet across the 10 and down to the seven yard line. A great run after the catch by Jerry Singletary. They'll even move him just a little bit further to the, uh, no, right at the seven yard line. They'll bring up a third down and two for Huntsville. The line to gain is the five. Nice play by Austin Taylor. He's got heat coming from his blind side. Gets rid of it right before he's leveled. Nice little pickup, making this third down very easy to get. Inside one minute left to go on the Advantage Specialties first quarter. No score between Huntsville and Brian Rudder. And this matchup in District 10 out of Region 3, 5A Division 2. Third down and two for the Hornets. 45 seconds left. Austin Taylor. Lines up in the shotgun, two receivers to the far sideline. He claps, has the snap, hands it off here to Phelps, kicking it to the outside, trying to dive forward. And he's got enough for the first down. I think he wanted pay dirt there, but he'll be marked just short at the one-yard line. But it is enough for a Mocha Mocha. Attorneys at law, first down to the one. Man, you got to love the effort by Braylon Phelps. He's going around the right side. He's... He's starting to go down, and he's stretching that ball out just as far as he can. As you said, man, he's wanting that end zone bad. They'll move it back one yard to the two-yard line officially. For either way, it is first and goal for the Hornets. Might be the final play here of this advantage specialties first quarter with the clock winding down to 20 seconds. Taylor, the lineup with two receivers. His running back is Braylon Phelps. He gets the snap. He will hand it off to Phelps, trying to bounce it to the outside, but not a lot of real estate in front of him before he is finished off at the six-yard line. Getting the finish there was Tracy Mola, and that will be the end of this Advantage Specialties first quarter. Still no score between Brian Rudder and the Huntsville Hornets. The teams will flip fields, and we'll get ready for the second quarter coming up in just a few moments. We'll That's be back in half. 60 seconds on first the Hornet quarter. Nation Broadcast Network, powered by KSAM Sports. Your brand is your business. Shop local with Advantage Specialties where you will get service with a personal touch. Hello, I'm Stephanie Pitts, owner and operator of Advantage Specialties. Advantage Specialties offers screen printing and embroidery on site. Let Advantage Specialties get you ready for your next event with cups, apparel, caps, pins, and everything else you could need. Go to AdvantageSpecialties.com or call our team at 936-291-3222 to start that order now. Sing them Hornets!
AB Squared Self Storage is your local go-to self-storage facility that can help give you the extra space you need, big or small. From non-climate and climate-controlled storage to parking spaces for your car, boat, trailer, and RV, they have it all. AB Squared Self Storage has 24-hour computerized gate access, around-the-clock security camera monitoring, no long-term lease commitment, and convenient payment options. Give them a call today at 936-755-5000 or reserve your space online at www.ab2selfstorage.com. Back at Huntsville ISD Stadium, still no score between the Brian Rudder Rangers and your Huntsville Hornets. Carlos Zimmerman alongside Brian Adams live from the Pinnacle Realty Advisors broadcast booth. Good word from Paul Bow and Jim. Huntsville Lady Hornet Volleyball completed another sweep of a district opponent in Porter. They are now 4-1 in one in district play, so that crowd will start making their way over here to the stadium and get ready for the rest of this ballgame. But congratulations to Huntsville Lady Hornet Volleyball. Coming out of the quarter break, it is second and goal from the six-yard line for the Hornets to start this second quarter of play. Lorenzo motioning closer as Taylor has the snap. Looking to the end zone. He's got Trayshawn Brown in the end zone. Touchdown, Huntsville Hornets. Six to nothing. And Trayshawn Brown, the young sophomore running back, will have for the rest of his life that he scored the first touchdown at Huntsville ISD Stadium. Unbelievable, man. We just saw it. He picked up the very first touchdown in this new beautiful facility. Austin Taylor hits him perfectly. Man, that's how you do it right there. You see their confidence growing, Carlos, game by game, and you saw it right there. That's an MRC Creekside touchdown. Now Joseph Mejia is on for the Nelson Amaya's Collision Center point after try. Hunter Lorenz is his holder. Brian Parker Jr. is the deep snapper. Lorenz gets the high snap, gets it down, and Mejia splits the uprights. Easy does it good. 7 to nothing Hornets with 11.56 left to go in this second quarter of play. We'll step aside and take a quick break. Be back in 30 seconds on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. Looking for something sporty and great on gas? Then head to Bill Fick Ford in Huntsville. Turn heads and fill up less often with a sporty new fuel-efficient Ford crossover like the ever-popular Ford Bronco. Orders for 2024 Broncos are now open. Or check out the built-tough Ford F-Series trucks, including the all-new Ford f 150 Bill Fick Ford, where customer satisfaction comes first. And there's no bull, just good deals. Hurry in today or shop online at Bill Fick Ford Huntsville. Seven nothing Huntsville on the Hornet Nation broadcast network. Eleven fifty six remaining in this second quarter of play. Carlos Zimmerman alongside of me is Brian Adams. Luke Scott down on the sidelines for us. Luke, man, oh man, what a hot start there for the Huntsville Hornets right out of the gate. I don't think he's paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good segue. Yeah, that was great. But either way, we'll get back to it here. With the Diana K. Barnes State Farm Insurance kickoff, Joseph Mejia will get ready to boot this one back to Brian Rudder. After the Hornets struggled on their opening drive, they put together an incredible drive on their second attempt, and it culminates in a touchdown. Mejia will boot this one away. A pooch kick over the middle of the field. Fair catch is called for back at the 22-yard line. Brian Rudder, they will set up shop at their own 25. Brian, let's thank some of our sponsors who made tonight's broadcast possible. We want to thank Charlie's Used Cars. Customer satisfaction is our number one priority in Huntsville Independent School District. Focus for our children's unlimited success in Hartfield, Florida, personalizing your events since 1957. So Rudder, Rudder will take over, first and 10 from their own 25-yard line. Their first drive. Not going really anywhere for them. A missed field goal is what it finished off with. But they'll spread them out five wide. Trips receivers to the near sideline as Billings gets the snap. It will be a screen play here to the far sideline, but it is incomplete either way. Man, did they feel the Hornet defense there. Malik Dunn could not haul that ball in from Billings. Good coverage by the Hornets. Bring up second and ten. Rudder trying to set up a screen play over on the left side. Man alive, and they didn't touch any of the interior linemen for the Hornets, and they were all over him before he could get the ball away. And Isaiah Collins, the... Texas Tech commit was able to bring the pressure there on Dunn. Second and ten. Billings in the shotgun. Claps gets the snap with Jawan Giddens coming at him. They'll throw over the middle, and it is incomplete. Trying to go to Jaquise Martin once again. The junior wide receiver, McCorick Norman, was in there to help jar it loose. Third down for Rudder. Nice play also by Isaiah Collins, the weak safety for the Hornets. Man, he is active and all over the field tonight. A normal cornerback, but being... Used as a free safety now, that weak side safety in absence of Jacob Ruffin, who is out likely for the rest of the season, but he has done well there, has Isaiah Collins in that free safety spot. 
Third down and 10 now for Rudder. 11.47 left to go in the second quarter of play. Lined up at their own 25. They'll spread them out again. Trips receivers to the far sideline. Two down here to the near side. Billings needs some time here as he gets the snap. Four-man rush for the Hornets. Billings over the middle, but it is caught at the 40-yard line. There by Jaquise Martin, brought down by Cole Schroeder around the 43, 45-yard line. Officially is where they spot him. That's a 20-yard strike and a first down for the Rangers. Really nice play there by Rudder, man. They needed some kind of a big play, and they just got it to move the sticks and get them a new fresh set of downs. First and 10 now for the Rangers. 11.38 remaining on the game clock in this second quarter. 7-0 Huntsville here at the brand-new Huntsville ISD Stadium. As Billings gets a snap on first down, he'll hand it off to his back, trying to bounce it to the outside, but good containment here by the Hornets, and Isaiah Collins and J-Bug in there on the stop of the running back. Back to the 43-yard line. That's Bruce Hendrick running that one for the first time tonight. Loss of two on the play, second and 12 on the way. Another thing you're starting to see again throughout this season, Carlos, is the defense for Huntsville wrapping up. When they have contact, man, it is not arm contact, man. They are wrapping up opponents, man, and they are. It is. It is fun to watch. Eleven minutes left to go in this second quarter. Second and twelve coming up here for the Rangers. They move left to right across your radio dial. Five wide receivers here as they spread them out. Three to the near sideline, two to the far. Four-man rush on the way for Huntsville as Billings has the snap. Looking over the middle, caught by Martin, gets one man to slip around the 45 and down to the 40-yard line where Shiloh Jones was able to polish him off. But a great run after the catch by Jaquise Martin. That's good for a first down. We're at the top of the hour, so we must pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. We apologize for the technical difficulties. We're back to play here as Jaquise Martin gets in a massive catch over there from Cody Billings all the way from their own 40, from the Huntsville 40 yard line all the way down to the three yard line. And we have got whistles coming in here this now. Is and it will be a timeout now on the field. I think we are now ready for our pause for station identification. We'll take it with you now on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. This is the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network, 101.7 KSAM Huntsville, and on the KSAM mobile app, Stingham Hornets. Back here at Huntsville ISD Stadium, live from the Pickle Realty Advisors broadcast booth. Carlos Zimmerman alongside Brian Adams. Luke Scott down on the sidelines for us. I'll throw it to him here really quick. Man, some big plays here on this drive for Rudder, and they are marching it down the field all the way to the six-yard line, Luke, and they are knocking on the door of tying this game. Yeah, a couple of really good finding it, and some pretty tight windows there for Brian. Coaches seem to call a timeout. They were not happy. Shoot the Thank you, Luke. First and goal now for the Rudder Rangers after the 34-yard catch there by Jaquise Martin. That'll bring up a first down and 10. Well, actually, first and goal, 10 and 21 left to go on that game clock as the clock rolls here. Billings will send Martin over to the far sideline. Good some mixed direction here as the turf monster got to the running back in Bruce Hendrick before he could break the end zone. It's only a gain of about three on the play, and that'll bring up second and goal from the three. A nice hit there by Isaiah Collins again. Man, he has been very active so far in his first half. Puts a big hit on that running back for Brian Rudder. That'll set up the second down and goal now for the Rudder Rangers, trying to tie this game up after the Hornets on their last drive were able to turn their first score. Strike to Treshawn Brown. We'll see what Rudder has here. Jaquise Martin is now in as the quarterback. We talked about that in our pregame. He is kind of that jack of all trades. And now we've got a timeout that's going to be taken here by Rudder. Timeout, Brian Rudder. First time out of the half. We'll take it with them on a University Heights Baptist Church timeout. Be back in 30 seconds on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. Switching is easy. We do it all the time. We switch on the lights. We switch TV channels. You can switch and save with State Farm. In fact, State Farm agent Diana K. Barnes, right here in Huntsville, can switch you over so you can start saving today. Diana and her team are ready to welcome you to the State Farm neighborhood. Just give her a call when you want the real deal. Like a good neighbor. State Farm is there.
Back at Huntsville ISD Stadium, 9.37 remaining in this second quarter of play. 7-0 Huntsville. Rudder has got the ball second and goal at, their, at the Huntsville three-yard line. As again, Jaquise Martin in as the quarterback right now in place of Cody Billings. We talked about it earlier in the pregame that they kind of use him in this quarterback position as well as he will spread him out five wide, three to one side, two to the other. As we'll get back to play here, second down and goal. Martin has the snap, and he is smothered oh, in the oh backfield man. by McCorick. Norman kind of didn't have any idea where he was going to go. He <laughs> lost his helmet in the process. That's a Hartfield Florida sack for McCorick. Norman, that'll bring up third and goal back around the 7-8 yard line. What a play by Norman. I mean, he knocked the helmet off the opponent. What a big hit. Dropped him back, man. What a good play. Martin has to come off the field here. He cannot come back on as he lost his helmet. And we'll bring up third and goal here at the eight-yard line for Brian Rudder. Well, taking Martin out of the equation, man, that's a big weapon to lose right here on the, deep Brian in Rudder. the Hornet territory. Second time out of the half. And now Brian Rudder's forced to burn another one of their timeouts as the play clock was dwindling down. So they're down to one timeout left, and we're still got nine minutes and 27 seconds left to go in this second quarter with Huntsville leading seven to nothing. Brian? While we have a pause in the action, let's thank more of our wonderful sponsors. Absolutely. We want to thank McWilliams and Sons Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. We're not comfortable until you are. MRC Creekside Retirement Community, a healthy living senior community. And Mocha Mocha Attorneys at Law for your estate planning, real estate, business law needs. Call Mocha Mocha Attorneys at Law serving Huntsville since 1971. And this season of Huntsville Hornet Football is presented by Bill Fick Ford. No bull, just good deals. Try to say that five times fast. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> So we thank all of our wonderful sponsors for everything they do in support of Huntsville Hornet Athletics, not just at the football level, but across the board, basketball, baseball, softball. We thank you very much for your patronage to the Hornets. Absolutely. Coming out of the timeout, third down and goal here from the Hornets' eight-yard line. The Hornets trying to make a stand here and shut Rudder away. Possibly only three will come out of this drive. Maybe none. We'll see. Billings back in as the quarterback. He'll have four receivers. Trips to the right side. He'll talk here and bark on an instruction to his running back, and Bruce Hendrick, he now lines up on his left side as Billings gets the snap, dropping back, feeling the pressure, and he's forced to just throw it way short of his intended receiver, trying to get it in there to Jaquise Martin. Once again, Isaiah Collins brought the coverage, and the Hornets brought the heat as well. Fourth and goal at the eight, and here comes the kicking unit for the Rangers. Great stand there by the Hornet defense. McCork Norman, man, he is playing lights out. This whole team is playing lights out so far tonight, but man, he came in there on a blitz, and uh, Rudder just had to throw the ball away. Good play, Hornets. Christian Ocampo on for his second field goal attempt of the night. Missed his first because he slipped on the turf from the eight-yard line. This will be a 25-yard try. Martin will be his holder. From the middle of the hash mark, so he just has to lace this one through. Snap is away. Martin lays it down, and the kick up by Ocampo splits the uprights and is good. So Rudder is on the board for the first time tonight. 9.20 remaining in this second quarter. It is 7-3 as we step aside. Be back in 30 seconds on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. This is BJ McMichael, and I am a proud 1993 Hornet graduate and 1998 Bearcat graduate. I am also the Minister of Students and Outreach at University Heights Baptist Church. Here at University Heights, we are connected to Christ and the community. We also offer small groups and activities for every age and stage. Be sure to check us out online at uhbc.net or download our UHBC app in the Apple or Android store today. Stingham Hornets! We welcome you back to Huntsville ISD Stadium on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. Carlos Zimmerman and Brian Adams live tonight here at the brand new Huntsville ISD Stadium. It has been quite the spectacle tonight. Really, both sides have filled out rather nicely. Rudder has brought a great delegation, but that might be a lot of Hornet fans over there as well because the side here close to us, packed to the gills, folks. I mean, what a beautiful sight. You're right, it is absolutely packed on the home side and the visitor side over there is about Looks like almost half packed, maybe three quarters packed. Lots of folks in attendance tonight. And you know, there might be a lot of people here that aren't a fan of either Huntsville or Rudder. They just want to come out here and check out this, the new digs out yeah, absolutely. here. So, yeah. And of course, if you are tuning in on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network, the flagship YouTube station of the Hornets, glad to have you with us tonight as well. 270 strong of you. Lots of folks tuning in in the chat. Chad Webb tuning in tonight. Houston Hardcastle, one of our great cameramen who couldn't join us here tonight. He's tuning in. David Angstadt's tuning in from the 50-yard line on the top row right below us. 
Patrick McCallop or Mac Killip tuning in as well as the kick is away here by Brian Rudder. Two back deep to receive it here for the Hornets. Braylon Phelps hands this one off to J-Bug on that little bit of a return there. J-Bug with room across the 25 before he is tackled shy of getting any much further. So that's where the Hornets will take over. Getting word from our sideline reporter in Luke Scott, standing room only here on the Huntsville side. Gotta love it. Thank you, Huntsville. So the Hornet offense takes over, leading 7-3 with 9-12 remaining in this second quarter of play. More folks tuning in on the web stream tonight. Shelly Cleveland, Maribel Mata, good friend of ours. We have a John Doe tuning in here tonight. <laughs> and as well as general manager at KSAM, Tim Johnson, tuning in tonight as well. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Let your friends know that they can tune in to the KSAM YouTube channel to watch the video stream of this one tonight. And the Hornets, they are off and ready to go here. Rudder's defense was not quite ready, and they're still not ready as they come here to the line of scrimmage. It's a handoff here to Trayshawn Brown, who hurdles over one man, but he's not able to get much further. It's only a gain of one. Second down and nine coming up for the Hornets. Nice little run there by Treshawn Brown, but a great play there by the defensive end, number 99 there for Brian Rudder, Braylon Norwood. Man, he made a heck of a play from behind. The well, Hornets will reset here, so will Rudder. Second down and nine from the Hornet 26. Brown, the running back, trips receivers to the far sideline. Hornets moving right to left across your radio dial. As Taylor in the shotgun has the snap, rolling to his right, wanting to look down the field for an open man. Has one over the middle, Savion Conte. At the 35-yard line, forward progress will take him to the 36. And that's enough for a Mocha Mocha attorneys at law. First down and 11-yard catch for Savion Conte. Nice pass there by Austin Taylor, man. Standing tall in the pocket, letting the play develop. And, man, he just throws a dart right between the numbers. Good, good play there by Austin Taylor. That'll reset here. First and 10 after the Mocha Mocha attorneys at law first down at the 36-yard line. The Hornets lined up on the far hash mark here from us in the press box. They'll spread them out with three receivers, one tight end set in there as well. One back with Taylor is Treshawn Brown. As Taylor claps, has the snap out of the gun, hands this one off to Brown, but Rudder read that one absolutely perfectly that time. It's going to be a loss of one or two on the play, officially two, second down and long on the way for the Hornets. Handoff up the middle to Treshawn Brown, but, man, uh, Brian Rudder, they, uh, boy, they got penetration there, and we're in the backfield. Man, good play there by the front four for Rudder. And head coach Rodney Southern, been with the Hornets since 2013, entering here in one of is expected to be an incredible season for him. He's seen the highs and lows of playoff glory, and he's hoping to get this squad back there as the Hornets making it to the by district round last year. But missed in 21 as it's second down and 12. Big step drop back here by Austin Taylor. Found Trayshawn Brown in the open field at 35-40, 45-50, 45-40. Flag flies in late as Trayshawn Brown had a great run after the catch, but I think we may have an ineligible man downfield. We'll see what the call officially is here. I mean, that play was really broken as Austin Taylor was backing up all the way around his own 15-yard line. It was really set up nicely, and Austin Taylor kept dropping back and dropping back. And they there finally... is no foul on the play. There you go. Big break for the Hornets. Nice set up on that screen play. Austin Taylor, Treshawn Brown. All the way from the 34 up to the Brian Rudder 41-yard line. That is a gain of 25 yards for Treshawn Brown to bring up first down and 10 on that Mocha Mocha Attorneys at Law. First down to the Rudder 41. Three receivers set here for Huntsville. 7.26 remaining in the second quarter. 7 to 3 Hornets. As Austin Taylor, he will line up here in the shotgun. Clock will now continue to move on the referee's signal. Four man rush on the way for the Rangers. Taylor out of the gun, gets the snap, hands it off. Trayshawn Brown running this one to the right side with some real estate in front of him across the 40 over to the 35 yard line. Flags flying in from everywhere. Still kept his feet up to the 30, but we have got two separate flags here on the play. This laundry on the field brought to you by a and Propane. It's in the area of holding, but I'm not totally sure. Inside handoff, Trayshawn Brown takes the edge on the right side as the flags fly. Nice pickup. Let's see what the call is going to be, but I think you're right, Carlos. That's kind of in the area of holding, but, man, they're kind of pointing towards Rudder. Maybe offsetting penalties? We'll see. Holding number 12 of the offense. That's a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still first down. There you go. So the hold will go against Peyton Pryor. That'll back up the Hornets here. 
Ten yards from the spot of the foul, and it looks like it was at the line of scrimmage, so that will back them up to around midfield is where they will spot it. They officially will mark this at the rudder 49-yard line. Line to gain is the 31, so it'll be first and 18 for the Huntsville Hornets. 7.07 left to go in the second quarter. They lead 7-3, does Huntsville. Phelps a motion out of the backfield here, leaving an empty backfield for Austin Taylor. Four-man rush on the way for the Rangers as Taylor gets the snap. He'll drop back on a three-step drop back. He'll launch this one way down the field, looking for Melton Green, the third, but it goes through his hands. Incomplete, man, and he knew it as well that he just missed that one. That was a touchdown all over it for Melton Green, the third, but it's incomplete. Milton Green the third is running a deep post route down the middle and Austin Taylor puts it on the mark and it went right through his hands. You don't see that very often for Milton Green the third. And I love that composure of Taylor in the, uh, in, in the backfield. He felt that pressure coming from Denham Preston out of his safety position on that blitz. But man, oh man, that was a perfect ball. Maybe a touch overthrown, but Milton Green the third was, on, uh, was underneath of it. So they'll try to reset here. Second down and 18 coming up. 6.49 remaining to go in the second quarter. Play clock is down to five, so the Hornets have got to move with some urgency here to avoid having to burn a timeout. Pryor's going to go in motion here, and head coach Rodney Southern will be forced to burn a timeout before the play clock gets down to zero, but a flag did fly in. Did the Hornets get the timeout in time? Timeout, Huntsville. First time out of the half. That'll be the first time out for the Hornets. They'll have two remaining, and we'll step aside and take it with them on a University Heights Baptist Church timeout. Be back in 30 on the Hornet Nation. From joyful occasions to the unexpected, First Franklin Financial makes loans for a living, offering fixed rates and flexible terms on loans up to $15,000. The next time you're looking for some extra cash to help make ends meet, come see the friendly Franklin folks or visit us at 1FFC.com to learn more. All loan terms and APRs depend on meeting our underwriting and income criteria and may require collateral. First Franklin Financial Corporation is licensed by the Virginia State Corporation Commission CFI 215. Georgia Residential Mortgage Licensee 5656. MMLS number 141654. Not available in North Carolina. Seven to three, Huntsville on the Hornet Nation broadcast network. 649 remaining in this second quarter of play. They're backed up to... Uh, the rudder, 49-yard line right now, getting out of their first timeout used of the half. As you get a look there, if you're watching on the video stream of the student section, and they are alive and well here tonight. Call it the Hornet's Nest, if you will. Really, we could probably call this entire place the Hornet's That's Nest. No doubt. <laughs> and Huntsville ISD Stadium making its debut here tonight. Getting ready to get back to play. Second down and 18 for Huntsville from the 49-yard line in rudder territory. Taylor lines up in the shotgun, three receivers. One to the far sideline is Hunter Lorenz. Pryor will go in motion from his slot position on the near sideline as Taylor gets the snap, rolling to his left, looking to throw. Sidearms this one down the field. Savion Conte trying to come back to it, but he is not able to get there. Falls to the turf incomplete, underthrown there by Austin Taylor, but that'll bring up a third down and 18 for the Hornets. Very difficult uh, pass there for Austin Taylor. Again, right-handed quarterback rolling to his left. He kind of just, I don't know if the ball slipped out of his hand or, or what exactly, but man, anytime you're a right-hander rolling to your left, throwing across your body, that's a tough throw. Well, I'll bring up a third down and really Willis to go here for the Huntsville Hornets. The line to gain is the 31-yard line in rudder territory. They got to go 18 yards. This is Something that these head coach, this head coach and Rodney Southern and the coaching staff on the offensive side, they don't have a lot of plays for other than some deep routes, and that's what we'll probably see here. Phelps motions out of the backfield here, lines up as the far receiver on the near sideline as Taylor gets the snap on an open, empty backfield, rolling to the right here, trying to look downfield. He's in trouble, hit as he throws, and it is incomplete. Nearly intercepted there by Ryan Campbell. A little bit of an ill-advised pass, but we do have a flag on the back end of the play. And it was right in the area where Austin Taylor went down. Let's see, man, did he feel the pressure? But here's the call from our head referee. Personal foul, defense number 99. That'll be a 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, he didn't say it, but I'm willing to bet that is roughing the passer on Austin Taylor. So... The Hornets catch a break on a big penalty there brought to you by A&D Propane. It'll be first and 10 for the Hornets at the 34-yard line in rudder territory. Yeah, that was a big break. It makes up for that hold that pushed the Hornets back. So kind of gets them back to their where they were just a little while ago. 
First down and 10 for the Huntsville Hornets. Moving the ball down the field, leading 7-3, 6.34 remaining in the second quarter. Taylor in the shotgun, three receivers. Four-man rush coming here for the Rangers. As Taylor claps, gets the high snap, rolling back to his right, feels the pressure, throws to Braylon Phelps. Flags fly in in the backfield, possible holding here against the Huntsville Hornets as man did Taylor feel the pressure right there. Trace Imola bringing in all of it, and the Hornets' front line could not hold them back. This one's coming back. Yeah, I believe that's going to be on Singletary. Holding, offense number 28. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Still first down. Nailed it right on the head. Jerry Singletary gets hurt with the flag and the hold, and that'll back up the Hornets once again from the 34 to the 44. And this long drive will continue for Huntsville as the penalty is starting the mount. Yeah, Jerry Singletary is playing tight end. He was lined up on the left. He got beat, and just so he was trying to save Austin Taylor, man, grabs his, his opponent's jersey and flags flew. So the Hornets will reset first and 20 from the 44. Trips receivers to the near sideline. And now a flag comes in. That's going to be a false start against Huntsville. I think it's going to continue to get worse. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 28 of the offense. Ugh. Five yard penalty. Oh, that's Still back to back down. on Singletary. That is back to back on Singletary. And we're right back where we started. To the rudder 49 yard line. And now the line to gain is the rudder 24. First and 25 now for Huntsville as Singletary moved before the snap. Well, we'll see what Austin Taylor can do to try and recover. 6-13 left in the second quarter, 7-3 Huntsville. As Taylor gets the snap out of the shotgun, he will hand this one off to his back. This is Braylon Phelps bouncing it to the outside, but is stopped before much more forward momentum could go his way. Ultimately, he will only get one on that run to bring up second down and 24. I think we have a rudder player down over here on the near sideline near the 50. Indeed we do, and I believe it's the one that made the stop there this on Braylon right Phelps. He's on his back here. I can't quite tell what the number is down there. Once we get it for you, we will let you know, but obviously you hate to see that really on both sides as they're looking at him on the sideline here. We'll bring it back up inside the Pinnacle Realty Advisors broadcast booth. 7-3 Huntsville, 550 remaining in this second quarter. Huntsville has had the ball for what it seems like an eternity. They started back at their own 25, and they're up to the rudder 49 right now, but the penalties have continuously hurt the Hornets as this ball game has progressed on this drive. The player down on the field for Brian Rutter. That is Nick Villarreal, 42 for them. That is getting looked at by Rutter's training staff. Coming up on the Northside Baptist Church halftime report, we'll have a halftime interview with head coach Rodney Southern. We'll recap the first half of action. A special guest joining us tonight here at the top of the halftime show. It is the superintendent himself, Dr. Scott Shepard, will join us here up in the booth coming up here on the Northside Baptist Church halftime report. We'll also bring you keys to the second half as well. As Villarreal will come off the field here under his own power, which is good to see. He is a little gimpy, but he will be able to recover. And Brian, look at the big screen over there and get a look at the Huntsville ISD Stadium crowd here on the home side. It's full. That is amazing, isn't it? Look at that. Wow. The student section, the Hornets Nest, all those students, man, just loving a Friday night uh, football here in their own campus. Now the Hornets have to try and bounce back on this drive on multiple holding penalties called against them. Second and 24 as Taylor gets the snap with some pressure in his face, finds Treshawn Brown in the open field across the 45 before he is stopped. And if they'll stop forward progress at the 42-yard line, and that will bring up a third down and long for the Huntsville Hornets. The line the game is the 24, so it's third down and 18. Nice play, though, by Austin Taylor hitting Treshawn Brown. He's in motion. He goes out into the flat, so they make up some of that yardage. They still is third in a long way, but still a, they made up some yardage here on that previous play. And I know head coach Rodney Southern is definitely not pleased with all the penalties that has hurt Huntsville on this drive. Still a good ball game, 7-3 with 5.07 remaining in this second quarter of play. Trips receivers here to the near sideline. One back with Taylor's Treshawn Brown. Four-man rush for the Rangers. Might bring an extra one on the blitz. As Taylor gets the snap, he'll roll to his left. He's in trouble. He's forced to just throw it at the feet of his lineman. As man, oh man, did Rudder bring the heat there with everybody on that blitz. And after all of that, Huntsville will have to punt it away. 
Well, Brian Rudder, man, I tell you, they got a heck of a defense as well. They got a couple of linebackers, DNs, man, that are super fast, and they're giving Singletary fits. He did a good job on that particular series, but, man, these guys are getting in there quick. Joseph Mejia is now on for the punt. One will go back deep to receive here. That's Brandon Cooks. JT Kroll having to come in here late with the play clock down to nine here on this punt from Joseph Mejia. Chilo Jones is the deep snapper. He'll snap it away. Mejia corrals it. He'll boot this one with the right leg towards the rudder sideline. It will take a bounce here for rudder and trying to keep it alive there was Shiloh Jones. Are they going to say out of the end zone? Yep, it's into the end zone for a touchback, and Rudder will take it out to the 20-yard line. Hey, I want to remind you folks, coming up this Monday night on your Columbus Day, join us at Chick-fil-A for the Hornet Nation Coaches Show. Live at Chick-fil-A in Huntsville, myself and Brian Adams will talk with head coach Rodney Southern and a couple of the Hornet football squad to talk about the latest with the team. You can listen to the show right here on 101.7 KSAM and watch it on the 101.7 KSAM YouTube channel, 7 o'clock this Monday night at Chick-fil-A in Huntsville for the Hornet Nation Coaches Show. So Rudder has the ball, 4.42 remaining in this second quarter of play, down 7-3 against the Hornets. It's been a rather defensive ball game so far, and we knew it was going to be close throughout. And you hear the crowd down there getting loud and rowdy. Yeah, they are. That's Cody Billings. He'll line up under center here, one back with him, one will go in motion. He'll hand it off to that motion man. That's Brandon Cooks running to the left sideline with some room across the 25 to the 30, cutting it back at the 35 before a Hornet was able to get back to him, and a flag will fly in late. Late tackle out of bounds against the Hornets, and now we've got a scuffle on the far sideline. Boy, the Hornets are getting eaten up with penalties. Man, alive, that has been their Achilles heel this season is penalties, and it continues here tonight. Head coach Eric Izar, he is hot over there. I'm sure head coach Rodney Southern's a bit hot as well. As You know, we talked about it in the open. It's a rivalry game, so things are going to get quite chippy. But obviously things you hate to see like that. Refereeing crew is converging here at the rudder 40-yard line to try and sort all of this out if there's anything extra that is going to be thrown out here. Again, the, again running that one was Brandon Cooks, and he was tackled a bit out of bounds by J-Bug, I believe. Trying to bring him down as he cut back at the 35, but this refereeing crew trying to sort all of it out and try to get it right. 432 remaining in the second quarter, 7-3 Huntsville. That's one of the things Huntsville really needs to work on is their discipline. You know, when you're that far out of bounds, let the guy go. You know, and now what's going to happen is it's going to put them near midfield with a new set of downs. There are two fouls. Both are on Huntsville. We got a personal foul, number three. We also have a dead ball foul, personal foul, number one. That'll be 30 yards and penalties. So they call personal foul penalties on Isaiah Collins and Jawan Giddens. Those are 30 yard penalties here enforced against the Hornets. Oh my goodness. And this ball is gonna move way past, way past yeah. after the run way into Huntsville territory with 4.32 left to go in this second quarter. Rudder's going to have prime field position to try and navigate the rest of this drive. God, and, man, they're still walking. Got to play smart, guys. All the way down to the Hornet 30-yard line. That ball goes after the run. So that is where Rudder will take over. The defense will now have to try and reset. And those two will match the total penalty yardage from last week for Huntsville against Lamar Consolidated right there. First down and 10 from the 30. Billings will line up under center. He'll send Cooks in motion. He'll hand it off to Cooks. End around play here. Trickeration trying to fire it downfield, but he led his receiver too far. Jaquise Martin looking to go the way of A.J. Morrison. Well out of his reach. Incomplete. Hornets catch a break. Second down. They did catch a break because Morrison was wide open on that trick play. That ball was just overthrown. Had it been on target, that would have been six. J-Bug was the one back in coverage. Jeremiah Winfrey got beat just a little bit there by Morrison, but it'll remain second down and 10 from the Hornet 30-yard line. 4.26 left to go on the game clock. The Hornets leading 7-3. Billings lines up in the shotgun with four receivers. Trips down to the near sideline. One back with him. 
He gets the snap. He'll roll to the right. He'll fake it and hand it off to the back here across the 30-yard line. Missed tackle, but Hezekiah Johnson comes back to get the running back in, Bruce Hendrick. That'll bring up a third down and five for the Rudder Rangers at the 25. Really big third down here for the Hornet defense. I mean, you got four minutes and 11 seconds left in the first half. Keep them out of the end zone. Big third down right here. Force them to try to kick another field goal. Four minutes remaining in the second quarter. 7-3 Huntsville. Third down and five for the Rudder Rangers. Empty backfield for Cody Billings. Hornets will look to rush with four as they'll leave just those four in the box. Billings gets the snap, dropping back. Has some time, but the pressure's starting to break down there as he felt it. Working this one to the far sideline, and it's incomplete. J-Bug broke that one up. Cole Schroeder bringing some pressure as well. Fourth down for Rudder. And I think the field goal unit, will they come out or will they really be gutsy and go for it? The attended receiver was Caden Holmes. Well, it looks to me like, uh, man, the offense is going to try to stay out there. And that is indeed the case, my uh -oh, friend. Oh, here we go. 3.38 remaining in the second quarter. And Rudder, deep in Huntsville territory at the 25, will go for it here on fourth down and five. Can the Hornets make a big defensive stop? Billings lines up in the shotgun, four receivers, trips to the near sideline. He gets the snap, dropping back, rolling to the right. Now fires off his back leg, and it's incomplete. The Corrick Norman back in coverage. Brandon Cooks was the intended receiver. Turnover on downs, and Rudder is left empty on the drive. How about that Hornet defense standing tall after those two penalties that cost them 30 yards, man. But the Hornet defense stood tall, man, and the ball is turned over on downs. And here's Austin Taylor with 3.33 remaining in the second quarter. Two timeouts left for Huntsville. Rudder has the ball to start the second half, so it is paramount here for the Hornets, and they come away with points on this drive. Plenty of time left to march them down the field. They still have, uh, what, two timeouts left? We'll see what they can do. As Austin Taylor takes over from his own 25, moving right to left across your radio dial. Out of the shotgun with three receivers, gets the snap, hands it off to Braylon Phelps, end around play. Hands this one here to Melton Green the third in the open field across the 25, and ultimately he ran 10 yards, but the forward progress gives him two, second down and eight. What a great play there by Brian Rudder's number three, Randon Cooks. Man, he was sitting there, and he just made a great open field tackle. You know, here's a little nugget I got from their radio crew that's down the hall from us. Randon Cooks and Brandon Cooks, twin brothers. Brandon and Brandon. Brandon and Brandon. There yes. you go. Second down and eight. 3.05 left to go in the second quarter. 7 to 3. Taylor gets a high snap, hands it off to Braylon Phelps, trying to bounce it to the outside, cutting it back at the 25. Trying to get some forward momentum going his way. It's going to be ultimately a loss of one on the play. He'll bring up third down and nine for the Hornets. As that play could not materialize whatsoever for Huntsville. Well, Brian Rudder's doing a great job. They're getting penetration down that front four, man. They're giving our line fits, and they're getting into the backfield, causing Austin Taylor and some of the running backs a lot of difficulties. And on a homecoming night to cap off homecoming week, third down and nine for Huntsville with 2.25 left to go. Austin Taylor in the shotgun, three receivers. One back with him is Trey Sean Brown. He claps, has the snap, dropping back with three steps. Fires this one up a wobbly throw, and it's intercepted here. Flags fly in here from the back judges here. This is intercepted by Brandon Cooks, and he is forced out of bounds here. And oh my goodness, not a great pass there from Austin Taylor. We do have flags on the field. Well, we have two flags. Let's hope it's not against the Hornets for another 30 yards. And the offense is staying out there, so this one. Prior to the pass, defensive pass interference, number 18. That's going to be a 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And the Hornets get bailed out. Wow. So, do us, so does Austin Taylor. He can get that one back. So Jordan Oliva is the one that is called for pass interference, and that will give the Hornets, after the pass interference penalty brought to you by A&D Propane, up to the 42-yard line in their own territory with 2.06 left to go in the second. Man, did they catch a break or what? Boy, they sure did. And Randon Cooks was the one that picked it off, and he returned it all the way to the Hornet 25, 24-yard line, so that would have been prime field position for Rudder. First and 10 from the 42. Taylor will motion Hunter Lorenz from the near sideline. He'll go to the far sideline in the slot as Taylor gets the snap. Rolling to his right. Throws to a wide open Hunter Lorenz in the open field at the 45. Stretching forward to midfield. Still on his feet. Oh, he stepped out of bounds. 
Right at midfield at the 50, but still a great run after the catch for eight yards, second and two on the way. Yeah, nice pass here by Austin Taylor, hitting Hunter Lorenz on the side. Lorenz makes a good move, steps out of bounds. Man, or he'd been off to the races. Well, the positive side of that is there's always a silver lining in everything. He stepped out of bounds, it stops the clock with a minute 59 left with the Hornets right there at midfield, right north of that Rock and H in the, at the 50-yard line. Second down and two, Taylor in the shotgun, three receivers. Four-man rush for the Rangers. Claps has the snap. Does Taylor play action fake? He keeps it himself rolling to the right. Flag flies in from the back judge. Taylor's down to the 41-yard line into rudder territory. And now a second flag has flown in. So we have two flags here on the play. We well, might, we might have offsetting penalties here. I'm not so sure Southern didn't just get him a penalty. Mm, I don't know. He was standing right by the official, and there was no players around, and a flag flew. But then you had the one on the other side of the field there, too. And lots of flags here tonight. Possible hold against the Hornets, but they're going to try and sort this out. I'm not sure how many penalties we had in this first half, but we've had about two game full. Those 30-yard penalties earlier matched what Huntsville had against Lamar Consolidated a week ago. Here's the call. We have fouls by players of both teams. We have a chop lock on the offense by number 70 and 73. We got a dead ball foul. Personal foul, number 70. Those penalties offset. We're going to replay second down. All right. So the Hornets and really, respectively, the Rangers catch a break as well. Offsetting penalties there charged to the offensive line of the Hornets, Brian Parker Jr. as well as Daniel Cruz. And then also number 70. Correction on those penalties. Both penalties were live ball. Thank you, sir. But either way, we'll reset. Second down and two at midfield at the 50. So Austin Taylor will get a chance to regroup here after the scramble. That was negated. We'll see what he has here. Blitz on the way for Rudder. It's going to be a free play here as Taylor lost the ball. He'll be forced to just throw this one away. Didn't get out of bounds, but I think a receiver was in the area. But this is definitely going to be offsides against Rudder. Man, oh man, A&D Propane. These flags, they are really, really coming out here tonight in full force on the debut of Huntsville ISD Stadium. Offsides, number 44 of the defense, five-yard penalty. That's a first down. Tracy Mola gets burned to four. The offsides, and that's good for Amoka Moka attorneys at law first down to the 45-yard line. A minute 41 left to go here in the second quarter with the Hornets leading 7-3. Man alive, brother. These penalties. Been a lot of them. They'll reset now. First and 10 from the 45 in rudder territory. Taylor in the shotgun with three receivers. Claps gets the snap. Drops back. Feels the pressure. Throws off his back leg. Caught by Conte here to the near sideline to the 40 to the 35. Spinning around at the 30-yard line. What a run after the catch by Savion Conte. But oh my goodness, another flag has flown in. Two of them to be exact. What a great block. <clears throat> and he, I think he's going to get hit for targeting, and that is a shame because, man, what a great block to free that wide out up. Unbelievable. Goodness gracious. Personal foul, blindside block number two of the offense. 15-yard penalty. <laughs> oh, first man, yeah, that's going to be charged to Melton Green the third, a blindside block. And we've had just about every penalty in the book so far. Here tonight, chop blocks, holds, false starts. Now you got a blindside block, a great effort by Melton Green the third, but that is going to back up the Hornets to the 50-yard line. It was a 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, which was right apparently at around the line to game, the 35-yard line. So the run after the catch by Savion Conte is negated, and now the Hornets will be forced to reset at midfield with a minute 25 remaining and counting. They have two timeouts left in their back pocket as well. Trips receivers here to the far sideline as Taylor out of the gun gets the snap. He'll hand it off to his back, Trayshawn Brown, not able to get any forward momentum. He'll lose a couple on the play, and that'll bring up a second down and 17. The clock stopping. No, it's still moving with a minute remaining left to go in this second quarter. The score is still 7-3 Huntsville. I think we've had seven penalties on this drive alone. I, I think you are right in saying that, Brian. Hornets not moving with a lot of urgency here. 45 seconds. They still have those two timeouts if they need it, but they've got to go forward. Second down and 17. 
from their own 48-yard line. Taylor has the snap, feels the pressure, rolling to his right, trying to use his speed. He'll be forced to take off and run with this one across the 45 to the 40-yard line and wisely gets out of bounds at the 33. Way to turn. Nothing into something there if you're the junior quarterback, Austin Taylor. That'll bring up a third down for the Hornets, and the clock stopped at 33 seconds. Smart play by Taylor. He's rolling to his right, looking downfield, can't find anybody open, takes it himself, picks up big yards, makes this third down conversion very attainable. Gets it up to the rudder, 42-yard line. Third down and seven for Huntsville. Line to gain is the 35. The end zone, 42 yards away. Trips receivers here to the near sideline. Four-man rush for the Rudder Rangers on third down and seven. Taylor in the shotgun. Awaits the snap from BPJ. He has it. Looking to throw. Throws over the middle. That is caught. Jerry is Singletary across the 35. He's got the first down and more across the 30 and down to the near sideline at the 25-yard line. Great run after the catch by Jerry is Singletary. Enough for Amoka Moka. Turnies at law first down. Singletary's lined up on the right side. Comes across the middle in a drag pattern. Great throw by Austin Taylor. He's wide open. Picks up the first down. Time Great out. play. Punchville. Second time out of the half. One timeout remaining for the Hornets as that's a University Heights Baptist Church timeout. We'll keep it right here, though, as we welcome you back inside the Pinnacle Realty Advisors broadcast booth. Brian, as we get down to the end here of the second quarter, let's thank more of our sponsors. I absolutely want to thank ATK Towing, home of the Tipsy Tow, and First Franklin Financial, helping our neighbors do life since 1941. And Nelson Amaya's Collision Center, honest work, quality service, and Northside Baptist Church, growing people in Christ to reach others for Christ. Coming up is our Northside Baptist Church halftime report. We'll have that halftime interview with head coach Rodney Southern with Luke Scott down on the field. We'll recap that first half of action for you. Bring your keys to the second half. And joining us as a special guest is the superintendent of Unchsville ISD, Dr. Scott Shepard, will join us here at the beginning of the Northside Baptist Church halftime report. That is coming your way here next. Coming out of that timeout. Courage. Coming out of that timeout. It'll be first and 10 from the 19-yard line. Or excuse me, let me correct myself. From the 24-yard line. They don't have that right on the board. Line to gain is the 14. Taylor out of the shotgun with three receivers. Claps gets the high snap. Has some time here rolling to his right. Throws over the middle. Caught Hunter Lorenz right at the line to gain at the 15-yard line. Uh, they're going to move him a little bit further back to the 16. The clock's moving with 13 seconds left. Hornets got to get together here and clock this ball on third down, and Taylor does with 10 seconds remaining. That will set up third down and one for the Huntsville Hornets. With 10 seconds left, they have time to run one good play. And then they're going to have to call a timeout, or they're going to have to, they're gonna have to uh, spot that ball something with 10 seconds left. We'll see what head coach Rodney Southern and company have drawn up. you got to get points on this drive. You want a touchdown, but you take three going into halftime. They'll have one play here, as you said. Unless it takes a little too long to develop. Third down and one for the Hornets at the 16-yard line in rudder territory. Taylor out of the shotgun with three receivers. He claps, gets the snap, staying in the pocket, has some time. Now he'll step up and try to take off and run. He's got room across the 10 to the five-yard line. Do the Hornets have time to call a timeout with three seconds left? Indeed they do. Rodney Southern ran all the way out halfway into the field to the 10-yard line to get that timeout. <laughs> but what a great run by Austin Taylor to be able to set his team up for success. Timeout. And that'll Huntsville. give Joseph Mejia a lot of room Final to be able to make this field goal happen with three seconds left to make it 10-3. to three. You know what was really good about that play? Austin Taylor drops back, has great cover, great blocking by his big guys up front, but he doesn't make a silly pass. He doesn't try to force it, takes it himself, gets it closer for Mejia to make this attempt. Got it all the way down to the six-yard line. Inside that Murray Insurance and Financial Services red zone on the Mocha Mocha turnings at law first down to the six. This will be a 23-yard try for Joseph Mejia. And, Brian, let me tell you, we've seen it at the college level, especially last night for Sam Houston, and we've seen it at the high school level too. Chip shots are not a given. No, they're not. You know, and again, we talked about their moisture being out on that field, so the footing may be suspect. But you're right, there are no guarantees. So here's Joseph Mejia for the Nelson Amaya's Collision Center field goal try. Hunter Lorenz will be his holder. Brian Parker Jr. will be his deep snapper. Mejia will line up here on the far hash mark, a 23-yard attempt to make it 10-3 Huntsville. 
been quite the defensive spectacle so far on an incredible night at Huntsville ISD Stadium and a capacity crowd here this evening. Mejia. Lorenz has the hold down. The line drive kick by Mejia hits the upright on the left side and is no good. A line drive kick by Joseph Mejia is no good. That will make it 7-3. Let's throw it down to the field as Luke Scott is standing by with head coach Rodney Southern. Thanks, Carlos. Here with coach Southern coach. Uh, sloppy, really, ball game. Seven and a half. What's kind of the to clean up some of these penalties? Well, we got to keep better. Some of them I agree with. We're holding. We're not ball offensive line wise. They're whipping us point of attack there, but you know both sides been sloppy. But football, coach, really good play on defense, holding some, for some crucial uh, extra, or field goal tries. What's the kind of the message to them to clean up some of their play uh, in the big big time of the field? Stop getting caught up in all the nonsense and play like we always do. All right, thank you for your time, coach. All right, thank you, Luke, down on the sidelines for us. Head coach Rodney Southern obviously not pleased with how this first half has gone, but either way, his team has the lead. 7-3, Rudder will receive the ball when we come back with the Northside Baptist Church Halftime Report. We will be back in four minutes here on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. Hey folks, it's Steven over here at Adams Furniture, where we're your Huntsville, Texas hometown furniture store. Come in and see why we carry the top brands with great customer service. We carry brands such as Tempur-Pedic, Sealy Hybrid, Sarda Mattresses. We have the biggest selection of Lazy Boy recliners, double reclining sofas, reclining love seats. We have all-American made hardwood bedroom furniture, living room furniture, all-American made lift chairs. All this is in stock and ready for delivery at Adams Furniture. We are cheaper in the country. Shop local with us and save your money. It's Adams Furniture, 30 State Highway, 75 North and 10th Street. TWFG and More Insurance has been proudly serving the Huntsville and Walker County area since 2003. Ranked number one in Texas as an independently owned insurance provider, our independence affords us the freedom to shop insurance carriers and coverages that best suits our clients' specific needs. TWFG offers personal and commercial, life, health, and flood insurance. Call Waylon Moore at 936-293-8121 or drop by 1212 10th Street in Huntsville, Texas at TWFG and More Insurance. Insurance. Our policy is caring. Did you know a doctor's prescription is not needed to begin physical therapy? This allows you to begin therapy sooner without having to wait for a doctor's appointment to obtain your prescription. Since optimal physical therapy outcomes are obtained when treatment is started earlier, sooner really is better. Dallas Williams and the team at Physical Therapy Associates was voted best physical therapist in the Huntsville Items Reader's Choice Awards for the sixth year in a row. So when you make your PT choice, choose the best. Physical Therapy Associates, ptaclinic.com. Looking for something sporty and great on gas? Then head to Bill Fick Ford in Huntsville. Turn heads and fill up less often with a sporty new fuel-efficient Ford crossover like the ever-popular Ford Bronco. Orders for 2024 Broncos are now open. Or check out the built-tough Ford F-Series trucks, including the all-new Ford f 150 Bill Fick Ford, where customer satisfaction comes first. And there's no bull, just good deals. Hurry in today or shop online at Bill Fick Ford Huntsville. Com. Proud supporter of Huntsville High School, Danny Doherty State Farm in Huntsville covers all your business, auto, home, life, and renter's insurance needs. Call or stop by the office and get a quote today. They will find the right policy to fit your needs. Call Danny Doherty State Farm Insurance at 936-295-2067. That's 936-295-2067. Or visit them at 2914 Montgomery Road in Huntsville. Are you thinking of selling, buying, or investing? This is Frank Oliveris, United States Marine Corps veteran with Pinnacle Realty. From my family to yours, we want to say thank you to all the friends and families for trusting us with your vision and dream for the past 13 years. Remember, to our family, relationship matters, and friends turn into family. Give me a call, Frank Oliveris, for your real estate needs today, 936-577-6419 or 936-661-1575. Thank you, and we love you in Christ Jesus. Switching is easy. We do it all the time. We switch on the lights. We switch TV channels. You can switch and save with State Farm. In fact, State Farm agent Diana K. Barnes, right here in Huntsville, can switch you over so you can start saving today. Diana and her team are ready to welcome you to the State Farm neighborhood. Just give her a call when you want the real deal. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. 
From joyful occasions to the unexpected, First Franklin Financial makes loans for living, offering fixed rates and flexible terms on loans up to $15,000. The next time you're looking for some extra cash to help make ends meet, come see the friendly Franklin folks or visit us at 1FFC.com to learn more. All loan terms and APRs depend on meeting our underwriting and income criteria and may require collateral. First Franklin Financial Corporation is licensed by the Virginia State Corporation Commission CFI 215, Georgia Residential Mortgage Licensee 5656, MMLS number 1416654, not available in North Carolina. I'm Jerry Larson at Reliable Auto Parts, your auto parts plus store in Huntsville, Texas, having great products, excellent quality, and outstanding prices. This is what you can expect from Reliable Parts, where you can purchase all your car care products, maintenance supplies, and auto parts. Our services and in-house store offerings are designed to keep your vehicle and motorized machine in proper working condition. Reliable Parts, your auto parts store, 1011 11th Street, Huntsville, 295 47. Switching is easy. We do it all the time. We switch on the lights. We switch TV channels. You can switch and save with State Farm. In fact, State Farm agent Diana K. Barnes, right here in Huntsville, can switch you over so you can start saving today. Diana and her team are ready to welcome you to the State Farm neighborhood. Just give her a call when you want the real deal. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Hi there, I'm just a homeowner enjoying my new screen patio built by Sandal Renovation and Patio. Clint Sandal handled all the details, including 3D design and HOA submissions, securing approval in just three days. Sandal Renovation and Patio completed our project on budget and weeks ahead of schedule. Whether it's a new patio, kitchen, bathroom update, or your next home, start your home improvement project with a free estimate from the right builder. See our patio and examples at sandalrenovations.com. Did you know a a doctor's prescription is not needed to begin physical therapy. This allows you to begin therapy sooner without having to wait for a doctor's appointment to obtain your prescription. Since optimal physical therapy outcomes are obtained when treatment is started earlier, sooner really is better. Dallas Williams and the team at Physical Therapy Associates was voted best physical therapist in the Huntsville Islands Reader's Choice Awards for the sixth year in a row. So when you make your PT choice, choose the best. Physical Therapy Associates, ptaclinic.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here on the Northside Baptist Church Halftime Report. Carlos Zimmerman alongside of me, Brian Adams, and now joining us here at the start of the Northside Baptist Church Halftime Report is the head honcho himself, the guy that did a lot of overseeing of what was going to happen here tonight. It is the superintendent of Huntsville ISD, Dr. Scott Shepard. Doctor, how are you? Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Glad to have you joining us here tonight. 7-3 to three, Huntsville coming right here into the Northside Baptist Church Halftime Show, but let's talk about this tonight, just the absolute spectacle. It's homecoming, the capper of homecoming. It is standing room only here on the home side. This is everything you could have imagined it would be? It's amazing. It's so great that the community came out to support the team tonight, and the band, cheerleaders, GGs, and everybody, and to have a home of our own, thanks to the voters of Huntsville, this is just an amazing night. Absolutely it is. And, you know, Dr. Shepard, you guys have done, uh, first off, let me just say from my perspective, just an incredible job to get this thing ready. The bond passed in 2021, and here we are two years later, just, you know, sprouted up out of the ground with some hiccups here and there. But then they got it done. We're here. It's alive and well. we got a great ball game going on down there on the field. Just, just talk about your, that feeling of pride that now that the Huntsville Hornets have a home that they can call their own. It's just amazing, again, you know, the dedication Monday that we were all here for that and people came out for that too. I think it's just striking to hear people talk about when they knew we were going to build a stadium, this is not what they had pictured. I mean, it just surpassed most people's expectations, and uh, we're just so proud that we can bring this to Huntsville. Absolutely, and now it can also can be used for multiple different things. you got the baseball and softball complexes that will be on the way here shortly. But, you know, let's talk even just off the field. You know, a lot of the campuses here at Huntsville ISD were able to get a lot of benefits from that bond as well. Talk about that a little bit. So we've done additions at all the elementaries, and those are complete and almost ready to move in. You know, the Performing Arts Center at the high school, 1,000-seat auditorium, that's under construction now and moving along very nicely. Uh, Mance Park is getting a total redo, right? So the, the new cafeteria, new fine arts wing, new athletic section, and a whole new classroom wing as well so 
really every campus gets something from that bond. Absolutely. So, yeah, that's right, folks. Not, it's not just the sports bond. It was a whole district bond. And the, everybody, from the players to the, just the regular students that come out every single day for school, they get to benefit from this, as well as the teachers and, well, really, Huntsville at large as well from all of this. You know, uh, Dr. She talking with Dr. Shepard here on the Northside Baptist Church Halftime Report, superintendent of HISD. Uh, Doc, let's talk about just, you know, on the field right now, man. We got a just a back-and-forth ball game, but it feels like there's laundry on the field every single play. Just uh, your thoughts on how it's gone so far in this uh, debut night for the new stadium. Well, definitely a little sloppier than, than we would like. Um, I know Coach Southern and his staff is taking care of that in the locker room right now, and I'm sure our Hornets are going to come out even more prepared for the second half. Uh, you know, Rudder has given us a great game, really good team as well. So a great night for football. Let's just hope the Hornets come out on top. Dr. Shepard, before we let you go, is there anybody you want to just give a big thank you to for just this incredible night that has finally come? You know, I'm just going to – I could go through a whole list, you know that. And, uh, you know, our media, so many people have jumped on, on board from the beginning and helped us pass the bond. Um, I just want to thank the community. You know, without the voters coming out and having confidence in our school district and voting in that bond election, we wouldn't have these great facilities for our kids for generations to come. So thank you, Huntsville. Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Shepard, you have some special guests here in the box with us here tonight. If you want to shout them out real quick. Yeah, shout out to, to two of our, our sons that are here with us tonight, Walker and Tyler. Drove in from College Station, both Aggies over there, and they came to, to this big celebration with us tonight. Anybody else want to give a shout out to before we let you go? Well, you know, i got to say hi to Donna. There right? you go. Right, My my, my beautiful wife and, and supporter. Without her, I couldn't do any of this. And uh, just so glad to be here. Absolutely. Dr. Shepard, thank you so much for joining us here on the Halftime Show. Go out and enjoy the rest of this ball game, sir. And just thank you for everything you do for Huntsville. Thank you, too. Absolutely. We'll step aside and take a break. When we come back, we'll have more on the Northside Baptist Church Halftime Report. Live from Huntsville, 7-3 to three Hornets at the Halftime Break on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. Stop any of the guys coming off the field at halftime and most would tell you they need the rest. There's been a lot of helmet clashing and pad slapping in the first half. They need to rest and recuperate for the second half. We all need rest from the bruises and hard knocks that life can sometimes deliver. I want to suggest you come out to Northside this Sunday. Take a break from the playing field of life. Rest, recuperate, clear your mind. Make a plan for the new week ahead. I'm Reagan Cooksey, pastor of Northside Baptist Church. Are you listening? Welcome back here on the Northside Baptist Church Halftime Report, live from Huntsville ISD Stadium on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. Halftime here, 7-3 Huntsville here at the top of this broadcast, or top of this halftime show. Just talked with head coach, or not head coach, <laughs> he's a head coach in a way. Might as well be, right? Might as well be. Uh, Superintendent of Huntsville ISD and Dr. Scott Shepard. We thank him, his entire staff, the Board of Trustees, and everything that they did to help make this, really, this whole night possible, and just this entire new stadium, the complexes behind us as well for baseball and softball, and all the changes to all of the schools in the district. So we'll bring you back up inside the Pinnacle Realty Advisors broadcast booth and break down this first half for you. Man, I think this has been rather one of the more sloppy starts for the Huntsville Hornets. They have the lead 7-3 to three over Brian Rudder, but it was not a great half by any stretch, really for both sides. No, it really wasn't, and it was. It was very sloppy first half, probably one of the sloppiest first halves I've seen in a long time. I mean, both uh, sides of the ball are getting penalties and and a lot of them are just unnecessary. And, uh, you know, you got two good teams. Rudder, man, they are playing some ball. I mean, we got a very tight game. And so the Hornets got to come back out at halftime. And I know they will because they're in their, their breakout groups with their coaches. And uh, they're going to, you know, they're going to work through these penalties, work through these issues. But, man, they need to play a lot cleaner second half. Absolutely. Austin Taylor's had a little bit of struggles here and there, but I really you touched on it right there. The big problem that is gone for Huntsville, the penalties have been critical. They had a 30-yard stretch where they could they got penalized and had to punt it away. And then on that very last drive before that missed field goal by Joseph Mejia, penalty upon penalty upon penalty, really for both teams, but it more hurt Huntsville in the grand scheme of things. But Austin Taylor still did what he could to set his team up for success. The field goal just unfortunately doinked off the left upright. Yeah, you know, that's, uh, that's, we've seen several of those uh, here in the last 40, 24 hours. But you're right, Austin Taylor's having a really pretty good first half. He's getting a lot of pressure from the blind side, but he's getting rid of the ball. I think, and that's part of his maturation process. He's starting to feel that pressure behind him and knows he only has so much time before he has to get rid of that football. Doing a great job. And I tell you, uh, 
Um, Trishon Brown running the ball really well. Braylon Phillips is running the ball really well. The O-line, they need to step it up and hold those blocks a little bit longer. Just a touch longer, and then they'll be in really good shape to be able to help them down the forward. What have you seen from Rudders so far in this ball game? Only three points on the offensive side of the ball, but they have held this very good Hornet offense down. What have you seen from them? Well, that's exactly right, man. You, you just nailed it. It's their defense. That's what's keeping them in this ball game so far. Uh, they are very aggressive, man. They are hitting just like we're hitting, and, and man, this has been a very physical first half. Rudder offensively, if they if they kind of tweak their game a little bit, which they will coming out of halftime, it, it's going to be a great second half. And they do have the ball to start yeah. the second half of play, so that's something big for Brian Rudder here this evening. So we will see how the rest of this ball game progresses on that front. What do you think the coaching staff's talking about there in the locker room right now? You heard from head coach Rodney Southern there with Luke Scott there at the end. Obviously not pleased with his team in that first half and needing to try and refocus and regroup here for this second half. Well, I think just kind of what we talked about, play more disciplined football. Understand the situation that you're in. If you're 10, you know, if you're five yards out of bounds, don't body slam somebody. You know what? Just let it go. Or, you know, pass interference calls. If the ball's way overthrown, we saw that last night, as a matter of fact, in Sam Houston Liberty game. If the ball's well overthrown, man, get your hands away from the receiver, you know, because a flag is going to fly. Play cleaner football, and that's what they're talking about. And, and Rudder's doing the same thing. You know, they're working probably offensively trying to figure out strategies against Hornet defense, but they're both going to come out. It's going to be a different second half. Absolutely it is. Still about 12 minutes left to go here on a homecoming night in Huntsville, Texas. It is 7-3 Huntsville here in the Northside Baptist Church halftime report. We'll step aside and take a quick break. Joining us next, another one of our special guests here this evening, one of our great members of our part-time staff at KSAM as well as just a great great all-around great person that we love to have here on the staff, Kendall Morris. She will join us here in just a few moments as we continue the Northside Baptist Church Halftime Report on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. Halftime is a time of rest and refueling, a time to reflect and get ready for what is coming. Friends, Sundays are a great halftime for your life. The last week is behind you, and Sunday is a fresh start to a new week. It's to be a day of rest, a day to recharge. We believe there's no better place to do this than Northside Baptist Church. I invite you to come see us soon. I believe you'll be recharged and replenished as we worship God together. Come to the cross. We'll show you the Savior. I'm Reagan Cooksey, pastor of Northside Baptist Church. Are you listening? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here on the Northside Baptist Church Halftime Report. Carlos Zimmerman here alongside Brian Adams inside the Pinnacle Realty Advisors broadcast booth as we are at halftime here, 7-3 to three, Huntsville with the lead. And joining us now here from our part-time staff at KSAM and does an incredible job with everything she does, she moseyed on over here from Huntsville Lady Hornet Volleyball who completed a great sweep against Porter earlier tonight to get to 4-1 and one in district play. Our good friend and also did some sideline for us earlier this year in the season, Kendall Morris joins us now. Kendall, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I am fantastic. <laughs> it's great to be here, a homecoming night as the homecoming courts being introduced down on the field right now here at Huntsville High School. Man, what a night it has been here. An absolute spectacle. What was what was it like for you coming over there from Paul Bowen Gym and coming your way over here? I'm sure it was hectic with all the traffic and everything, but an exciting night nonetheless. It was definitely exciting. It's very it was very difficult to navigate over here. Thankfully Morgan was down there on the visitor side and kind of escorted me over here. Um, I was talking to Lisa earlier saying that there were issues getting in the stadium because there were so many people here tonight. And they're trying to direct them over to the visitor side because, I mean, as you can see, clearly the home side is completely full. St standing room only. Yeah, standing room only. And, you know, some people, you know, that's not... That's not fun, but, I mean, this halftime comes and you have the homecoming court come out, there'll definitely be even more people showing up. Absolutely. I mean, I'm looking at the visiting side right now as they continue to introduce the court down on the field. I mean, just it's it's basically three-quarters full. The home side is obviously completely full. Mm -hmm. It's the perfect night that everyone's been hoping for here, and they've been waiting for so long here for this community in Huntsville ISD. You know, you mentioned a lot of great people right there. Morgan Bryan does a lot of great jobs. She's the head softball coach here at Huntsville, and she does a great job getting just everyone into the gates and in a timely and, and, and clean manner, if you will. And then you mentioned Lisa Blackburn. She does a great job with the district as well. She does a lot of great stuff to help us get on the air here on these evenings, so we thank them very much for their hard, hard work. Kendall, you came over from Huntsville Lady Hornet Volleyball. Man, have they been on a roll as of late. They dropped their district opener to Lufkin, but then it's been all gas, no breaks since then. 
Yes, it was an amazing game. The very the very first set was just back to back, back to back, and it was just long rallies. You know, like especially in high school, there's there tends to be a lot of quick points, but it was just rally after rally, and then the second set came on and the Hornets were on fire and they were up twelve to like eight. Not 12, 22 to like eight at some point. I mean, it was just it was just a, ske a spectacle in there, and there was enough fans. And when I came out, they were all rushing over here with their moms ready to go. Absolutely, as, as I, I'm not sure a couple of them is in the homecoming court here tonight, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, when the court is officially announced, folks, and completely announced, we will announce the winner, of course coming up here in just a little bit. Kendall, you do a lot of great work, not just for us here at KSAM, but you do a lot with the Sam Houston Athletics Department as well. And I know you mentioned it before here on the air, but for someone who may be tuning in for the first time, just talk about what you do there with uh, Sam Houston. So I am a student assistant for the Strategic Communications Department, if you want to put it literally. Um, basically, I do everything from game notes, rosters, schedules, and then for game day, I run social media, live cut, and just option things like that. I help do basically sports information work. Absolutely. You work alongside a lot of great people over mm -hmm. there. Uh, you know, me and Brian are enabled by them, by you guys as well. Jason Barfield does a lot of great work over there. Cody Stark, uh, one of our SIDs as well over there. He does a great job over there as well. And just they do a lot of great work over there. I mean, Brian's a Sam grad. I'm a Sam grad. Jordan's a Sam grad. Luke about to be a Sam grad <laughs> here before long. You'll be a Sam grad here before long. Our entire crew is made up of people who have ties to Sam Houston one way or another. And, of course, we thank Sam Houston for all their years of hosting the Huntsville Hornets over there at Bauer Stadium. But, of course, it's also great to have something you can call your own as well. It is so great to be here. It is, as something, somebody coming from a very small town, this is just miraculous. Like, we played this four rounds deep. Like, we didn't get this big until that far. And it's just crazy to see the huge press box, the crowds, the turf. It's just, it's amazing for me as somebody from a very small town. Yeah, you come from Holland, which is uh, around the area of Belton and mm -hmm. uh, t towards the Austin area, when, uh, ironically enough, and coincidentally, you're also a Hornet, yes. a Hornet graduate <laughs> there. But, you know, by, by proxy, by proxy <laughs> here, and you're an honorary Huntsville Hornet mm -hmm. here as well. Kendall, I know you got here just a little bit while ago down there at the end of that second uh, quarter, but you look at the score over there, it is seven to three. It's obviously a nail biter. We knew it was going to be a bit chippy out there and a bit close. It's a rivalry game between these two teams in district play. I mean, your thoughts on the ball game so far and what the Hornets have to do to try and uh, march forward in the right direction? Well, you know, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the, the flags. They yeah. got they got to take care of that. They got to take care of business, but they are doing a great job and it is a big feeling on their shoulder you know they they are opening up the stadium this is going to be a game that is remembered forever and that's a lot of pressure and they're just going to have to remember that it's just high school football and they're going to have to get their heads back in there and be like we are the hornets that won 67 to 0 last week Absolutely, an absolute thrashing of Lamar Consolidated, but it's awfully close right now here. One more half to play. Rudder gets the ball to start the second half. It's going to be an exciting rest of this ball game. <laughs> Man, back-to-back -back nights, we're going to have incredible ball games. We were in Virginia uh, 24 hours ago now. We were, in we were in Virginia. It was a heartbreaking loss for Sam Houston, but uh, uh, we're glad to be here tonight mm -hmm. awake as well. I know it was uh, quite a long trip that we had over there, but we are very thankful to be here tonight to cover this incredible team. Nothing like getting to the getting to College Station and there only being two buses when there needs to be three and getting told we <laughs> have to stand there even longer to wait to get home. But we finally made it home at like 5 o'clock this See, morning. See, me, Brian, and Colin, <laughs> who is another one of the members of our crew, he's back home in Pearland watching tonight. I mean, we were smart. We drove ourselves over <laughs> to Easterwood Airport to be able to get home just a touch quicker. Yeah. I say that because, um, well, Colin didn't get on the bus <laughs> in time for our shuttle, so me and Brian had to wait in the parking lot a little bit but either way we had a great time there yes. in Lynchburg Virginia but it's it's uh, the, what what is the saying there's no place like home mm -hmm. and the weather there phenomenal and we're about to get the same here as I well I'm so ready for that I was born in Texas but I am not meant for Texas and that <laughs> is so true <laughs> Absolutely. As the homecoming court continuing to be introduced down there on the field. Kendall, before we let you go and we get ready to wrap up here in just a few moments, uh, anybody want to give a shout-out to? I want to give a shout-out to my little sister, you know, being that varsity cheerleader of her back in Holland and my parents and my grandparents. Absolutely. Kendall, thanks for hopping on with us here tonight. We appreciate everything you do. Thank you. We'll step aside and take a break. More to come here on the Northside Baptist Church Halftime Report. We will announce who is the homecoming king and queen, and we'll get Brian's thoughts 
on the second half that is to still come here tonight at Huntsville ISD Stadium. We'll be back shortly on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. Hi, I'm Reagan Cooksey, and I have a thought I want to share with you. Are you listening? It finally rained at my house a little over an inch. My yard really needed it. The next morning, I walked around and was amazed to see the difference that that little bit of rain made. I could see green where it hadn't been in weeks. The change was almost immediate. Then I thought how dead and dull my life was before I came to Jesus. I must have looked pretty bad to God, all brown and dead from sin. Then I invited Jesus into my life, and the change was amazing. Where sin had lurked and robbed me of life, Jesus changed all that. How's your life? Could you stand a little Jesus in it? He's ready to change you from death to life, if you are. I'm Reagan Cooksey, pastor of Northside Baptist Church. Are you listening? Northside Baptist Church is a vibrant, growing body of believers located at 1207 FM 980 in Huntsville, Texas. So check us out on the web at NBCHuntsville.com. Northside Baptist Church, going people in Christ to reach people for Christ. 7-3 Huntsville in the Northside Baptist Church Halftime Report. Homecoming court still being introduced down on the field below us. Back here inside the Pinnacle Realty Advisors broadcast booth. I'm Carlos Zimmerman. Alongside of me is Brian Adams. Want to thank, of course, Kendall Morris for joining us just a few moments ago. Does a lot of great work for us here at KSAM as well as at Sam Houston. Brian, looking back on that first half, a lot of big trouble there for the Hornets on sloppy play. Now we transition to the second half. Rudder gets the ball first. What do the Hornets have to do to come away with a win, to send this debut off with a win? I think the defense needs to come out and make a statement right off the bat and get the ball back into the Hornet offense's hands. And I think the O-line for the Hornets, they need to step it up a little bit more. As, as Coach Southern said going in, they need to hold their blocks a little bit longer, open up some more running lanes. Austin Taylor having a great first half. Keep the pressure off him a little bit. His numbers will explode. Trayshawn Brown having a great night. Absolutely. That's your keys to the second half here for the Hornets. Uh, for those of you tuning in on the video stream, we'll give you a little treat here right now. It is indeed homecoming night, as it looks like two of the Hornet players in Cole Schroeder and Joseph Mejia are up for homecoming king. But we want to highlight an incredible team from many, many years ago. It was in 1953 that the Huntsville Hornets were the undefeated state champions in 2A. They were 15-0, led by the legendary head coach Mance Park, his namesake now at the middle school. They outscored opponents 595 to 135. That is just absolutely insane that year. They won the state championship 40 to 6 over Ballinger. Some notable players on that squad. Uh, future head coach for the Hornets at that time, Joe Clements, was the quarterback. He was an All-State first team member and in the Texas High School Football Hall of Fame. He went on to go play at Texas as a Longhorn. Offensive lineman Ken Coleman, he was an All-State first team. And running back Bobby Grisham was an All-State second team player. He went on to play at Sam Houston, as I believe down on the field, our homecoming king has been announced, and I believe that is Emmanuel Mendoza that is down there on the field. That is the homecoming king, so congratulations to him down there here tonight, and then the homecoming queen is about to be introduced. Let's pop that up real quick here, and let's announce that live over the air. Well, there you have it, your homecoming king and queen down there on the field. All the fans in attendance excited about that. Wow, what a night it has continued to be here at Huntsville ISD Stadium. The homecoming festivities continuing. They had the homecoming parade last night. Brian, I was sad we couldn't make that one last night. We obviously had uh, responsibilities with Sam Houston that kept us from that. We were five states away. That's why we couldn't be there. But we thank our friends at KSAM and our sister station, The Lake, for filling in for us later that night. Before we wrap up the Northside Baptist Church Halftime Report, we have one more special thing here on this homecoming night. We got a picture of our own Brian Adams over here on the video stream when he was a former Hornet quarterback. That picture when you were a Bearcat quarterback. Man, you don't look a day older than that man right there. Man, who, who's that guy with the brown hair in there <laughs> on that video screen? I don't recognize that guy. <laughs> but Brian, I you, appreciate you guys. I love you, man. I love this crew. It's a lot of fun. Absolutely it is, Brian. We have a lot of fun, and we enjoy every little bit of it up here with you. Couldn't do this without you, my friend. That'll wrap up the Northside Baptist Church Halftime Report. The Hornets and Rangers ready to return to the field as we get ready for the second half of play. That wraps up the Northside Baptist Church Halftime Report. The Hornets leading 7-3. to three. Rudder has the ball when we come back on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. 
This has been the Northside Baptist Church Hornets Halftime Report. Stay tuned for more Huntsville High School football on KSAM. This is the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network, powered by KSAM Sports. Switching is easy. We do it all the time. We switch on the lights. We switch TV channels. You can switch and save with State Farm. In fact, State Farm agent Diana K. Barnes, right here in Huntsville, can switch you over so you can start saving today. Diana and her team are ready to welcome you to the State Farm neighborhood. Just give her a call when you want the real deal. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Hi there, I'm just a homeowner enjoying my new screen patio built by Sandal Renovation and Patio. Clint Sandal handled all the details, including 3D design and HOA submissions, securing approval in just three days. Sandal Renovation and Patio completed our project on budget and weeks ahead of schedule. Whether it's a new patio, kitchen, bathroom update, or your next home, start your home improvement project with a free estimate from the right builder. See our patio and examples at sandalrenovations.com. Did you know a doctor's prescription is not needed to begin physical therapy? This allows you... My check. Welcome back to Huntsville ISD Stadium on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. 7-3 to three as we come out of the halftime break. Homecoming festivities wrapping up down there on the field as your homecoming king and queen once again, Emmanuel Taco Mendoza is the homecoming king and the homecoming queen, Lysandria Kraft. So congratulations to both of them, named the homecoming king and queen. As now, back to business here on the field, 7-3 to three, Huntsville. They will boot it to Brian Rudder to start this second half of play as Rudder had the ball, or has the ball here to start the second half. They deferred at the beginning of the ball game in the coin toss. So the Hornet defense will be called upon first to try and keep the Rangers at bay. The adjustments have been made, and we've got 24 minutes of exciting Texas high school football on the Hornet Nation broadcast network. Let's see what this Hornet defense is made of, and we'll see what the Ranger offense brings here with their quarterback in Cody Billings. Joseph Mejia on for the Diana K. Barnes State Farm Insurance kickoff. He'll go right to the leather from the 40. It is a squib kick right to the front line of the defense. In Brandon Brown, he landed right on top of that ball. Massive great field position for Brian Rudder at the 48. Well, you don't see that very often, do you? Drilled kickoff right to the guys on the 10 yards away, and he scoops it up. Man. I, I like that call because those guys aren't expecting the football. <laughs> right. So what if it bounces off of him and the Hornets land on it? That's Once cute. it's touched, it's a live ball. But unfortunately for the Hornets, Rudder will take over here at their own 48-yard line, needing 52 yards to try and take the lead. Billings gets the snap on first down. He'll hand it off to his back in Hendrick. Double nickel, 5-5. Kadarian easily able to stop him before he gets any further. It's a gain of one to bring up second down and nine for the Rangers. Straight handoff up the middle there by Brian Rudder and Kadarian Easley, man, number 55, just bear hugs him, just uh, only able to pick up one yard on that carry. As we welcome you into the ATK towing third quarter, Carlos Zimmerman and Brian Adams live from the Pinnacle Realty Advisors broadcast booth. Third quarter underway, seven to three Huntsville, second down and nine from the 49. Billings will change the line here at the line of scrimmage, the play, and it'll be trips receivers here to the near sideline, one out to the far as he gets the snap. He'll hand it off again to Hendrick, running this one to the left side. He is upended by a pair of Hornets, Jeremiah Winfrey, as well as Tyler Smith in on the stop. That'll bring up third down and about four for the Rangers. A really big third down here for the Hornet defense. I need to stop him right here, get that offense back out on the field. You certainly don't want to give Rudder any momentum whatsoever. Rudder going half tempo here. On third down and four to go. Line to gain is the Hornet 42. Billings working out of the shotgun with four receivers. Two to each sideline. He gets the snap. He'll drop back with three steps. Throws, and it's picked off! Did Juwan get in? Hang on to it! Yes, he did! What a play. Juwan Giddens, we talked about it. Defense come out and make a statement. They just did. Juwan Giddens gets the pick. Hornet football. Makes up for the penalty he had earlier on in the ball game. What an interception there. I don't know if Cody Billings realized if it, I think him and his receiver had a miscommunication because that only one in the area was Jawan Giddens, the 
Mike Linebacker for the Hornets. That's a big turnover. It keeps it 7-3 here with 10.47 left to go in this ATK towing third quarter. And the Hornets have the ball at their own 39-yard line on offense. Austin Taylor in his offense takes over. He out of the shotgun, claps on first down. He'll hand it off to Brown, runs through the A-gap across the 40-yard line to the 45. Good run there by Treshawn Brown to the near sideline, up to the 47-yard line, a gain of eight for second and two. JT Kroll. Number 28 of the offense. Oh, and there's a hold. Penalty. Repeat first down. Singletary. Singletary burned for a hold, and JT Kroll, the blindside blocker for the Hornets, clutching at that left knee, and he is slow to get up. Getting looked at there on the sideline by training staff Brian Parker and Sean Matthews talking over here with JT on the sideline. Man, you hate to see that. JT Kroll, heart and soul of that big old line. Senior season. Man. That too. And you hate to see things like that. You know, JT, well, I mean, what a kid too, you know. and Such a nice kid. You know, he comes to the coaches show every week just to be there, just to be a part of it. He was a guest a couple of weeks ago. Just a great all-around kid. Just a great young man down there, and we, our heart goes out to him. Hopefully he is okay. He's obviously awake and alert, talking with Brian Parker down there on the sideline, again, clutching at that left knee, and that, obviously you don't like to see that. But we do have a stoppage of play here. We'll bring it back up inside the Pinnacle Realty Advisors broadcast booth with 10.33 left to go in the ATK towing. Third quarter, 7-3, to three, Huntsville with the lead. Brian? Obviously, the big turnover there by Jawan Giddens able to sway the momentum because they got JT a bit more upright here, and he will hop up here with some assistance from the training staff. The good thing is he's kind of getting off on his own power a little bit. I mean, he has got a pretty good limp, but I'm glad to see he's walking off on his own. So we'll see how that affects the rest of this ball game. Hopefully, JT is okay and is able to get back in there. Like you said, Brian, the heart and soul of that offensive line for the Hornets, so someone will have to come off the bench here and do some good blindside blocking. Again, there was a hold on Jerry Singletary, so that run by Treshawn Brown is negated. Now we'll bring up a first down and 20 for the Hornets back up to their own 29-yard line. Taylor will line up in the shotgun, three receiver spread out to the far sideline. Four-man rush coming for the Rangers. Taylor with one back, he gets the snap, he'll roll to his right, looking to throw down the field with some time, he'll throw into the flat, Peyton Pryor has it on the far sideline, 40, 45, 50, cuts it back and he has enough for a moke and moke, attorneys at law, first down right at the line to gain at the 49, again to 20. What a great play, what a great run after the catch, Peyton Pryor. Hold on, we got laundry on the field. Again. Far sideline at the 35. Oh my goodness. Pass interference, offense number five. 15-yard penalty, still first down. Goodness gracious. I, I, you know, I, I hate to go out and say this, but I, I've never seen more penalties in the first half of any football game at any level. Saw a lot of that in that first half, and now the Hornets are backing even further up. So a first down is negated. Pass interference called against Treshawn Brown on the offensive side. So that backs the Hornets up to the 20 where the spot it was a spot foul. So the ball's marked at the 20. The line against the 49. This is first down and 29 for the Huntsville Hornets. Granted, folks, they maintain the lead 7-3 in this ATK towing third quarter, but the penalty's not doing them any favors. The first down and a country mile to go here for the Hornets. Taylor will line up in the shotgun with three receivers. He'll get the snap here, and a quick throw here to the far sideline that is caught by Savion Conte. Forward momentum taking him to the 25-yard line. It is a gain of five on the play. Another flag has come in after the play, and the rudder sideline is clapping, so that usually doesn't bode well if you are the Hornets. You know, it's a shame that uh, <clears throat> there's been so many flags in this ball game. You know, the opening of this beautiful stadium and these two really good ball clubs going at it, and it's the referees are making it about themselves. You know, my friend, you're absolutely right. We'll see what the call is here from our head referee. Dead ball foul. Unsportsmanlike conduct number five of the offense. That'll be half the distance to the goal. Repeat second. I'm sorry, that's dead ball foul. It'll be third down. So it's a loss of down on the play. 
And now I'm confused because that was a first down right there on the penalty of pass so down interference. To down. Thank you. That's correct. We'll back them up even further. Inside the 20, well to the 13-yard line on sportsmanlike conduct called against Treshawn Brown. So the ball is marked at the 13-yard line. This is second down. I can't believe I'm saying this. 36. Yeah. Second down and 36. Taylor lines up in the shotgun. Three receivers down here to the near sideline. One back with him is now Braylon Phelps. They'll hand it off to Phelps. He'll run into a pile here just trying to get some forward yardage here away from their own end zone. He'll move it up to the 17-yard line. That's a gain of about four, and that'll bring up third down and 32 for the Hornets. Golly, 32, man. It just doesn't sound right. Brian Parker, Jr., he is over on the right side, taking over for J.T. Kroll. Yeah, they've moved Trey Williams to left tackle. Brian Parker, Jr. is now at right tackle, and Kyle Smith is now at center. So they've had to make some adjustments here with Kroll on the sideline. Third down and 31 officially for the Hornets. Nine and a half to play in the third quarter. They lead seven to three. Taylor gets the snap, throws to Peyton Pryor here on the near sideline, trying to get some forward momentum. Still on his feet at the 25, out of bounds around the 30-yard line. A good effort by Peyton Pryor, out of bounds at the 27. That is a modest gain of 10, but obviously the Hornets are going to have to punt this one away. Penalty upon penalty upon penalty. Backs up the Hornets, and the drive is stalled right there. <clears throat> Joseph Mejia will stand at his own 14-yard line and back deep to receive Brendan Cooks for the Rudder Rangers. Shallow Jones, the deep snapper here for the Hornets. Mejia's got to put a leg into this one. Mejia boots this one, a good spiraling punt into the hands here of Cooks, and he is leveled at about the 40-yard line there. Good coverage there by the special teams unit of the Hornets. Jeremiah Winfrey in on the stop. But another good field position here for Brian Rudder, down 7-3 to three with 9-12 remaining in the ATK towing third quarter. Some of the things that you talk about with <clears throat> keeping that defense out on the field as much as, you, much as the Hornet defense has been out there tonight, what happens? They wear down. Somehow, the offense, they've got to quit making these penalties, and they need a long, sustained drive to give that defense a little bit more rest because as this game progresses, they're going to get worn down. First down and 10 for Rudder at their own 42-yard line. Cody Billings in again at quarterback. He'll line up in the shotgun, two receivers. He'll send one in motion. That's Brandon Cooks. Good misdirection here. They'll hand it off to Jaquise Martin. Great read there by Cole Schroeder coming from his safety position. Read that play like a book. It's a loss of three, second down. Cole Schroeder, what a play. As you said, read it perfectly. Comes in from his safety position, makes a great open field tackle, drops it for a two-yard loss on the carry. 8.50 remaining in this third quarter of play. Second down and 13 officially for Brian Rudder. Billings alone in the backfield here. They spread him out five wide. Trips to the left, two down to the right. Four-man rush on the way for the Hornets. Billings gets the snap, drops back with four steps, pumps once, throws over the middle, incomplete. Looking to go to his running back in Bruce Hendrick. And I'll bring up third down and long for the Rangers. Boy, Billings had Hendrick wide open underneath and just misfired. That's a big break there for the Hornets. More folks tuning in on the Hornet Nation broadcast network. One of our longtime listeners, Isil Tamales, tuning in. Sally Dowis tuning in. Colin Neal tuning in from Pearland as well. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Keep those comments flowing in. We would love to hear from you. Wake up, Colin. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> Hey, he was asleep next to me on the plane <laughs> on, the, on the way back. I, I, you know, I, I feel bad for him because <laughs> I am an awful snorer, and he had to leave the hotel room the other <laughs> oh, night man. because, because and my producer here, Jordan Smith, agrees with me. Um, he, he, he had to leave the hotel room last night or the other night because, because the snoring was so bad. <laughs> I feel for him, but, man, I love you, Colin. You, uh, you, you do great work yeah, uh, for, for us at KSAM as well at Sam Houston. We thank you very much. We had a stoppage of play here. I'm not sure what for, but now we'll reset. They wanted to make sure the ball was placed right, I'm assuming. Third down and 12 for Brian Rudder. From their own 39-yard line, moving left to right across your radio dial. Four receiver set, one back with uh, Billings, and he gets the snap. Five-man rush for the Hornets. They'll throw it up over the top, and it is incomplete. Trying to get to one of those receivers there, Ryan Campbell. Isaiah Collins scouting it well in that deep secondary. Fourth down for Rudder, and they're held three and out. 
Nice job by the defense for the Hornets. Now the Hornets uh, offense gets a chance to get back out on the field, and they really need it. has been a lot of minutes since they've had any kind of sustained drive at all. They need one here. Rundle get ready to punt this one away. It'll be Jaquees Martin to boot this one. Cole Schroeder, he's back deep to receive it here for the Hornets. And you know he's itching for a big return here. He's had a couple of touchdowns called back on punt returns this year, back in non-district. Martin gets the snap away. Big high, high hang time here. Schroeder is just going to let this one take a bounce, oh, oh, and man, man, what a bounce it took inside the 20, and it will die inside the 15 to the 14-yard line, and that is where the Hornets will have to take over. Can the offense sustain a big drive here with 8.04 remaining in the ATK towing third quarter of play? Brian, if you're looking at Austin Taylor right now, you've had a couple of drives there right at the end of the first half that ended in the missed field goal, and then the penalties hurt you on this next drive. What do you got to do to lead this team? Well, you just got to do what he's been doing. I mean, he's done a really good job, and when he has a wide-open receiver, I mean, he hits him in the numbers every time. Even, you know, I think he's having a little difficulty maybe rolling out to his left. Again, that's difficult for any quarterback that's right-handed. First and 10 from the 14. Hornets moving right to left as Taylor gets the snap with some good blocking behind him. He'll rifle this one down the field, looking to go to Hunter Lorenz at the 50-yard line, but it falls incomplete. A little bit underthrown there as it was near his feet, but it hit Lorenz's hands, and you know the old saying goes, if it hits you in the hands of your receiver, you got to haul it in. you got to catch it. If you're going to play receiver and it hits you in the hands, you got to bring him in. Nice throw, really, and truly by Taylor. And Lorenz, too, he got behind the double coverage that was against him, so a great effort there by Hunter, but just fell right out of his hands. But I like that call. Go deep on the first play. Try to get that big punch back against Brian Rudder, but the Hornets go incomplete, second and 10 from their own 14. Taylor lines up in the shotgun, two receiver set. He gets the snap. He'll hand it off on a delay. Braylon Phelps trying to stay free, get some forward momentum across the 15 to the 17-yard line. So a good run after contact, but it does bring up another third down for the Hornets. You know, Luke Scott brought up a good point a little bit ago. Brian Parker Jr. is now playing right tackle for uh, J.T. Kroll. And Brian Parker Jr. is a right-hander. Your current center is a left-hander. And there are sometimes, man, that can kind of play tricks on you a little bit as a quarterback because that ball comes back at you at a different angle. Braylon Phelps has come off the field right now. He came off just a little bit gimpy, and Brian Parker's taking a look at him here on the sideline. Now Treshawn Brown is checked back into the ball game here as the running back for the Hornets on this third down and seven from their own 17. Taylor out of the gun with three receivers, gets the snap, drops back, four steps, looking to throw, finds Conte, but I think that ball may have had some contact there at the line of scrimmage as Conte could not haul that one in. The Hornets, this time, they are held three and out. Great job by the rudder defense. I mean, they pushed the Hornets back, and they're going to get the ball even in better field position than they did previously. And, man, the Hornets are flirting with disaster, giving short fields to Brian Rudder. Mejia back deep to punt this one away. Again, Brandon Cooks is the one standing at his own 46-yard line to receive this punt from Mejia. 7.08 remaining in the third quarter, 7-3 Huntsville. Wow, what a high snap there. Mejia had to back up to his own five. Still got off a really decent punt. This has a chance here to help the Hornets out. It'll roll all the way down here to the 40-yard line before it is down by Brent Carroll at the 40. They'll officially mark it at the 41, and that will bring up first and 10 for the Rudder Rangers. Not for a moment, it may have touched a Rudder player, but... Indeed it not, but either way, Rudder takes over. Yeah, it looked like some of the Hornet coaches down there were saying that uh, the ball was touched. But nonetheless, the Hornet defense is back out there once again. You know, the telltale sign when a defense is tired, you see the hands on the hips. And the only one I saw them, you see McCork, Norman, and Shiloh Jones. But they, those guys, they're running all the time, so I understand as a former linebacker myself. First and 10 for Rudder at the 41. In their own territory, moving left to right across your radio dial. Cooks goes in motion. They'll hand this one off. This is Hendrick running this to the right side near sideline. Oh, man. Swallowed up at the 42-yard line. That making that stop that time, Hezekiah Johnson. What a big hit by Brent Carroll, the sophomore cornerback. Just put his shoulder right in the stomach of the Brian Rudder offensive player and dropped him right there. Forward progress officially takes him to the 43-yard line on that gain of two, second and eight with six and a half minutes left to go in this ATK towing third quarter to play. 
Empty backfield here for Cody Billings. Five wide as he gets the snap. Here comes the blitz of the Hornets. Quickly fires over the middle. Good defense by Shiloh Jones over the middle. Intended receiver was Jaquise Martin. Jones blocked it away. Third down and eight coming up for the Rangers. Great play by Shiloh Jones, the Mike linebacker. Man, he puts the right hand out and knocks the ball down. He didn't go across the offensive player's body. Man, what a clean, good play. You know, one thing I'll give Rudder credit, Cody Billings here, he is still very calm, composed in, in, when he's in the pocket. He feels that pressure as Jawan Giddens was bringing blitz on that play, but he still got out a good ball. Just great defense there by Shallow Jones. Sets up third down and eight from the Rudder 43-yard line. Four wide receivers, two to each sideline. One back here with Billings. Four-man rush on the way for the Hornets. Billings gets the snap. He'll roll to his left, feeling that pressure. He'll throw across his body, and wow, it is incomplete. Once again, trying to go to Martin. Good defense by Cole Schroeder on the back end of that play. Fourth down, and here we go. The punting party continues here at Huntsville ISD Stadium as Rudder is held three and out again. Boy, it sure does. I mean, uh, both defenses are doing a great job, and uh, one of these offenses, and I believe it's the Hornets' turn, they need a big break, uh, breakout uh, drive here, get the momentum going back in their, their favor. Martin on the punt once again. Cole Schroeder back deep to receive. He stands at his own 22-yard line. Martin stands at his own 29. Hornets will look to bring some pressure here on this punt, but got to be careful. Don't run into him. Snap is away. Martin corrals it. Boots this one with the right leg. Schroeder will have an opportunity to return here from the 29-yard line. Slips one would-be tackler across the 35 and down to the 37-yard line. So a decent return there by Cole Schroeder. That'll set up the Hornet offense. Again, I want to remind you folks, you can enjoy tonight's broadcast on the KSAM mobile app, available on all iOS and Android devices, in the car, at home, or even right here at the ballgame at Huntsville ISD Stadium. It doesn't matter. Take your hometown radio station and the Huntsville Hornets on the go wherever you go. Coach Schroeder is so much fun to watch. You know, he's the punt returner for the Hornets, and he is fearless, and he's the son of the offensive coordinator, Scott Schroeder. And, man, he has got some speed. He's had some – he's had two two or three big returns this year that were called back by penalty. Man, he's talented. After this play, we'll go to our third member of our crew, Luke Scott. Here is – New quarterback for the Hornets as Marcus Lewis is now in at quarterback. He hands it off to Treshawn Brown on first down, trying to slide his way to the 44-yard line. That's a good gain there for Treshawn Brown. We'll go to the third member of our crew, Luke Scott, down on the sidelines. Back and forth with the punts, Luke, but Hornets still maintaining this lead. Yeah, it's been really good defense there coming out of the break. Now we got a different quarterback. Lewis back in, just offering a different look here, trying to get the run game a little bit more involved. Just kind of stalled there out of the half. Second down and four after the six-yard pickup by Brown. Marcus Lewis lines up in the shotgun. A couple tight ends will go in motion. Brian Red now lines up on the right side of the offensive line as Lewis gets the snap. He'll hand it off again to Brown, trying to cut his way forward. Forward progress takes him to the 44. It's only a modest gain of one to bring up third down and three for Huntsville. Inside handoff, Treshawn Brown uh, meets uh, contact right away. He's able to pick up that one yard you're talking about, but, uh, man, it's third down. They need to convert right here. Like Luke said, different look here for the Hornets going with Marcus Lewis. Austin Taylor watching from the sideline. And sometimes that's good for a quarterback as well, being able to watch it from the sideline. We've seen it at Sam Houston and Huntsville now getting to get that as well. Third down and three. Line to gain is the 47 in Huntsville territory. Marcus Lewis in the shotgun with two receivers. Lewis looking around. Claps gets the snap. Bobbled it for a moment. Now he'll try and corral it, but he is going to be sacked back at the 39-yard line, so that bobbled snap did not help him whatsoever. They blow the play dead as Brown was able to come away with the football, and now Huntsville is once again held at three and out. Three and out, three and out, yep. Both defenses are doing really well tonight. Offenses are struggling here so far in the second half. 4.22 left to go in this ATK towing third quarter. 7-3 Huntsville on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. Carlos Zimmerman and Brian Adams live from the Pinnacle Realty Advisors broadcast booth. Back and forth we go with the punts. Joseph Mejia will have a little bit more room to get this one away. Stands at his own 25. Jaquies Martin back deep, or excuse me, Brandon Cooks back at his own 35. Mejia corrals the snap from Jones. Boots this one, spiraling vertically through the air, and it will roll out of bounds at around the 35-yard line, and that is where Brian will take over with 3.56 left to go in the third. Brian, while we have a pause in the action, let's thank some of our wonderful sponsors. Absolutely. We want to thank Advantage Specialties. Advantage Specialties is your one-stop shop for business promotional needs in Huntsville and Murray Insurance and Financial Services, an agency you can trust in University Heights Baptist Church, cultivating people who make Jesus known through the lives we live and the conversations we have. 
Looking at around the district right now, Brenham leading 40 to seven over Montgomery. And then on the other side in the adjacent district in District 9, how about Texas City beating Fort Bend Marshall right now, 15 to seven, 207 remaining in that ball game down in Houston. Wow, what that an upset would that be as we're back to play here. First and 10 for Brian Rudder with a lot of room in front of him to the 45 yard line. Big hit there by McCorick Norman, the runner there, and A.J. Morrison gets a first down up to the 47-yard line. Rudder starting to feel it. Yeah, they are. That was an inside handoff run up the middle, and that's been, now again, Achilles' heel for the Hornets this season is that run up the middle, and again, Rudder converted right there. So first down and 10 from the 47, trying to move with some more urgency here. Billings out of the shotgun with two receivers, gets the snap, hands it off to his back again. Morrison bounces it to the outside, and he is swallowed up past the 50, to the 47-yard line, a good run there by A.J. Morrison. Makes it second down and four for the Rangers. Again, the Hornet defense, they've been out there way more than that offense has had in this third quarter of play. 3.17 left to go in the ATK towing third quarter. 7-3 Huntsville, second down and four for the Rangers as Morrison will take the handoff once again. Zach Moss trying to get to him. Looked like Shallow Jones also got in on the stop of Morrison. Stopped him short of the line to gain. It's third down and two at the 45. It's a big third down opportunity for Brian Rudder. I mean, they need to convert right here if they're going to try to uh, get into uh, at least field goal range. But, man, you're right. we got to get that Hornet defense off the field, get them some rest, get that offense to have a sustained drive. Only big moment in this third quarter, the pick by Jawan Giddens at the top of the third quarter, but nothing has really come of it since. Two back set here for the Rangers as Billings gets the snap. He'll keep it himself on a design run, trying to stretch forward, but the Hornets snuff him out. Tyler Smith was the one that got to him last. It's fourth down for Rudder in no man's land, and they're going to have to punt this one away. What a great job by the Hornet defense. They Rudder only needed two yards to pick up the first, and, man, I think they lost a yard on that carry. Great play by the Hornets. So here comes the punting unit on now for... Brian Rudder, Cole Schroeder will drop back to receive this punt from Jaquise Martin. And it's back and forth we go, back and forth we go. Two minutes remaining in this third quarter, 7-3 Huntsville. No defense giving an edge right now. Play clock down to seven here on this snap. Jaquise Martin awaiting it right now. He gets it. He'll run up on it, get a good running start into it. Cole Schroeder will have to range to his right to try and get after this ball. Instead, he'll just let it take a bounce. Schroeder will luckily land on top of it, though, as in for a moment, Brent Carroll may have touched it, but either way, Hornets with another long field of work inside their own 10. They mark it up to 7. And so here comes Marcus Lewis out for another drive. Austin Taylor remaining on the sideline here as the offense just trying to get some different looks to the rudder defense with a minute 40 remaining in the third. The last three possessions by the Hornets have been deep in their own end starting, but the last three for Brian Rudder has been a short field. Man, we've got to change that up right now. Probably the furthest back they've had to start in this third quarter. They're at their own seven, needing 93 yards to get and extend this lead. Lewis on first down gets the snap. He'll hand it off here to Braylon Phelps. No, he kept it himself on the option. Getting forward across the 10 to the 13-yard line. It's a good gain of six by the sophomore quarterback. And it'll bring up second down and four for the Hornets. Nice little run. It gives them some breathing room, you know, because they were backed up way back on their end. And uh, that little run is going to give them a little bit of room. Still a great crowd on hand here tonight at Huntsville ISD Stadium. The student section, the Hornets' nest, alive and well. For this debut game at Huntsville ISD Stadium, their Hornets are leading 7-2-3. It has been a stalemate in this third quarter. And that will bring up second down and officially five here for the Hornets. Lewis lines up in the shotgun with two receivers spread to the near sideline. Lewis claps, gets the snap, looking to his left side to throw, steps up in the pocket trying to create something out of nothing, and he does, getting that Mocha Mocha turnies at law first down to the 18. Nice job, Marcus Lewis. He's looking downfield, trying to find somebody open. Nobody's there. He feels the pressure, takes it himself up the middle, picks up the first. Man, heady, heady play there by the young man. 47 seconds remaining in this ATK towing third quarter. Ball now up to the 18-yard line. First down for the Hornets. See Peyton Pryor, he'll line up in the slot. Now he'll motion over to the far sideline along with Savion Conte. Obvious run formation here. Treshawn Brown not out there on the field right now. Braylon Phelps is the running back with Marcus Lewis. Clock will move inside 30 seconds as we near the end of the third. 7-3 Huntsville. 
Lewis on first down out of the gun. Gets the snap, hands it off to Braylon Phelps. No, he kept it himself once again. Running that one forward on the option. Past the 20 to the 22-yard line, and that'll move that line judge marker to that 22-yard line, and that should take us to the end of this ATK towing third quarter of play. We remain in a deadlock, 7-3 Huntsville on homecoming night to open the brand-new Huntsville ISD Stadium. We've had just about everything, and don't think that's going to stop as we roll into this fourth and final quarter of play. We'll be back in 60 seconds on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. Looking for something sporty and great on gas? Then head to Bill Fick Ford in Huntsville. Turn heads and fill up less often with a sporty new fuel-efficient Ford crossover like the ever-popular Ford Bronco. Orders for 2024 Broncos are now open. Or check out the built-tough Ford F-Series trucks, including the all-new Ford f 150 Bill Fick Ford, where customer satisfaction comes first. And there's no bull, just good deals. Hurry in today or shop online at Bill Fick Ford Huntsville. ATK Towing in Huntsville, located at 640 Avenue M, is like other towing companies, offering towing, lockouts, jump starts, road service, and recovery. But ATK Towing takes it to another level with their service that will get you home safe with your ride if you've celebrated a little too much. It's called Tipsy Tow. It's all about safety, your safety, and the safety of others. And if you need this service, you'll be glad ATK Towing got you home safely. Call them at 832-970-8040. Welcome back to Huntsville ISD Stadium in Huntsville, Texas. One more quarter to go on homecoming night. Carlos Zimmerman and Brian Adams live from the Pinnacle Realty Advisors broadcast booth. Second down coming up here for the Hornets as we start this fourth and final quarter of play. Six yards to go to get the line to gain. That is the 28. Lewis gets the snap out of the shotgun, hands it off this time to Braylon Phelps, cutting this one upfield across the 25. Flag flies in from the far side. Phelps is all the way past the first down to the 33, but we have to check yet another flag brought to you by a and Propane. Nice run there by Phelps. Good blocking by the interior line. They open up a nice little hole for him to take, and he picks up the first pending this flag. We've had a lot of them tonight, and we'll see as we get the call. Block and blow the waste. Number 35 of the offense, 15-yard penalty, repeat second down. Well, there's no 35 out there on offense. That's, I believe, going to be going to try and find it here either way. That's 45, Brian Red. That was the one that got called for the block below the waist. Another penalty that hurts the Huntsville Hornets. That backs them up to their own 15-yard line and negates, well, another first down. Well, you know what? Every penalty has been 15 yards. Can we get a five-yarder, you know, kind of change it up a little bit? Be nice. Speaking of changing things up, here comes Austin Taylor. He is back into the quarterback position here as Marcus Lewis heads to the sideline. It is second down at the 15 and 13 to go for the Huntsville Hornets. So the junior signal caller back in there with one back with him and three receivers. Four-man rush here showing blitz is the Rangers as Taylor gets the snap, feels the pressure, throws up over the top, tried to get it to Braylon Phelps, but he ran into Brian Parker Jr. so he couldn't get free on the screen, and that's incomplete, third down and long. Well, what you have is you have Brian Parker, who's typically your center. Now he's playing right tackle, and he doesn't practice that position very much, if any at all, really. And that screenplay was set up. Man, you got to get your blockers in front, man. They just weren't in sync because they he doesn't practice that play very much. And I don't see JT Kroll on the sideline, so that leads me to believe he is in the locker room for the Hornets, and I don't rightfully know if we will see him for the rest of the night. So that's a big blow to that offensive line for the Hornets, and we hope JT is okay as he went down earlier in the third quarter. Empty backfield here on third down and 13 for the Hornets. Trips receivers to the far sideline. Singletary in motion to the right side of the O-line as Taylor claps, gets the snap on third down. Pump fakes once to try and draw the offense across the 20. He's running this one to the 25, rolling over one man. He loses his helmet there at the end as Austin Taylor. He almost got the first down to the 27. It's fourth and one for the Hornets, and... Obviously, in this situation, you feel like they would punt this one away. But I don't see Joseph Mejia making any motion out there to go. So on fourth down and one, and Huntsville is going to go for it here deep in their own territory. This is a gutsy call here. I don't know if Rudder was ready for it. Lewis got him to jump. Free play here now, but they blow this one dead. That should go against Rudder as they made contact with the offensive line. And judging by... Offsides, number 21 of the defense, 
Five yard penalty, that makes it a first down. Jamarian West gets burned with the offsides penalty encroachment, however you want to call it. Either way, it's good for a Mocha Mocha. Attorneys at law, first down for Huntsville. Great play call there by head coach Rodney Southern. Got updates from around the district. Brenham leading Montgomery 40 to 14. And then an update from the adjacent district, a shocker. Texas City, the Stingerees have upset Fort Bend Marshall on the road. That is the second loss for Fort Bend Marshall, the number two 5A team in the state. They get upset at home tonight, 15 to seven against Texas City. Still seven to three here in Huntsville. 10.54 remaining as Austin Taylor gets the snap on first down, hands it off to Braylon Phelps. Stiff arms one man at the 35, trying to cut it back upfield at the 40. Great run there by Braylon Phelps. Tackled out of bounds by number 21, Jamarian West. That is a good run of eight. Second down and two coming up at the 40. Great blocking by Brian Parker Jr. on the right side. Braylon Phelps is letting that play develop, and he's staying right behind Parker, and he opened it up, man. That was a good run following his blocker. Second down and two now for the Hornets in this fourth quarter of play. After this next play, we'll go to our third member of our crew, Luke Scott, down on the sidelines as we are getting closer and closer to the end of this ballgame. Huntsville has led pretty much the entire way, literally the entire way, 7-3. Is your score. Austin Taylor lines up under center. One back with him and three receivers. Now he'll change things up here at the offensive line. Now he comes set, gets the snap. He bobbled it, so he's forced to just land on it. Not a great snap there. Again, it's a different center over there now in Kyle Smith instead of Brian Parker Jr. That'll bring up third down for Huntsville. Luke, I mean, just what's the feeling on the sideline right now? The lead is still intact. Well, again, you have Austin Taylor, who is under center with a new center, and they don't snap the ball to each other very much. And again, that was probably part of that problem. We'll go back to Luke here in just a little bit. Third down and two coming up here for the Hornets at their own 40-yard line. Taylor claps out of the shotgun, gets the snap. Quick handoff here, Treshawn Brown trying to cut it upfield, but wow, what a great tackle in the backfield there. 22 making that stop. William Delgado for the Rudder Rangers, and that'll bring up fourth down for the Hornets. Now let's throw it over to Luke down there on the sideline. Yeah, Carlos, it's, it's definitely uh, players way more, not nervous, but there's definitely an energy down here that it's, uh, you know, it's crunch time. It's a doggy dog run out there just talking to Shiloh, and, uh, he knew there, he said it's a dog fight, and they knew coming out of that halftime it was going to be tough. And they're going to go for it again on fourth down and one for the Hornets. Let's see. They're going to bring him in tight here. One of the hardest plays to defend. Let's see if they can draw him off sides again. And Taylor trying to push forward. He's got the first down at the 42-yard line. What a job there by Austin Taylor rolling over the pile. That's good for a Mocha Mocha attorneys at law first down. Coach Southern, man, I love it. He is not scared to go for it on fourth down. And, man, he's had two good ones here back-to-back. -back. Still trying to sort things out here. Taylor obviously got the forward momentum he needed as Rudder is pointing to the other sideline, but that is definitely not the case. First down for Huntsville at the 42. 9.17 left to go in this fourth quarter of play. Huntsville still leading 7-3. They're having a good methodical drive here to try and chew up a lot of that clock. Both teams still have three timeouts remaining in their back pocket as well, so a lot still to be played tonight at Huntsville ISD Stadium. Austin Taylor will line up out of the shotgun with three receivers. One to the far sideline, two down here to the near side. One back with him, that is Treshawn Brown. Taylor claps out of the gun, gets the snap. He'll drop back, looking to throw. Stepping up out of the pocket. He's hit as he throws. The ball pops out, and Rudder lands on top of it. Big 99, Braylon Norwood gets the fumble. Flag flies in after the play. And man, oh man, what a turn of the tide. But we do have a flag after the fumble. Brian Parker Jr. getting up, limping off the field. That's not good. He replaced J.T. Kroll on the right, uh, left side tackle spot. We have a fumble on the play. After the recovery, we have a dead ball foul. That's what's my conduct, number 22. That's going to be a half the distance to the, I'm sorry, 15-yard penalty. First down. It's first down, Rudder. The penalty is against Rudder on number 22, so that'll luckily back Rudder up. It would have been down around the 35, 31, 33-yard line, I should say. But, man, oh, man, that is a costly turnover by the Hornets. Yeah, it is. Blind side, uh, Austin Taylor's dropping back to throw, looking downfield, doesn't feel the pressure coming in, drills him from behind, knocks the ball loose, 
they recovered. Mm. So mm. Rudder takes over with 8.52 remaining in this fourth quarter. It is 7-3 Huntsville. Jaquise Martin is now in as the quarterback with three receivers and two backs. Four-man rush coming for Huntsville as Martin gets the snap. He'll hand it off to his back, bouncing it to the outside. Goes A.J. Morris, and Jawan Giddens was the one that upended him at the 48-yard line, and that'll bring up second and seven for Rudder. Carlos, with eight minutes and 40 seconds left in this game, man, not, time is not on the Hornets' side. They need to put some uh, insurance points on. Martin gets the snap on second down, hands it off again to the back. Jawan Giddens gets around him, though, does Morrison. Pyle pushing him forward to the 46-yard line. Cole Schroeder was the one that got to him last. That'll bring up a third down for the Rudder Rangers at the 46. Big third down for both sides of the ball here. Man, the Hornets need a stop to get that offense back out on the field. Crunch time at Huntsville ISD Stadium with 8.08 left to go in the ball game. Hornets leaving 7-3. It's been a stalemate in this second half. No team has been able to gain an edge. Martin lines up in the shotgun with four receivers, two to each sideline. Four-man rush for Huntsville. As Martin gets the snap, he'll roll to his right, looking to throw. Fires downfield too hard and too high for his intended receiver, Malik Dunn. That was the other number six. J-Bug back in coverage. Fourth down for Rudder. And what do you do here if you are the Rangers? Kind of in that no man's land, so it's take what you can get, and they will they'll either go for it, but Martin is also a punter, so you don't know what he may bring forward here as well. Yeah, they're going for it. And from the looks of it, that is indeed the case. Yep. They're going to go for it here. Fourth down and five. 7.49 left to go in the fourth. 7 to 3 Huntsville. Martin lines up in the shotgun, trips receivers to the far sideline. Hornets will try to bring some pressure here. Here comes Jawan Giddens off the blind side. Looking to throw is Martin. L eludes one tackler. Has some open space. I think he was well beyond the line of scrimmage. The ball's incomplete anyway. That's going to be a legal forward pass, and the Hornets take over on downs. Well, let's make certain. <laughs> we, we, we've, been, we've been wrong before. <laughs> oh, man. Here's the call. Illegal forward pass. There we go. Offense, that penalty is declined. Result of the play, turnover, first down. I mean, there's only been 40, 50 penalties tonight. You, just, you never know. And Huntsville finally gets one to go their way. It was declined anyway. So the turnover on downs gives the ball back to the Hornets at their own 46-yard line, moving left to right across your radio dial with 7.43 le left to go here in the fourth quarter. Austin Taylor back out there. He'll line up here in the shotgun. Taylor claps, gets the snap, fakes the handoff here. He'll keep it in throw. Fires this one to Melton Green, the third in the open field on the far sideline across the 50 to the 45. Uses his own man to try and push himself <laughs> forward across the 40. Well enough for Amoka Moka. Turnies at law first down to the 38. Oh, Melton Green to third, man. What a great pass there by Austin Taylor. Catches Green out in the flats, picks up the first down. Nice play there for the Hornets. Green gets out of bounds after that big carry on the catch. First down to the 37-yard line. In this final quarter of play at Huntsville ISD Stadium. Taylor looking to the sideline, getting the play calls here from Scott Schroeder and company, who's up here in the box. And here we go, out of the shotgun. Taylor with three receivers, gets the snap. He'll hand it off to his back, running this one straight ahead. Braylon Phelps across the 35 to the 30-yard line, all the way down near another Mocha Mocha attorneys at law first down. Ten yards exactly, that's all he needed. First down for the Hornets. Great job by Braylon Phelps. I mean, he takes it over across the B gap and, and picks up the first down, and it's so great between him and Treshawn Brown, two different type runners. Treshawn Brown more of the finesse runner. Braylon Phelps more of the power runner. And both of them super talented. Of course, Huntsville trying to get to 3-0 in district play, trying to remain undefeated in the district. With everything that's going their way, they got three tough games that lay ahead of them if they want to get into a good spot for the playoffs. But they got to finish it off tonight. 7.05 remaining in this fourth quarter. 7-3 Huntsville. Taylor lines up in the shotgun, trips receivers to the far sideline. He gets the snap. He'll hand it off to Phelps once again, running to the left side, trying to cut it up field on first and 10. And he's able to get nothing there. If anything, he lost a yard on the play. That'll bring up a second down and long for Huntsville. And this defense also getting some much more rest on a more sustained drive for the Hornets. As Austin Taylor and company trying to facilitate things here, keep the clock moving, try to put all the pressure back on Rudder. 
whose defense has kept the Hornets at bay in this ballgame. Winding that play clock down to 13. Taylor will line up in the shotgun on second down and 11 from him, the rudder 28. Three receivers, he gets the snap, he'll roll to his right, looks to throw, has Peyton Pryor, no, he dropped that one in and out of his hands, tried to take off and run before he got to the ball. Third down and long for Huntsville on the way. It only takes that split second to take your eyes off of it looking downfield, you will drop it every time, exactly what happened right there. Mm. And Braylon Phelps in at running back right now. Treshawn Brown standing on the sidelines as Phelps has helped the Hornets out here on this drive, getting first downs here and there. With 6'11 left to go. The Hornets need to pick up at least another probably seven yards to make it uh, an easy attempt if they have to go for the field goal. From here, if they don't get any forward momentum, it'd be a 45-yard try for Joseph Mejia. Need some more yardage to help him out if not getting the first down here it is third down and 11 they'll just hand this one off this is Phelps with a lot of room across the 25 to the 20 still moving on his feet across the 15 to the 10 five touchdown what a run by Braylon Phelps with 601 left to go here in the fourth quarter what a play Braylon Phelps man he is bouncing off tacklers takes it into the end zone nice play Huntsville Hornets that's an MRC oh wait a minute Brian don't even say it, man. <laughs> Don't even say it. And there it is. Holding number 14 of the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. <sighs> we do go down. <laughs> wow. Uh, uh. That'll negate the touchdown. It's from the spot of the foul. So it is third down for the Hornets. It's, it's a manageable two yards, but holy Toledo. They're still trying to sort things out Go here down. on the sideline. Okay, now they've corrected it here. Man, this officiating crew's been all over the place, but either way, it is a first down for the Hornets as it happened after they had converted the first down. No, oh, now they're still talking things over here on the sideline. Actually, now they're more out towards the hash marks here on the field. So now the line judge moves down. It is now. The offense achieved a first down. However, after the penalty enforcement have brought them back behind the stakes, it's third down. Okay, there we go. I think we have it correct now. It's third down. And two, they're into the Murray Insurance and Financial Services red zone. The touchdown comes off the board, but for the Hornets, it is third down and two. Big third down right here for the Hornets. <clears throat> Big, big third down. Austin Taylor will line up in the shotgun, three receivers. Peyton Pryor was the one that lines up in the slot here on third down and two. 6.01 left to go in the ballgame. Hand off here to Braylon Phelps. He pushes the pile forward. That should be enough for a Mocha Mocha. Attorneys at law first down to the 17-yard line, and that is where they will spot him, and it's enough for that first down. Nice run up the middle there by Braylon Phelps. Just a handoff. Good blocking up front by the big guys to spring him enough to move the chains. And Austin Taylor and company looking to the sideline here. Clock moving halfway through this fourth and final quarter of play. Trying to get into the end zone. They had it for a moment on a beautiful run by Braylon Phelps. But it gets called back on a holding penalty. Huntsville still alive here inside the red zone to the 17-yard line. Trying to get in for the touchdown. To try and put this one away against Brian Rudder tonight and get to 3-0 in district. Taylor lines up in the shotgun, trips receivers to the far sideline. Phelps is the running back. He gets the snap. He'll hand it off to Phelps. Running this one straight ahead to the 15, to the 10. Braylon Phelps inside the 10, down near the 7-yard line. What a run by Braylon Phelps. He needed the 7, and that's what he got. 10 yards, and the Mocha Mocha attorneys at law first down, first and goal coming up. Hornets knocking on the door despite all the penalties, man. They are pushing the ball downfield. It's been a great sustained drive, as you said. Give the defense a little bit of a break, but they've got to shut the door on this drive. Five minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter. 7-3 Huntsville against Brian Rudder tonight. First and goal at the seven. Austin Taylor and company trying to chew up more of this clock and put all the pressure back on Brian Rudder. 
The Huntsville wins tonight. They move to 4-3 and 3-0 and three and oh in district. Rudder would fall to 3-3 three and 1-1 three and one and one in district. First and goal from the 7. Moving left to right are the Hornets. Taylor claps, has the snap. Hands it off to Phelps. Spun around, losing a helmet is somebody at the 5-yard line. That is Kyle Smith who loses the helmet, who's currently the center for the Hornets. So he's going to come off. The, he's going to have to come off the field here after losing his helmet. And Brian Parker Jr. gets up limping again. Man, these guys are banged up out there. So Smith comes off, and John Trey Barkin is going to come in for a moment. Brian Parker Jr., yeah, he is definitely in some discomfort. Clock has stopped for the moment at 4 minutes and 36 seconds. While they have the pause in the action, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. This is the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network, 101.7 KSAM Huntsville, and on the KSAM mobile app, Stingham Hornets. Back here in Huntsville, Texas at Huntsville ISD Stadium, 7-3 Huntsville. First, or excuse me, second down and goal at the four-yard line for the Hornets as they're still trying to sort them some things out here. Kyle Smith had to come off the field because he lost his helmet, but I think head coach Rodney Southern's going to let this clock wind all the way down to one on the play clock, and he will call timeout and let his team regroup, and that is exactly what he will do. So timeout taken here by the Hornets, and we're going to take it with them for 30 seconds. We'll collect ourselves and get to the rest of this ball game. Be back in 30 on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. <laughs> Did you know a doctor's prescription is not needed to begin physical therapy? This allows you to begin therapy sooner without having to wait for a doctor's appointment to obtain your prescription. Since optimal physical therapy outcomes are obtained when treatment is started earlier, sooner really is better. Dallas Williams and the team at Physical Therapy Associates was voted best physical therapist in the Huntsville Islands Reader's Choice Awards for the sixth year in a row. So when you make your PT choice, choose the best. Physical Therapy Associates, ptaclinic.com. Seven to three, Huntsville on the Hornet Nation broadcast network. Four twelve remaining in this fourth and final quarter of play at Huntsville ISD Stadium. Carlos Zimmerman and Brian Adams live from the Pinnacle Realty Advisors broadcast booth. Glad to have you with us tonight. Four hundred and fifty of you strong on the web stream here tonight. So thank you guys for tuning in all night long for this incredible ball game that it has been tonight. It's been a defensive showcase to say the least here in this second quarter or the second half, I should say. But the Hornets are on the doorstep. Second down and goal at the four, trying to punch it in to put this one away. Now that they've gotten everything sorted out, able to get that timeout and get Kyle Smith back into the ball game. Second and goal. Austin Taylor in the shotgun with three receivers to the near sideline. Takes his time, gets the snap, hands it off. Looking to go to this is Braylon Phelps, but he is stopped. At around the five-yard line, forward progress took him to the four. That'll bring up third down and goal for the Hornets at the four. And now we've have we got a rudder player that is slow to get up. With 3.59 remaining in this fourth quarter of play, want to let you know, coming up here on the AB Squared self-storage post-game wrap-up, we'll have a post-game interview with head coach Rodney Southern, and if the Hornets are able to hang on, we will talk with our player of the ball game as well, brought to you by McWilliams & Sons Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. We'll recap tonight's game and look ahead to next week when the Hornets, or actually not next week, two weeks from now, when they will head on the road down south to Montgomery and take on Lake Creek, the defending district champion. So... Stay tuned for that on the AB Squared Self Storage post game wrap up. Brian, it's been really, I mean, what else is there to say? We've had just about everything happen in this first ball game at Huntsville ISD Stadium. So they've, I think we've gotten all the penalties out of the way here, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. But it's been back and forth in this ball game, especially in the first half. No, neither offense really able to gain an edge. And that's just a testament to how these defenses, how good these defenses are for Brian Rudder, their defensive coordinator, Timothy George, and then for Huntsville, Amore Del Real. We've had him on the coaches' show a couple, uh, earlier on this season. It's been all defense in this second half, to say the least. It really has, and it's, uh, been, you know, it's been an exciting game, to be honest, because it's such a low score and, and so tight. But, man, you know, it is, again, you think about this sellout crowd down below. It's not a seat available that are still here watching this ball game with just four minutes left in the game. Uh, pretty amazing, really. Again, a rudder player who we don't have his number or name. He is still being looked at here on the field by both, really, training staffs for both rudder and Huntsville. And now both teams are being called 
to their sidelines here. As they're trying to get this young man upright, and they indeed have him upright and good. That is number three, Randon Cooks, who was slow to get up, and he is coming off the field now rather gingerly with help from the training staff. And as you said earlier, as you and I were talking, uh, he has a twin brother, Brendan Cooks, both of them 5'7", both of them 155. True both twins. True twins, both played the same positions. And we knew some pretty good uh, twins out of Sam Houston that uh, continued to play ball at the next level. Indeed we did. The McCollum the, brothers. The McCollum brothers. And then we had a b pair of brothers here at Huntsville High School in the Bobinos. Ed Bobino That's right. Absolutely. and Brian Bobino. Ed now at Stephen F. Austin. That's right. And Brian had some time at Navarro College as well. So shout out to those guys. Again, still a great crowd on hand here tonight at Huntsville ISD Stadium. As Rain and Cook still walking over to the sideline with help from the training staff, and we'll get back to play. It is third down and goal for the Huntsville Hornets. Both games that we've kept our eye on tonight have gone final. Brenham gets the win over Montgomery, 40-14 to down in Brenham. And then, like we said earlier, a big upset in District 9 in Region 3, 5A Division 2. Texas City, the Stingarees, upset the Fort Bend Marshall Buffaloes, 15-7. to That is something we're going to keep our eye on to the rest of this time. That is the second district loss for Fort Bend Marshall, a team that has been absolutely dominant in that district. Something we have to watch as this season progresses towards the postseason. Here we go, third down and goal for the Hornets. Three and a half minutes left to go in this fourth and final quarter. Seven to three, Huntsville. Taylor lines up in the shotgun, three receivers. Pryor will go in motion to the left side. Taylor gets the snap. He'll hand it off again to Braylon Phelps. Gets the edge to the end zone. Did he get into the end zone, or are they going to mark him out? Oh, they mark him just shy as he stepped out of bounds at the half-yard line. Oh, my goodness. I thought he was on the other side of the pylon in the end zone, and no. Just shy. Yep, they call him short. Man, a lie. This is huge right here. Fourth down. At the half-yard line. The half-yard line, man. Three minutes and 20 seconds left. And he stepped out of bounds, so it stops the clock, and it saves Brian Rudder from having to use one of their three timeouts remaining. 7-3 to three, Huntsville. And now Huntsville wants to talk things over as they will call timeout. Timeout. Huntsville, second timeout of the half. So Huntsville with one timeout left. And Brian... Let's thank more of our wonderful sponsors who made tonight's broadcast possible. Absolutely. Huntsville Independent School District, focus for our children's unlimited success. And Walker County Federal Credit Union, if you live or work in Walker County, you are eligible for membership. And again, this season of Huntsville Hornet football is presented by Bill Fick for No Bull, Just Good Deals. Great people over at Bill Fick. Absolutely. So into this University Heights Baptist Church timeout. Three minutes and 20 seconds left. Biggest down of the night coming up. They're at the half-yard line. It's fourth and goal. If Brian Rudder makes a stand on the bright side for the Hornets, they've got him pinned at their own half-yard line. On the bright, But an even brighter side for the Hornets, punch this ball in, put this one to bed. Punch it in. I, I mean, it's just uh, mano a mano beat the man across from you, cross that goal line. Huntsville get ready to break from their timeout. Brian Rudder already has with 3.20 remaining in this ball game. In this district matchup in 5A Division II, Region 3, District 10. And they're not going to go for it, Brian. Here is the field goal unit for the Hornets. Nelson Amaya's Collision Center field goal try here for Joseph Mejia at his own half-yard line. So this is a 17-yard field goal for Joseph Mejia. You know, I like the call, but just by happenstance, you get stopped short. This way, you get a 7-point uh, lead. Kick by Mejia does split the uprights and is good. So that makes your score 10 to three with 3.16 remaining to go in this fourth and final quarter of play. So go figure, this game is gonna ride on the Hornet swarm in defense when we come back in 30 seconds on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. Are you thinking of selling, buying, or investing? This is Frank Olivares, United States Marine Corps veteran with Pinnacle Realty. From my family to yours, we want to say thank you to all the friends and families for trusting us with your vision and dream for the past 13 years. Remember, to our family, relationship matters, and friends turn into family. Give me a call, Frank Olivares, for your real estate needs today. 936-577-6419 or 936-661-1575. Thank you, and we love you in Christ Jesus.
3.16 left to go on the game clock in this fourth and final quarter of play. It is 10-3 Huntsville after the 17-yard field goal by Joseph Mejia. And he will get ready for the Diana K. Barnes State Farm Insurance kickoff here. And the biggest one of the night for that young man right here. He's got to be smart with this kick here against Brian Rudder. It's still a one-possession game. Rudder needs a touchdown to tie with the extra point. Now remember the last time Mejia kicked off, he drilled one in the up back 10 yards away from him, landed on it. They don't want to do that this time. They want to make him go the length of the field, burn up that time. So Rudder will bring their guys out. Jaquise Martin is going to be the one back deep to receive here for the Rudder Rangers. Joseph Mejia has got the ball teed up at his own 40-yard line, and here we go. Final drive of this incredible ball game is now underway as Mejia will boot this one incredibly deep. Martin will take it from his own six-yard line. He'll return this one across the 15, trying to get reverse field to the 20, to the 25, to the 30. Jaquise Martin with a big run back. Brenton Carroll makes the big stop on him, but a massive return for Brian Rudder to set them up in great field position. That really was a great uh, return there. He takes it up the right side. He gets behind his wall of blockers and turns really a great run back. Puts him in decent field position with three minutes and eight seconds left. They'll officially mark this ball past the 35 at the 36 yard line is where Martin was ultimately brought out of bounds by Brent Carroll. And here we go. This Hornet defense, we've highly touted them all season long. They've done their job tonight holding runner to just three points. But now this is where Really, the boys become men out there on this final drive. Jaquise Martin lines up with an empty backfield set with five wide outs. He gets the snap on first and ten. Here comes the pressure of the Hornets. That is dropped by the running back in Bruce Hendrick. Incomplete second down and ten coming up. So I was going to say it's going to be a rudder air show right here on this particular drive. It's up to those DBs. Do not let these wide outs get behind you, whatever you do. Second down coming up here for Rudder. They'll have time to talk this over as they only took four seconds off the clock. 3.04 remaining in this fourth quarter. Huntsville leading 10-3 in what has been a defensive showcase all night long. Martin again alone in the backfield with five wide. Three to the near sideline, two to the far. As Martin gets the snap, pump fakes once, and then he is sacked back at the 28-yard line. Tyler Smith and company again in on the Hartfield Flores sack. Also on top of the pile, Hezekiah Johnson, and that'll bring up third down and long for runner. Hezekiah Johnson, what a great play. Gets up, kind of looks like he's gippy a little bit coming off the field. Yep, Jerry Singletary, he will check in for him. He plays both sides of the ball here. Clock moving, 237 remaining in this fourth and final quarter. Third down and 16 for Brian Rutter, backed up to their own 30-yard line. Big third down here for both. Huntsville and Rudder in this district matchup. They'll keep them spread it out, five wide. Hornets look to bring more pressure once again. 2.20 left to go as Martin gets the snap with some time. He'll fire this one up on a deep ball. There is nobody down there for him, but a flag flies in from the line judge. Oh my goodness. How about that? That's not really a big surprise. You have got to be kidding me. <laughs> the ball wasn't even catchable. <laughs> oh, man. And I think that's what they're explaining to him. I think they're going to pick this one up, hopefully. I don't know. There's no penalty for pass interference as it was determined to catch the pass was uncatchable. Yeah, thank you. How about that? Well, they got one right. So fourth down and goal coming up now here for Rudder with 2.14 left to go. 10-3 to three Huntsville, and really, Brian, let's think about this. Rudder has all three of their timeouts left, so the game isn't exactly over if Rudder is not able to convert this fourth down. But again, it's, uh, they, they know they have to air it out. These guys, these DBs, these linebackers, the front four get pressure on that quarterback. Well, with those three timeouts, don't be surprised that they maybe try a pooch punt as well. But no one back deep to receive here for the Hornets. Nope, they're going to go for it on fourth down. Martin looking to air this one out deep down the field, trying to find his man, and it's intercepted. No, it's incomplete anyway. Great coverage there by the Hornets. It's incomplete. 2.07 left to go in the ball game. Turnover on downs. It's coming back to Huntsville. Nice job, Hornet defense, man. They aired it out, went for it all right there. Turnover on downs. The Hornets going to have the ball in great field position going in. With a little over two minutes left in this ballgame. And this ballgame is not over by any stretch, folks. Jeremiah Winfrey, I thought for a moment, J-Bug hauled that interception in on that deep ball thrown by Jaquise Martin. But 
The Hornets do take over on offense at the 30-yard line. Rudder with all three timeouts left. The Hornets, all they have to do, get one first down, and they can put this one to bed. Well, I guarantee it. Austin Taylor is sitting over there talking to Trayshawn Brown going, when I hand this ball off to you, you secure it with both hands as tight as you can. So first and 10 for the Hornets with 2.07 left to go in the ball game at the Rudder 30-yard line. Singletary in motion on the offensive line with three receivers. Austin Taylor in the shotgun. Taylor claps, gets the snap, and off the Brown. Running this one here to the right side, but Rudder is able to snuff him out. He'll lose forward progress to the 33. Rudder calls timeout with a minute 58 left. That'll bring up second down and long for Huntsville. Well, the Hornets need to be careful, though. You don't want to, you want to convert a, a first down and game over. Timeout. Right the last thing you want to do is, is lose yardage moving back and then have that ball turn over with some time left on the clock. That is the last thing you want to do. Timeout called here by Brian Rudder. Huntsville will get to talk this one over as well with a minute 58 remaining in this fourth and final quarter of play. The seats have thinned out a little bit here. It was a capacity crowd earlier. I don't think a single student has left. The clock is sitting at about 10.19 p.m. here tonight. I still feel like we're on Eastern time in Virginia, but man, oh, man, what a night it has been, and is it going to culminate in a Hornet win? You would love to start off this new stadium a perfect 1-0 and oh, with one more home game still to be played later this year on senior night, October 27th against Brenham. Yeah, you'd like a clean sweep against uh, Brian Rudder. The underclassmen, freshmen, and JV both got victories. We need a varsity victory right here. In the offense out there for the Hornets right now after forcing a Brian Rudder turnover on downs. Brian Rudder with two timeouts left. Hornets with one. Hornets just need one first down to try and put this one away. Austin Taylor with Trayshawn Brown, the running back, and three receivers here to do some blocking on the right side. We'll see if the Hornets try to counter as well. Second and 13. Taylor claps. He's going to look to throw here. Fires this one to the end zone. Caught Milton Green the third, and that will put the capper on this one tonight. 32 yards and an MRC Creekside touchdown from Austin Taylor to Milton Green the third, and that is how the Hornets are going to put this one away. What a great pass. Austin Taylor hits his wide out in the seam, in stride, touchdown. Unbelievable, man. Great play. Now make your score 16-3 Huntsville. Joseph Mejia on now for the Nelson Amaya's Collision Center point after try with a minute 53 left to go tonight. What a strike and a gutsy call, too, by the Huntsville Hornets. 32 yards from Austin Taylor to Melton Green, the third. Under Lorenz to hold this ball here on the point after try. Lorenz gets the ball down, and the point after by Melton Green, the, or excuse me, by Joseph Mejia is good. Melton Green, the third, got the touchdown, and now we have another flag that has just flown in after, well after the point after try. That was such a great throw by Austin Taylor, and that was a confident throw. I mean, you could see it from way up here in the booth. I, I mean, what a great pass in stride, man. Well, we do have laundry on the field brought to you by A&D Propane. Let's check these out. We've been checking them out pretty much all night. And Coach Rodney Southern talking with one of the linesmen here as well, and now uh, his referee and crew still talking things over here as we're in a pause in action for the moment. Dead ball foul on sportsmanlike conduct, number 5-0 of Huntsville. That will be enforced on the kickoff. So the point after try is good. 17-3 Huntsville. They have just put this one away. The Hornets nest down below us. They are alive and well tonight. Not one of them has left, and they're going to see their Huntsville Hornets come away with a huge victory. I mean, look at that on the replay board there. Melton Green the third left wide open on that ball to cap this one tonight. You know what, uh, his father, Milton Green, is just such a good guy. He was with us uh, a few years uh, doing video and whatnot. His son, Milton Green the third, biggest catch of the night. And he has stepped up in a big way as well this year as one of the receivers for Huntsville. Joseph Mejia on now for the Diana K. Barnes State Farm Insurance kickoff. The penalty, the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty has backed up this kick by Mejia to the 25-yard line in Huntsville territory. Jaquise Martin and company, actually Brandon Cooks rather, he is back deep to receive this kick from Mejia. With a minute 53 remaining in this fourth and final quarter, the Hornets are well on their way to getting to 3-0 in district play tonight. And the kick from Mejia, pooch kick 
tumbling end over end through the air. That is caught by Brandon Cooks at the 30. He'll gain the edge here across the 45 to the 50 before he is forced out of bounds by Mejia. So a good return there by Cooks. That'll set up Ryan Rudder with two timeouts left and a minute 48 left to go. The Hornet defense will come on one more time to officially put this one away. It's been an exciting night, man. It's been a defensive uh, show most of the evening. That last play, though, man, what an explosive offensive play to really put the cap on it. Man, the confidence level in Austin Taylor is just, it gets bigger and bigger each game. So with that, Rudder will take over on what is expected to be their final drive of the night in Huntsville territory at the Huntsville 48. Jaquise Martin alone in the backfield. He's going to air it out the whole rest of the way. Five wide here for Rudder. He gets the snap, does Martin on first and ten. He'll throw to the flat. This is caught at about the 44-yard line, swallowing up the would-be receiver there for Rudder is Isaiah Collins. Forward progress takes him to the 43, and that'll bring up second down. The clock moving here with 90 seconds left to go. Rudder not moving with a lot of urgency here. Now they'll come up and get set here with a minute 25 and counting left to go. Martin on second down and five at the 43. One back and four receivers. He gets the snap. He'll roll here to his left. Noah Cummings bearing down on him. Martin throws this one up over the top, and it's incomplete. Flag flies in from the line judge here. Brent Carroll and Cole Schroeder back deep in coverage. Brandon Cooks was the intended receiver, but we do have flags. We're at the 45 and in the secondary. Noah Cummings is fixing to get a penalty for Rupp in the quarterback. He absolutely chased him down and drilled him after he threw the football. Man. Well, let's check these penalties here. Might be a both against Huntsville. We'll find out. Yeah, the referee's talking things over here on the near sideline here on Huntsville's side. I think this crowd's just tired of the flags, and they just want to get up and start celebrating. Now the head referee, he's working his way to midfield here. He's talking things over there with his other line judge, talking with Eric Ezar, the head coach of Rudder. Trying to sort it all out and get it right. Here's the call. Maybe. Holding. Number 32, defense. That penalty is declined. Personal foul. Number 59, defense. That penalty is a 15-yard penalty automatic first down. Okay, so they called the holding on Brent Carroll, 22. And then the, you were right, you called it the roughing the passer there by Noah Cummings on Jaquise Martin will be enforced, and that will take Rudder up to the 28-yard line with a minute 11 left to go in the ballgame. Rudder keeping two timeouts left, trying to make this more of a favorable ballgame. We'll see. First and 10 now from the 27, 28, excuse me. Martin gets the snap out of the shotgun, feels the pressure here. They'll throw it up on a screen that is caught in the flat. Ball is knocked loose. It's into the open field, and the ball is still loose. Rudder trying to pick it up, and now it's a scrum for it. Who's going to come away with it? Making the catch was A.J. Morrison, but let's sort this out here. Who ends up with the ball? It's Huntsville. That right there, folks, is going to do it. What a great effort by these Huntsville Hornets. This defense is absolutely nasty. And they put a pop on that kid, and that ball went flying. Isaiah Collins, the Texas Tech commit, comes away with the football. And I think he's going to clutch that one for the rest of the night because that one was the game winner for the Huntsville Hornets with 59 seconds left in the ball game. Austin Taylor and company will come out, take a couple of knees, and put this one on nice. Man, was it sloppy throughout a lot of this ball game, but when it mattered, Huntsville delivered. Absolutely, they did. I tell you what I do love about this Huntsville Hornet team. They are aggressive, nasty, will put the hits on you. Man, that's like Huntsville football in the old days. Well, Austin Taylor, with the two timeouts left for Rudder, they won't take the knees here. They'll hand this one off to Treshawn Brown, who bounced this to the outside, 25-30 with some good blocks, 35-40. And Treshawn Brown will take it all the way to the 45-yard line with 52 seconds left. That's just the exclamation point on an incredible ball game for the Huntsville Hornets. Amokimoke, attorneys at law first down as Treshawn Brown adding some stats. 
Nice run around the right side. Treshawn Brown picks up a great block by Brian Parker Jr. And you're right, man. That will just about do it for him. Well, he ran out of bounds, so it stopped the clock at 52 seconds. Austin Taylor and company, they still will not need these down here yet. It is first and 10 for Huntsville at their own 42-yard line. Taylor will once again line up here in the shotgun with three receivers. He claps, gets the snap, hand off to Brown. Trying to get forward, but he will just go to the ground here. We'll see if Rudder, are they going to burn any of their timeouts? It does not appear they will. I think they have conceded defeat at this point. And so Huntsville will let that clock continue to wind down about eight seconds between play clock and game clock. You will just have to knee it down once, and Huntsville will remain perfect in 5A Division II Region 3 District 10. They move to 3 and 0, and won an exclamation point against a very scrappy rudder team that really held them at bay throughout the ball game here tonight. But Huntsville will have the final laugh and will come away with the victory to open this brand new Huntsville. ISD Stadium. Austin Taylor will bring everybody in tight. He'll wind the play clock down as far as he can. He'll get the snap here. He will knee it down once. And that is your ball game here tonight at Huntsville ISD Stadium. It's been a long-awaited time for these, this team in Huntsville to come here to this new stadium, and they christen it with a victory over Brian Rudder tonight. 17-3 is your final. Huntsville improves to 3-0 in district play. Brian Rudder will fall to 1-1. One in district play. AB Squared Self Storage Facility post game wrap up is coming your way next. We'll talk with head coach Rodney Southern. Well, Luke Scott will do that on the sideline. And we have your player of the ball game as well and much more to come here from Huntsville ISD Stadium in Huntsville, Texas. Again, your final Huntsville win, 17 to three. We'll be back shortly on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. Nelson and Maya's Collision has been proudly serving Walker County since 1999. Within walking distance from Sam Houston State University, they pride themselves in offering their services to you for your students to get their vehicle back to pre-loss condition and back on the road. Come see Nelson and Maya's Collision off Sycamore Avenue for all your automotive, paint, and body needs. That's Nelson and Maya's Collision, a proud supporter of Hornet football. Call them at 936-439-4545. TechSpress Urgent Care Clinic in Huntsville would like to help keep your family and friends safe and prevent the spread of viruses. They are a walk-in clinic and offer quick, efficient flu and strep treatment. TechSpress Urgent Care Clinic offers a variety of procedures, open seven days a week. Check their website at techspressurgentcare.com and visit them on Facebook. That's TechSpress Urgent Care Clinic, located at 193 I-45 South, near Bahama Bucks and Buffalo Wild Wings in Huntsville. TWFG and more insurance has been proudly serving the Huntsville and Walker County area since 2003. Ranked number one in Texas as an independently owned insurance provider, our independence affords us the freedom to shop insurance carriers and coverages that best suits our clients' specific needs. TWFG offers personal and commercial, life, health, and flood insurance. Call Waylon Moore at 936-293-8121 or drop by 1212 10th Street in Huntsville, Texas at TWFG and more insurance. Our policy is caring. Courage, integrity, perseverance, commitment, not just a job. This is a career with a purpose. The Texas Department of Criminal Justice is hiring correctional officers now. Full and part-time positions available, no experience required, paid training, great health care and retirement, and opportunities for base pay increases with continued service in the first year. Apply now at tdcj.texas.gov slash co. That's tdcj.texas.gov slash co. Serve Texas with purpose. It's always game time at Gamers Grove, Huntsville's friendly local game store located at 1212 14th Street. Family owned and operated since 2012, Gamers Grove carries a wide range of tabletop games and accessories for everyone. Board games, card games, miniatures, and more. With a huge game room open for free casual gaming and exciting competitive events, Gamers Grove provides a friendly place where people can play games, make friends, and become a part of an ever-growing community. That's Gamers Grove located at 1212 14th Street in Huntsville. 
Looking for something sporty and great on gas? Then head to Bill Fick Ford in Huntsville. Turn heads and fill up less often with a sporty new fuel-efficient Ford crossover like the ever-popular Ford Bronco. Orders for 2024 Broncos are now open. Or check out the built-tough Ford F-Series trucks, including the all-new Ford F-150s. Bill Fick Ford, where customer satisfaction comes first. And there's no bull, just good deals. Hurry in today or shop online at Bill Fick Ford Huntsville. Proud supporter of Huntsville High School, Danny Doherty State Farm in Huntsville covers all your business, auto, home, life, and renter's insurance needs. Call or stop by the office and get a quote today. They will find the right policy to fit your needs. Call Danny Doherty State Farm Insurance at 936-295-2067. That's 936-295-2067. Or visit them at 2914 Montgomery Road in Huntsville. Kubota products provide the horsepower, versatility, and dependability to get the job done right. But that doesn't mean you can cut corners on your regular routine maintenance. Keep your equipment running smooth by bringing your Kubota mower, subcompact tractor, or hay series tractors into Huntsville Truck and Tractor for a tune-up or oil change today. Call one of our experts for any questions about your Kubota products or stop by Huntsville Truck and Tractor today, conveniently located at 2124 Highway 30 East in Huntsville, or call us at 936-291-8103 to keep your Kubota running strong. This is BJ McMichael, and I am a proud 1993 Hornet graduate and 1998 Bearcat graduate. I am also the Minister of Students and Outreach at University Heights Baptist Church. Here at University Heights, we are connected to Christ and the community. We also offer small groups and activities for every age and stage. Be sure to check us out online at uhbc.net or download our UHBC app in the Apple or Android store today. Stingham Hornets! Did you know that one of your neighbors just lowered their utility bill? At McGillbury Mechanical, we are experts in providing heating and cooling services on all makes and models. When it comes to replacement, we will help you select the best heating and cooling system for your budget. We will analyze your home to ensure that the right size system is selected for optimum comfort. Let our technicians discuss possibilities to lower your utility bill and save you money. Call McGillbury Mechanical and ask us how to save up to 40% on your utility bill. That's McGillbury Mechanical at 936-291-2640. At McGillbury Mechanical, we care about your comfort. The Huntsville Hornets postgame show is brought to you by AB Squared Self Storage. With the game recap, here's Brian Adams and the voice of the Hornets, Carlos Zimmerman. Welcome back to Huntsville ISD Stadium. Your final tonight, the Huntsville Hornets remain perfect in District 10 5A Division 2 play. They win it tonight over Brian Rudder 17-3 with a big win to that 3-0 in district play now, going full steam ahead. Head coach Rodney Southern talking with the players down there. Dr. Shepard was talking with them prior to that, giving him his congratulations to them. What a ball game it was tonight. Man, it, was, it got a little hairy there throughout that ball game. But then down the stretch, Huntsville made it count when they needed to to come away with some turnovers, a big touchdown throw to ice the ball game ultimately. What a way to do it if you are the Huntsville Hornets tonight. Obviously, a lot of things they need to clean up as they progress on in district play. Their next ball game comes up in two weeks against Lake Creek, the defending district champions on the road in Montgomery. So that's going to be an incredible ball game that we'll have for you right here on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network in two weeks. But, man, celebrate tonight. It'll be a good way to do it tonight for the Hornets to celebrate, go out wherever they're, wherever these players are going to go after these ball games on Friday nights. But what a way to do it tonight if you're Huntsville. Absolutely. What a great victory in their brand new facility. Uh, you know, it just doesn't get any better than that. I mean, you can't write a script, you know, as good as this. I, I, I mean, with this new stadium and the, the packed house here tonight, the great play by the Hornet defense, you know, the only just the, – the, I hate to even say it, man – the penalties, you know, that's uh, tonight. I it was, it was a kind of a phenomenon. I mean, we've seen a lot of penalties before, but this kind of takes the cake. And they'll get back and they'll work on those kind of things and make them better. But man, what a great victory for the Hornets! Again, Rodney Southern still talking with his guys down there. Luke Scott is standing by, waiting to chat with him, and as well as our player of the ball game tonight, brought to you by McWilliams and Sons Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Melton Green the third will get the nod here tonight. Had the game-winning touchdown ultimately at the end of the day, and really had a good all-around ball game as well. He has blossomed as a wide receiver here for the Hornets, one of the great targets for Austin Taylor. So he is our player of the ball game tonight. Brought to you by McWilliams and Sons Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Luke Scott will talk with him and head coach Rodney Southern coming up once they break their huddle down here on the field. And I think they want to soak this in a little bit more. This was the first game. At Huntsville ISD Stadium, and they 
cap it off with a big win. They really did. And just what a great uh, crowd tonight. Thank you, Huntsville, for coming out and supporting your Hornets. Thank you for doing what you did to help the school district. Uh, just what an incredible, incredible night. Again, Rodney Southern still talking down there. I mean, I mean, some fans have left, but a lot of them still sticking it out here, wanting to talk with these incredible players. The Hornets played an all-around great ball game when it came down the stretch, making great plays on defense, good tackling, which you love to see. You know, and a lot of people have also come back here who helped make this possible. And I know I'm looking down there to the sideline right now. I see uh, two faces of the Huntsville item. Colton Foster, the current sports editor, and his uh, former boss, Josh Criswell, made his trip back here, now working at the Houston Chronicle. So lots of folks from the past, from the present, and eventually the future, too, that came out to see this incredible stadium and see this incredible team do what they have done all season long, but in front of their home fans as well. As the huddle, they're, they're chanting down there with head coach <laughs> Rodney Southern. I'm surprised they didn't give him a Gatorade bath down right, there right. to celebrate this one. But obviously they want to probably save that possibly because now the Hornets have moved into the conversation of possibly making a run at a district title. But a lot of games still to be played here. Three more to be exact before we can figure all of that out. Head coach Rodney Southern ready to break that huddle. Luke Scott is standing by. He'll be waiting on our player of the ball game in Melton Green the third. Will they get Coach Southern first? Now nope. Coach Southern will talk with the TV audience first and then Luke Scott will have Melton Green the third. There it is, Luke Scott standing by with Melton Green the third. Uh, not quite, he's got to talk with his okay. position coach. First. Yeah, he's a team first guy. That's what Melton Green is. That's he? right. And that's, that's, that's the way it should be. So he'll talk things over with Coach Parham real quick, and then he'll join Luke Scott here on the sidelines down on the field. Luke, while well, we got you, man, what a night. Oh, it was a spectacular night. I mean, the, the festivities before, they had inner Sandman cranking through the, through the lock field house over here. It was just a special start, and you would have liked it to be a, a more better, well-executed game, but... Uh, you never complain about the win, and might have been a little ugly. Here we go, Melton. No. Here we go. Melton, you're a player of the game. You clinched the game there with that big touchdown pass. The, the message at halftime and to the offensive staff there uh, going into that fourth quarter. Keep going and forget about that first pass that I dropped in the first half because that could have been a really nice long touchdown. But God had my back at the end of the situation. And, you know, you always get through the storm when he got me. So it's the first game here at this new stadium. What was kind of the y'all's, the athletes' kind of view of this new stadium? How excited were y'all to open up this brand new field? It was exciting. Uh, Coach Southern, he told us to listen to the, uh, custom music in the locker room, and that was the first thing we did, just put it on and started turning up, having a good time with each other. And then it's my birthday, so. When I first Happy birthday. Y'all started giving me spankings. <laughs> well, Melon knows a great game. Uh, any sh like to give out? Uh, give a shout out to God. Good uh, shout out to my family and all of my loved ones in my life and my girlfriend and her mom for them supporting. Appreciate your time, Milton. Good, good game. We'll go after them. Looks like the newspaper guys got to uh, to coach first. Yeah, the, they'll, they'll they'll talk with him really quick here. We'll keep talking with you here, Luke, as we continue the AB Squared Self Storage Facility post game wrap up, talking with our player of the game, Milton Green the third, from brought to you by McWilliams and Sons Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Luke, now I'll ask you this. How did the Hornets, you know, bounce back from this? Because I know they came out with a win, so bounce back doesn't sound right. But this was a game that, I'd like, you, like you had mentioned, that they probably should have won in more convincing fashion. They had to come down the stretch to get the win. Yeah. You face Lake Creek in two weeks. You get your get better week this week coming up to be able to try and rest up and get ready for the defending district champions. How do they turn it around? Yeah, that's a big thing. I mean, you're coming off a blowout win there against the Mark Consolidated, and now a Win, a gritty win, if you would say, uh, tonight. So it's a great time to have your bye week, and it's a great time just to uh, be able to rec You're going to be able to ice a, a few more and just get some guys that aren't as healthy back to 100%. Absolutely, Luke. And Brian, do you got anything for our young man down there? No, you know what, Luke? It's uh, You did such a good job tonight, man. And, and you see things down there that we don't get to see, and your communication with us, man, is terrific. What... Uh, before that last pass completion of Milton Green the third, what was kind of the the attitude or the feeling along the sideline? Well, yeah, here? I mean some some butts were clinched down here. I must say, kind of kind of nervous there, and, and it was uh, like a, from a lack of confidence. It was just you know that spot to be in. You know, ten three, you need a stop, 
And sure enough, I mean, the defense came through and through again. I was talking to Hezkai Johnson down here. I said, hey, man, just make one play. That next drive, a sack. So last week I got the Juwan Giddens uh, <laughs> yeah, you pick, did. and this week I got the sack. So hopefully, <laughs> like, maybe I can get something else. Maybe it's a special teams touchdown next week. Yeah. Or actually, in two weeks. In two weeks. But, you know, I, I'm sure those guys have been wanting for a big play to happen for them as well. As head coach Rodney Southern still talking things over with the Huntsville item and the Walker County Press They're right back now. Back to talking about their dinner plans over there. <laughs> 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 no, we, we love Colton Foster and Wade Thibodeau down there. They do great work for their respective institutions. They're still talking with head coach Rodney Southern. We'll get his thoughts on this ballgame before we send it to break. Luke, I mean, what are your dinner plans? I don't know. It's, it, it's late. It's, it's 1045. I think I've gotten seven hours of sleep in the last two days. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. i got to be up and at them uh, early in the morning. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I, probably just go pick something up at the Whataburger. I don't know. There might be a, a high school Tito's. infestation there, so I might have to steer clear of that. <laughs> we'll, we'll, see what, we'll see what happens for sure. I mean, I, I've got an early jump as well. We got, you know, this is, you know, I said tonight was the capper for homecoming, but, man, we've got a great spectacle coming to Huntsville tomorrow. Fair on the Square is tomorrow. This is the first time that a Battle of the Piney Woods has not collided with Fair on the That's Square. Right. Yeah. So this may be their biggest showing that they've had in really a very long time. So that is where me and Jordan will be tomorrow. Uh, hanging out with our friends at KSAM and our sister station, the Lake. So we got an early jump then, and then I hit, and then I head on a little quick retreat, get away for a couple of days, and then we'll be right back at it on Monday for the Hornet Nation Coaches Show. Which, by the way, you can watch on the KSAM YouTube channel and listen to right here on KSAM. As a 7 p.m. start time, we will have head coach Rodney Southern, an assistant coach of his, as well as two Hornet players, as well as Huntsville Hornet quarterback club president Casey Kroll. They will join us, so come celebrate your Columbus Day with us at Chick-fil-A on the Hornet Nation Coaches Show. Brian, I'm running out of stuff to talk about You here. didn't ask me what I'm doing tomorrow. What are you doing tomorrow? Well, one, I'm going to get some sleep tonight. <laughs> I am just out on my feet, man. But tomorrow, my dear friend, Chuck Campbell, former Hornet Mike Linebacker uh -huh. and I, and we're going to go out into the woods, and we're going to try our hand at a little dove hunting. A little dove hunting. <laughs> a little right. dove there hunting. we go. There yeah. we go. Yeah. You know, I tried dove for the first time a couple of weeks ago at Northside because, you know, Reagan Cooksey, yeah. great pastor there at Northside, they went dove oh. hunting in South Texas, and I tried it for the first time. And let me say. It is a delicacy. It's a delicacy. Oh. It, it is an Some people would say it's an acquired right, taste. All right. We'll stop talking about Dove. We'll send it over to Luke Scott. He's standing by with head coach Rodney Southern. Coach, you opened up the brand-new stadium here, Huntsville IC Stadium, with a gutsy win. Just kind of talked about the uh, the halftime message there to kind of drag this one out and, and finally get that W. Well, it, you know, sometimes you got to win ugly, and, and that was obviously ugly. But I thought we did a good job adjusting offensively. I think they whipped us first half at the point of attack. Uh, second half, I thought we did a much better job, even though we were down – Technically, we were down three offensive linemen at that point. So, uh, but again, you know, the environment, the pressure, homecoming, all the things that you have to deal with this week, uh, I thought we dealt with them pretty good. I don't know if they impacted the game or not, but, uh, you know, for these kids, I'm excited for this community. Uh, the fact that we sold out, hopefully, a home side tonight and, and people got to see something incredible and, we just made the game ugly. <laughs> Coach, I can't report it was a sellout with standing room only there. It was packed house. Uh, talk about your defense, man. It was every single time uh, that you had the late offensive turnover, the defense comes up big. It felt like every time you need your defense to step up, they did and, and just made some plays. Well, I, I thought our front line played pretty well. I thought everybody else played pretty good. So we tackled well. We didn't give up a lot of explosives. I think we gave up one. Uh, but, you know, overall – to not give an offense that scored 40 whatever the last time they played to give up three points, you're going to win a lot more than you're going to lose if that happens. Coach, now coming up, you got the bye week, a get better week, a get healthy week. Kind of talk about the attack approach coming up on this week. You have a day off of school on, on Monday and kind of what that includes kind of coming up to the next game against a very good Lake Creek team. Well, we'll uh, of course, we've already got film on Lake Creek. We've already started breaking down film. We'll give them Monday off. Uh, I'm going to actually give coaches, everybody off. We'll, uh, we'll work tomorrow, but we'll be off Sunday and Monday. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we will practice basically like a spring training. I bring our freshmen, JV, and everybody together. Uh, it's a chance to work a lot of fundamentals, a lot of stuff. I want our freshmen to see our varsity guys practice and vice versa. 
Uh, and then Friday, uh, we'll split up our staff three ways because we're going to get to see Lake Creek, Brenham, and Richmond Randall. Coach, thank you for your time. I got one question for you. What's the, the post-game celebration song in the first time in this new locker room? I have no idea. Whatever they put on, they can do whatever, but uh, I lost my rhythm a long time ago, so uh, I'm just excited. I'm excited for them and excited for the coaches, too. All right, appreciate your time, Coach. Thank you. Good win. Carlos, Brian, B.A., back to you, boys. Thank you very much, Luke. Great work down on the sidelines, as always. We're going to step aside and take a break. We'll go to our final segment of the AB Squared Self Storage Facility postgame wrap up, as me and Brian got to go home and get some sleep. But we'll wrap this up for you and set you up for the game coming up in two weeks against Lake Creek after this on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. AB Squared Self Storage is your local go to self storage facility that can help give you the extra space you need, big or small. From non climate and climate controlled storage to parking spaces for your car, boat, trailer, and RV, they have it all. AB Squared Self Storage has 24 hour computerized gate access, around the clock security camera monitoring, no long term lease commitment, and convenient payment options. Give them a call today at 936 755 5000 or reserve your space online at www.ab2selfstorage.com. Final segment of the AB Squared self Swords Facility post-game wrap-up. Carlos Zimmerman and Brian Adams live from the Pinnacle of Realty Advisors broadcast booth. One last time for you tonight. Huntsville wins over Brian Rudder 17-3 and dominating defensive performance for, for the, performance for the Hornets and doing it in front of a sellout crowd here at Huntsville ISD Stadium to christen this new stadium with a big victory. Brian, just your final thoughts as we get ready to wrap up. Great win tonight. Uh, you can see the confidence level growing in this team. It just It's unbelievable you know, just week after week, and, and the aggressiveness and the, the just the nasty play by defense, man, that is something that you love to see, uh, you know, because that right there can turn momentum in itself. The one thing they need to work on again is the penalties. We talked about it ad nauseum. And, uh, man, just a great victory tonight. The cool thing is they're going to get some time off to heal some of these guys that have some of these nagging injuries, and they're going to get some good practice time. And as he just said, Lake Creek, they got film on it. This is going to be a great ball game in two weeks against them. Looks like to me uh, the two top teams going for the, the, the number one district spot is going to be going on in two weeks. Absolutely it is. As now we'll pivot here to our upcoming schedules. First for the Huntsville Hornets, these upcoming schedules brought to you by First Franklin Financial. Looking at Huntsville first, three games remain for the Huntsville Hornets. It's coming up in two weeks at Lake Creek down in Montgomery. That game is a 7.30 p.m. kick. We will have that ball game for you right here on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. And then we'll come back here for senior night at Huntsville ISD Stadium as the Hornets take on the Brenham Cubs. Brenham got the win over Montgomery tonight, 40-14. to That game is on October the 27th at 7.30 p.m. before the Hornets cap off their season at Richmond Randall coming up Thursday, November the 2nd at 7 p.m. And then to the other side, for Brian Rudder. They will get Lake Creek next week. So Huntsville will get a look at Lake Creek before, in live action before they have to face them. As for the rest of the schedule for Brian Rudder, they will go on the road to Brenham on October the 20th. They'll host Richmond Randall on October the 22nd before capping off the season at Montgomery on November the 3rd at 7 p.m. That's your upcoming schedules brought to you by First Franklin Financial. Again, your final tonight. Huntsville comes away with the victory 17-3 over the Brian Rudder Rangers to christen this new stadium with a big monumental victory, something that these Hornet players, fans, coaches, and broadcast teams alike will remember for the rest of their lives. And that was the story tonight from Huntsville ISD Stadium in Huntsville. Tonight's broadcast of Huntsville Hornets football on 101.7 KSAM and the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network is copyrighted for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this broadcast or any other transmission or accounts of the game without the express written consent of 101.7 KSAM and Huntsville High School Athletics is strictly prohibited. Tonight's broadcast was executively produced by Jordan Smith and produced in studio by Stacy Brown. And the broadcast team would not have this happen possible without the help of the staff at KSAM, General Manager and Tim Johnson and Operations Manager Brian Reeder. For my broadcast partner, Brian Adams, sideline reporter Luke Scott, and the entire Hornet Nation Broadcast Network crew, we thank you for joining us here tonight. We're getting your final. Huntsville wins over Brian Rudder, 17-3. Have a great rest of your Friday evening. Have a great weekend. Good golf, good tennis, or whatever makes you happy. And we will see you coming up in two weeks when the Hornets battle Lake Creek on the road in Montgomery. Good night, God bless, and so long from Huntsville, Texas, and finally at Huntsville ISD Stadium.
AB Squared Self Storage is your local go-to self-storage facility that can help give you the extra space you need, big or small. From non-climate and climate-controlled storage to parking spaces for your car, boat, trailer, and RV, they have it all. AB Squared Self Storage has 24-hour computerized gate access, around-the-clock security camera monitoring, no long-term lease commitment, and convenient payment options. Give them a call today at 936-755-5000 or reserve your space online at www.ab2selfstorage.com. This has been the AB Squared Self Storage Hornets Post Game Show on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. Powered by K Sam Sports. Huntsville ISD is the best place for children to be. We offer a full day pre K center to advanced career and college options, along with a variety of extracurricular activities and award winning fine arts, band and athletics programs, an excellent child nutrition and bus transportation services, bilingual ESL and GT programs, special education services, and a career and technical education program that provides multiple certification and licensing options for students. Visit huntsville isd.org. It's a great day to be a Hornet. We're building champions, everyone, every day. Hey, folks, it's Stephen over here at Adams Furniture. We're your Huntsville, Texas hometown furniture store. Come in and see why we carry the top brands with great customer service. We carry brands such as Tempur-Pedic, Sealy Hybrid, Sarda Mattresses. We have the biggest selection of Lazy Boy recliners, double reclining sofas, reclining love seats. We have all-American-made hardwood bedroom furniture, living room furniture, all-American-made lift chairs. All this is in stock and ready for delivery at Adams Furniture. We are cheaper in the country. Shop luck with us and save your money. It's Adams Furniture, 30 State Highway, 75 North and 10th Street. Looking for something sporty and great on gas? Then head to Bill Fick Ford in Huntsville. Turn heads and fill up less often with a sporty new fuel-efficient Ford crossover like the ever-popular Ford Bronco. Orders for 2024 Broncos are now open. Or check out the built-tough Ford F-Series trucks, including the all-new Ford f 150 Bill Fick Ford, where customer satisfaction comes first. And there's no bull, just good deals. Hurry in today or shop online at Bill Fick Ford Huntsville. Com. Courage, integrity, perseverance, commitment, not just the job. This is a career with a purpose. The Texas Department of Criminal Justice is hiring correctional officers now. Full and part-time positions available, no experience required, paid training, great health care and retirement, and opportunities for base pay increases with continued service in the first year. Apply now at tdcj.texas.gov slash co. That's tdcj.texas.gov slash co. Serve Texas with purpose. Your brand is your business. Shop local with Advantage Specialties where you will get service with a personal touch. Hello, I'm Stephanie Pitts, owner and operator of Advantage Specialties. Advantage Specialties offers screen printing and embroidery on site. Let Advantage Specialties get you ready for your next event with cups, apparel, caps, pins, and everything else you could need. Go to AdvantageSpecialties.com or call our team at 936-291-3222 to start that order now. Sing them Hornets! Did you know a doctor's prescription is not needed to begin physical therapy? This allows you to begin therapy sooner without having to wait for a doctor's appointment to obtain your prescription. Since optimal physical therapy outcomes are obtained when treatment is started earlier, sooner really is better. Dallas Williams and the team at Physical Therapy Associates was voted best physical therapist in the Huntsville Islands Reader's Choice Awards for the sixth year in a row. So when you make your PT choice, choose the best. Physical Therapy Associates, ptaclinic.com. This has been a KSAM Sports presentation. The 2023 Hornet season is proudly presented by Bill Fick Ford and by Advantage Specialties, AB Squared Self Storage, A and D Propane, Adams Furniture, Charlie's Used Cars, First Franklin Financial, Gamers Grove, Hardfield Florist, Huntsville Independent School District, Huntsville Truck and Tractor Kubota, MRC Creekside, McGillberry Mechanical Heating and Cooling, Mo. And Mocha Attorneys at Law, Murray Insurance and Financial Services, Nelson Amaya Collision Center, Northside Baptist Church, Pinnacle Realty Advisors, Texas Department of Criminal Justice, Texpress Urgent Care Center, The Woodlands Financial Group, Wiesner Huntsville, McWilliams and Sons Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing, University Heights Baptist Church. From Carlos Zimmerman and Brian Adams, thanks for listening.